Hello, hello. How is everyone? Okay. Testing, testing. Okay, hold on. I turned it on and off. I was testing it. Hello, I am here. How's everyone doing? Okay, okay, okay. I just wanted to make sure my Yeti was the one set up. Okay, y'all, how are we today? I hope you guys are doing good. Y'all need to help me today with this fucking stream. Maiden with the super chat. Let's go. Thank you so much. Hi, Maiden. How are you? I hope you're having a great day. Love Maiden. We love Maiden here. She's the queen. Um, okay, in my last chat with Lav in Erudite, y'all, audio was fucked, okay? So we need to really, <laughs> we need to really do better on this audio. I need to do better on this audio. My boomerness is slowing down the production of this, this live stream. So we need to, we need to definitely double check. You know what was crazy is that everybody was hearing it differently on their, like, earphones. So my audio was really low. Is it really low right now? It should be pretty fucking loud. Like, I should look, I should sound really almost too loud. Like, okay, Sherry's coming. Uh, we're going to do a conversation with her in about 15 minutes. I just wanted to preemptively jump on stream and get everyone here and warmed up. Um, I'm very excited to talk to her today. It'll be a lot of fun. Hopefully I don't moon anyone because I'm not wearing any underwear today and these pants keep sledding down. Um, okay. Hopefully the audios are, are good together. Other than that, how is everyone today? How, how does everyone feel? Um... As you guys probably know, I've never spoken to Sherry, so this was inspired because of the conversation I had with Lav last week, and I thought, well, you know, uh, Sherry was so kind and reached out to me, and I thought, oh, you know, like, I should talk to her, so I'm excited to talk to her today. I think it will be really, really good. Is, uh, will Lav join, um, ST says? Um, no, that's, that's not the plan. The plan is to talk to Sherry today and to have a good and concise conversation with her about who she is and her work and... Um, any thoughts we might be able to share um, in relation to maybe some things. I think what's really important today is that we like humanize Sherry. We get to know her as a person. Since I've never spoken to her, I most certainly don't want to take Lav's version of reality as the only reality. As you know, I believe in bubbles and I think people have different relationships with what is real. And I think we all have different experiences, even within the same conversation. Have you guys seen that? Is it Jubilee or Cut? Who does that series where... Um, they legit will talk to couples who had sex like years ago and then ask them to re like recount it and uh, recant, recount, recount, like talk about it again. Why am I forgetting words? And um, they just remember it completely differently. And I think that's just very much what it means to be a person is that we forget how things happen. But also some people just can't face what actually did go down. So if you've grown up with like certain kinds of parents you might have those relationships with them as well like oh don't you remember that this is what happened and someone's like no that's not how I remember it so that's I think something I want to challenge us with today is what it what does it mean to be an adult and live in an adult world if we watch two adults have a conversation on video maybe even sometimes and then still disagree about what happened right how many times have we seen that happen with Max's fans and Destiny fans and you sit there and you think like why can't Steven and Max's fans like, why isn't there one experience that we're all having? It's the same thing with the Amaranth story I covered. Scam or not scam. It's like everybody has a different experience when we're watching things. So let's definitely be open-minded to who Sherry is because, um, you know, she's in these circles and I'm sure she's a lovely person. Um, I'm sure we just have moments of misunderstanding or maybe being too harsh about each other, which I've done a hundred times, so I'm not about to pretend I'm better. So I think that's why I'm excited to talk today. Uh, Isabella says, uh, yes, looking like a space goddess queen today, Brittany. Thank you so much. That's definitely the goal. Thank you so much. I mean, I saw this on Instagram on that Clever, Clever? No, Cider, Cider. I always confuse it. Clever and Cider. It's Cider website. And I just like these sleeves. I just like couldn't stay away. And I also bought the red one as well. So I think it's like fast fashion, fast fashion, because it's definitely, um, Maybe not like the fanciest materials, but not the worst. Actually, this shirt is really, it's nice. Now, I hand wash most of the things I get from either really cheap places or really expensive places. And then places in the middle, maybe sometimes I'll maybe not be as precise with my drying and, and washing with those. But when I w get something like this, I definitely wash it. When I washed it in the tub, like red or black, the top definitely like leaked color. So that's why one of the reasons I hand wash everything separately because you just never know. And I bought some white things from them as well and I didn't want them mixing up. 
So, yep, just a little, <laughs> a little fashion tip right there. Um, trust my white vans as you look like a galaxy. Thank you. Um, that's definitely the vibe I want to say that I'm going for. Um, okay. <clears throat> um, let me see. Ch -ch -ch -ch. How are you guys doing? We're just, we're just warming up the chat basically before I stream with her. Oh my gosh. Honestly, my allergies are not my friend today as per usual. I cannot, I love Indiana Jones, but I really can't wait to have an office that she's not allowed inside of. I just feel like I have all these, all these allergies. I've also forgot to put my tissue over here. So hold on guys. Let me go grab a tissue box. Okay, the only dilemma is I'm wearing these, um, do you guys see them? It's like a, it's like a whole bar, right? So the only thing is that it's kind of difficult to put my earphones in, but, oops, there it goes. Hold on. But, okay, we will manage. Mischief managed. Let's see. Stay there, boil. Okay. Ugh, yo, did you see how Kanye called Pierce Morgan boy like a hundred times? I was like, bro, this is not the vibe. He was like, boy, let me finish boy. <laughs> it was so funny. So now every time I say boy, I think of Kanye getting mad at uh, Pierce Morgan and calling him boy. Um, Is it Chrisanya? 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 Um, when is she meant to join? Is there a time I need to jump out of the store to the store real quick? Um, she's, uh, going to be here in 10 minutes, 11 a.m. Pacific. Um, that's when we're supposed to start. You know what I mean? Um, that one dude says you got to talk to someone before making an opinion. I mean, obviously that's not probable or possible. Like that's just not like, that's like saying I have to talk to the president before I vote for him. It's like, okay. Like, we can form opinions about people before we've met, we've, we've talked to them, mostly because we have to. Think about all the, you know, you should have a good sense of judgment. And I think it's reasonable to form an opinion about someone before you've met them. But I also think it's even more reasonable to be open to the fact that you might need to change that opinion. Maybe should change that opinion. I don't know. I think that's what... Um, I think that's kind of the conversation that needs to be had, is when we have the conversations... Um, around what it means to know. We have to be able to admit that it's very hard to know someone you've never met or someone you've even talked to a few times. I feel like I know my friends and family members, but, you know, that knowing is on a spectrum. So I, I think that's sort of hopefully what the point of having this dialogue on my channel will be is that communication just doesn't work the way we think it's going to work. I was watching Lav talk to Steven yesterday on stream and Lav has, like, such an interestingly, like, uh, genuine and yet mischievous energy to her. So I think it's really hard not to distrust Lav because she, like, she was, like, crying on stream yesterday with Steven. And I was like, girl, you should not be crying right now. Like, I understand this is overwhelming, but you also shouldn't be crying unless you... Unless it, but it doesn't also make sense to cry. It could make sense to cry depending on how she sees her relationship with Steven. Um, but if we're just two people who kind of know each other and we're having a discussion about the validity of my perspective, doesn't, doesn't that sort of make it awkward to cry, I guess, over losing a friendship that should have been started about ideas? So I think that's what's interesting is that I'm not sure how close Lav wants to be to people or is to people, which I think makes it confusing when she has these like really strong emotional reactions to a discussion about feelings. Though Steven also has, I think, pretty emotional reactions to some of the things that are happening. But maybe he's emotionally triggered because of a logical, um, a logical like disagreement. So maybe you could say Steven is logically disagreeing with love <laughs> on principle. And then because she kind of gaslights through the conversations, maybe unknowingly, maybe knowingly, um, 
he gets emotionally triggered that she's not being transparently honest when discussing ideas. Maybe that's what's happening. But for some reason, when Lav and Steven talk, it's a weird entanglement of like emotional and reasonable where the ideas are almost reasonable, but then the emotions get in too entangled and I think it's weird. So I'm not sure. Um, uh, CJ says, I think that Lav um, and Mr. Girl feel too close to Destiny. He doesn't feel the same. Possibly. So that could also be the thing. Maybe they both feel like they're much closer to Steven than Steven feels like he is to them. Or maybe Steven is upset that Lav is painting him in a light he doesn't see himself, which is welcome to online content creation. But also because he feels closer to her. Maybe he's like surprised or maybe she feels closer to him. Like Max and Steven are friends. Steven is helping him from a business perspective put the business together. But also doesn't play favorites enough that he unbans him from his Reddit if the mod feel like he needs to ban them. I always ban, I always say like sometimes you got to ban good people from your life or from your discord. Like I love my discord. It's a paid discord. It is an amazing space. It won't stay an amazing space unless I curate the energy that's there. And usually that means on occasion, every six months or so, somebody comes in and super disrupts the Discord. The Discord I run is 18 plus. It's very adult energy mixed in with a lot of like jokey adolescence energy that we can bring in. Maybe we're discussing anime. Maybe we're making a joke about philosophy. But generally speaking, we don't truly mock each other. Even when we get into disagreements, we talk it through because we're, you know, we're adults. Um, sometimes you'll get a rowdy person who will just not know how to converse, who will yell at the other callers or other talk, like people in the discussion, who will spam people. I had a person who was so nice, generally speaking, but would like look for other Britney Simons on the internet and then post their Facebook wedding photos to my Discord. And I'm like, stop doing that. Like you're not doxing people, but you're kind of doxing people and they're not me. Like I'm a Britney Simon, they're a Britney Simon, but like that's not who I am. So it's kind of rude. So I delete those and I usually, like if people are, acting a little socially weird. <laughs> I like to tell them, hey, I know you're socially unique, but just because you're socially unique and a nice person doesn't mean you belong on my Discord, right? So I think Max is that energy. If Max is disrupting the Reddit and it doesn't vibe with the energy of the Reddit, then why wouldn't he get banned? Just because he's Steven's friend? Like, I guess, but also, no. Like, that's not how it works, right? Like, that's not how... I guess like running a business works, but also creating an ecosystem. You know what I mean? Um, so I just, I, I don't know. Okay, so let me just make sure. Um, was that just a morning, a Mr. Girl mooning joke? Wait, I don't know what the joke was, Discord. I just checked your chat. Hello, everyone. How's everything going? Yes, I'm live streaming. Unless Brittany wimps out. No, I'm here. Hi, Discord chat. I just saw you. Um, okay, and then Sherry. I'm just going to give her a few minutes. Um, let me see. Um, Jessica says, I wonder if Lav will be in the chat, and I wonder if she knows the stream is about to start. Um, I mean, like... I don't have to tell Lav, like, the fuck I'm up to, you know, Avi. But, like, uh, Cherry and I talked privately, um, like, on DMs. Sh you know, we reached out. We talked. Um, <clears throat> I'm here to have a discussion with Sherry that is not drama, though it's going to cover the drama. I just want her to um, talk to me like a person. I don't know who she is really as, like, a whole entity. So I want to give her the chance to explain to my audience and to me, like, who she is. You know? I think that's fair. Destiny seems sad about what happened with Lav. I think Steven has feelings. And I think people forget that Steven is a person, I guess. I don't know. But that's like the, his like, I'm so not my feelings about this. I'm autistic. It's like, I don't know. Destiny has this habit of saying these things don't bother him. But they, of course, bother him, which is why he talks to Lav about it or talks on stream about it. So that's that's the hard part is like I it was the same thing that I think happened with Mr. Girl and I like I don't have issues with Max as a human I have issues as Max as a thinker and I think he is uh like Lav unintentionally or maybe intentionally gaslighting conversations to fit a narrative of how they view themselves which projects onto their the person they're talking to so I think that's the dilemma is that Steven and I have feelings. We don't genuinely, genu generally 
mind that people think things of us that aren't true. I think it just is interesting when it's coming from someone who claims that they're here for the truth, like Mr. Girl, or claims they're here um, for the truth, like Sneeko, or says like, um, I'm your friend, or I want to be honest about my experience, like Lev. It's like, well, we're having different experiences then, which is normal. Like I said, we're just not going to remember the same situation the same, which is why it's so scary sometimes to date or to be vulnerable with people because you run the risk of them misremembering your vulnerability or misremembering the relationship. So it's, it's, it's a lot. She called Destiny a simp and thought that meant it was fair game to call her a bitch, but didn't realize Lav thinks she can throw hands and not have hands thrown back. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a part of it, right? Is that a lot of it is, you know, you dish out energy, you can't take it back. But I think a big part of it too is that we, Destiny's drama panels allow people to call each other names, to yell over each other. It's not a very mature panel. It's always very drama based, which is great for views. So I think that that is the energy that's going to come in with that. You're going to get called a bitch. You're going to get called retarded. You're going to, you're going to say your lab loves to tell people their brain is smooth. So like, I think that we need to grow up and say, if we're going to have drama panels, then we're going to be treated like trash because that's what drama is. And if we're going to have serious discussions about the implications about how we view or talk about other people publicly, we can have that discussion. Um, I know Sherry and I will talk about it um, because Sherry, I, I had, had uh, made a video about me before and it wasn't the nicest, but I'm no hard feelings. I get it. We're content creators. Shit happens. But we'll talk about it today and see if we can find some common ground in relation to it. But I think that's just online work. Like I just, we share, we react. Maybe we'll regret what we've stated months later, but I just don't think it's that deep maybe. Um, he tries to run a wall around his feelings. Who is Steven? I mean, men, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> shadow, shadow be stop. I'll send a bill to Brittany so maybe she can pay my employer for the time I've lost in productivity. Are you getting distracted by this drama? Um, short story, Lav called Destiny a Sherry simp. So Destiny called her a stupid bitch. But I think it was more the way Destiny said it that affected Lav. I think Lav wants to feel secure that people will have her back. And I think the mistake is trusting streamers to have your back. I think YouTubers and content creators and streamers, unless they see you in real life, unless they talk to you off stream, unless they get to know you, unless they are really, they really care about you, they're just people you know to collab with. Like at the end of the day, friendship is not easier because we're all streamers. It is not more clear. It is not more, you know, it's just what it is. So I, um, I personally just think that uh, a lot of these streamers, in Destiny, you guys know he came from Twitch and he's been trying really hard to um, make good friends, but it's hard. I've been fucked over plenty of times with plenty of larger content creators or smaller ones. It's really hard <clears throat> knowing who to trust. So it takes time. I hope Destiny and I personally grow into a really solid friendship and I hope we stay friends for many, 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 many years. But that takes both of us making an effort with how close we want this relationship to be. Um, so that's going to take time, right? Okay, let me check on Sherry. And I'm, I'm going to, um, hold on. I'm here whenever, great. Uh, let me, hold on guys, I'll be right back. I'm going to get Sherry on, hold on.
Okay, unmuting, unmuting. Now we're gonna test her volume. Y'all fucked me last time, chat. Cause like y'all said the volume was good and it was not good. <laughs> so Sherry, do you mind like talking for a second? Just talk over me. Just like talk. Yeah, I'm talk, talk, at talk. Anything. Okay. This is about how loud I'm gonna talk. Perfect. Testing, me testing. too. This is us. Okay, guys, mm -hmm. let me know how the audio sounds for both of us. I think it should be fine. I'll keep track of our audios. Okay. How are you today? Cherry, that's you. I am I am good. Um good. I'm sorry, one sec. Do you need more? Yeah, tell me. Take your time. Okay. Can you hear? Yes. And you can hear me okay? Everything's good? Yep. All good on my end. Okay, perfect. You're looking at me through my webcam and I'm looking at you through here. So like my face might be weird, but okay. I'm excited okay. to talk. Wait, hold on. Okay. Wait. Sounds great. Right. Audio seems perfect. Okay. For a second, they were like no audio. And I was like, wait a second, but they're delayed. <laughs> it's a delay. Okay. Okay guys. So let me know if the delay just changes at any point and we need to switch things up. I'm just going to move you a little bit more. Okay. Basically, um, I, I just want to talk to you as like a human and get to know you as like a person. I think, think you said I was right, correct? That you were the person who talked about me in the past? I have no idea if um, if it's me. Okay. I just know that I have reviewed your content before, like on Twitch. Okay. So maybe it was, but yeah. maybe it wasn't. It doesn't matter. What matters is that this is your chance to talk to me and we get to know each other as people. So who are you? And can you explain to my audience like what you do? Uh, my name's Cherry. like the fruit. Uh, C-H-A-E-I-R-Y. Um, I do... I stream on Twitch, um, pretty sporadic content from drama reviews to going over old lore, going over um, certain content creators, old content, and like referencing it to current content. Okay, great. Or politics, or just playing video games. I don't know. What made you do it? Place. Um, which one? Just like streaming content creation to oh. be a public figure. Um, super bored over COVID Perfect. and just, um, kind of an introvert and mm. this is like the most socializing I probably have done since uh college really how, how old are you do you mind yeah yeah I'm 32 oh perfect so we're like the same age I'm 33 I'll be 34 in May um so what what did you have in mind for today's conversation other than getting to know each other was there anything you specifically wanted to make sure we went over um like from your perspective I've from my perspective, I feel like uh, I feel like I've been painted as somebody who is like policing Destiny's attention oh, um, mm -hmm. and sort of like his relationships, mm -hmm. and like that's not me at all. And it's really annoying that that is still like the narrative. Um, just overall frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. I'll tell you this. The weirdest part about being an online content creator for me is just that. This is our job. We put our stuff on the internet and then people get to take that image and curate their own lore attached to it. And so there is going to be gossip. There is going to be misinformation. There is going to be drama. And so I definitely mm -hmm. handle it personally within my my like sphere, with my inner circle. But I know that it impacts me emotionally even like 5% or more just to have it like it's something I'm thinking about. I know that you must be feeling it. And I, I just think this is a part of the job. But I also know we as people can – to have moments like this to explain ourselves. So I am curious, after I've talked to Laugh, I've talked to Steven, I've talked to all these people, it always feels like we're having different experiences. So yeah. so with you, I think I heard there was like a twit logger. Is that what it's called? A twit logger? Twit longer. Longer? So oh, like twit, like yeah. tweet longer. Okay. Yeah. Longer version of a tweet. Mm -hmm. Okay. What was that about? I'm so lost. I absolutely knew nothing that, about it. That has nothing to do with anything is what that's about um okay that happened like over the summer that's um a thing between uh steven and i oh, okay that's me after a mushroom trip getting really fucking emotional and being unhealthy on the internet and basically sad girl posting I, I don't know why it's been portrayed as if i like attacked him i had something over him yeah i was just like i was like sad and, and like pathetic and in a twit longer and um and now i i don't know why but the the fact that that exists to her means that 
the only reason that Steven would ever like acknowledge anything that I say is because, oh no, she's going to do another one. It's, mm. um, I don't know. We know that's, that's not just, true though. We know Steven. It's not true. Steven would he never. Would, <laughs> the, as much as I rag on like him, his League of Legends gameplay, he would love to not agree with me. Yeah. Okay, now I'm curious, because I know Lav said a few things during that live stream that I just really don't know about. So does it matter okay. to you that she shared that you and Steven have had a sexual relationship? Like, does that bother you? It does and it doesn't. Okay. Um, it doesn't because I have, I have great taste in guys. Um, there's a part that bothers me where she makes fun of, um, like, the idea, like, I wouldn't have sex with some... 30 something year old guy who plays like League of Legends at that part. I mean, obviously she would though, girl. Like, we know she would. She admitted it two seconds later. She's like, oh, obviously I would. It's not off the table. <laughs> so, like, she would. She's obviously yeah. just hurt, right? Like, she's like lashing out with her feelings. Yeah. And in the process, it's like she's hitting everyone on the way there. Um, the part that I, that's like, that irks me is I, it, it wasn't, like, super public information. Most people, after my twit longer, assume that, like, I was, I'm, like, a reject or something like that. Oh, like, so it actually so. wasn't even the... Because she said that it was... Well, she implied that the post is what I know allowed... She oh, shit. So she's kind of dropping, like, private information. Yeah. Um, mm. That's not good. I don't know why she keeps prefacing it as, mm. uh, oh, this is public information. This is public information. No, it's maybe um, there could be people who who thought who um, it, like any any girl who pops up on stream is just assumed that that, yeah. that happens. Um, right. But that was not the case. I was I was very much in a different fucking light and <laughs> than I am now. What do you think um, for you, at least as a content creator, does it are you trying to make yourself separate from the drama panels are you trying to say that i'm a part of this ecosystem are you an orbiter of destinies like how does it work for you i have i have no idea um okay. i think i don't fight it anymore when people tell me i'm an orbiter mm. i am like just i'm newly going on his stream i've, yeah. I've been in the same space mm -hmm. we i we talk to the same people do panels yeah um do politics but i am a very very nervous person. I have a lot of anxiety. Um, and so I don't do very well going on stream. And I was like, sort of like getting out of my shell yeah. with that one. I do a lot better when I'm on my stream by myself. Yeah, I think um, even me, I've been asked a lot to do panels and stuff. And I appreciate that. So that was like, what an honor. But at the same time, I can't handle the energy of some of those panels because it's too yelly. It's too... Um, it's That's a the other... Yeah, it's just a That's little the too, other thing is too I, much. I get I get to yelly. Um <laughs> Fair. I I go I go to ten. The part where the chill part is very difficult for me. Yeah. I'm like either very timid, shy, or on my stream I'm pretty comfortable being chill. Or I get on a panel and I think somebody is full of shit and all of a sudden I'm Yeah. What I'm like a spicy fucking tamale and I can't stop. Do you, do you, how does this feel? Uncomfortable sometimes. In comparison, is the one-on-one -on -one call better? Like the one-on-one -on -one conversation better? No. Oh, do you still nervous? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a little nervous. Yeah, yeah, That's okay. Honestly, I am, I forget people are watching sometimes. So I have a hard time remembering that this is a stream and I should be entertaining. And I'm mostly just thinking about how would I have this conversation with a person if I was with you just at a coffee shop? I'm, I'm just curious, I guess, about the goal of us as adults on this content creator site, whether it's YouTube or Twitch, like what are we doing here? Is our goal to create drama? Is our goal to spill our beans about who we've had sex with? Or is our goal to discuss politics and ideas and philosophy? Oh my God. I, um, that goal has changed for me. Okay. Several times. Okay. Uh, I came in just thinking that I wanted to talk politics. Mm. Um, realizing I would only like to talk politics that I know. Reasonable. Um, realizing the things that I don't know are the things that people would like to talk to me about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. which for me feels like you just want to sit and lecture to me. Uh, that's weird. And and then realizing that, oh, people, people just like, they like me. Yeah. So maybe just like share my life. Yeah. Um, just talk about how I feel. 
shoot the shit. There are certain things that I know about politics that I read about politics, stay informed, and I can chime in for that stuff. Um, and then there's the other part of my life, which is like the the complex person who's lived through some shit yeah. and um and enjoys being opinionated mm-hmm. and and then I just started um doing React content. Uh, yeah. And getting into React content is when I started watching Destiny's content. Oh, okay. So you're um, even a new Destiny viewer. Yeah. Okay. I am a new Destiny viewer. But I made my, like, big thing on Twitch going over his lore. Oh. So I have dived into a lot of his old content. Um, and I went into his lore because early on in, in the Twitch politics space. Yeah. I forget what the exact situation was. He had tweeted out something that people came to me and were like, look at this. Like, this dude's no good. Um, it was like a a black joke or something like that mm-hmm. on Twitter. Mm-hmm. If you've ever seen Destiny's Twitter. Twitter. Um, <laughs> yeah, Destiny. Uh, Twitter. Yeah, Steven is a uh, very unique uh, speaker. <laughs> yeah, so I saw this and I was like, that's funny. Uh, it was it, like, it was silly. Yeah. And... And then I was told how I need to, like, I need to do something. Oh, my. I'm black in this space. And I, I hate when people tell me what to do. And sometimes it pushes me to do the exact opposite. Totally. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was, I'm a little skeptical about people online. So I pressed him in the DMs, like, what is this? You're yeah. funny? Yeah. How funny are you? You got another joke? Like, I just, <laughs> I want, I want to see. Yeah. Let's see. Let's, um... Turns out he's pretty funny. And uh, was he receptive just, to that, to those messages? He was, wasn't he? Yeah. Like, I think Steven, anytime. Right? Yeah, I think he probably would have been even more receptive if I just completely had the idea that he was racist. Oh. For, I imagine for him, that's like the fun fight. Like, oh, you think I'm racist? Okay. Yeah. Um, it's probably less fun when you, when you see him as like a, not a bad person. But, um, so from there, I started getting all of his other takes. It was like I I was a low viewer person. Mm-hmm. I think I would hold like 15 viewers. Um, On Twitch is pretty good, isn't it? Am I crazy? Uh, yeah, for, to start, absolutely. I'm, I'm lucky. Cool. Um, yeah. And it, it seemed like with every stream I did, there were just new people mm. telling me what Destiny did. And so I was like, you know what? Fuck you guys. I'm... I didn't trust you the first time. I'm not trusting you this time. Yeah. We're just going to watch his lore. Well, I'll decide. Yes. Uh, and and then I just, I, I take off from there. And I've, ever since, I feel like I've come to the correct opinions about Destiny, ones that I'm confident of, mm-hmm. that I've made myself, and have weeded out a lot of the, the anti-fans that he, have, that he has. Um, they're obsessive. There's like a category of people who all feel like like socialism isn't happening because of destiny, that Bernie Sanders didn't get um, elected because of destiny. That's uh, not what? The gas, yeah, the gas prices might have went up because of him too. Like he's the, he's Why the cause man so of powerful? Why is this man so powerful I, in everybody's heads? But even to the, like, no some idea. of the women, like, I don't understand, like, even, like, I'm going to just say it, but, like, Anna and Lev are obviously more into Steven than I would say the average girl viewer makes it seem. Even though, like, we're all attracted to him for different reasons. Obviously, I love me a gamer bisexual yeah. bottom boy. Hello. But, like, that's, you know. Bottom boy. Well, obviously. Oh, oh, well, Destiny. Well, obviously. <laughs> like, he's a switch. He's a switch. And I love me a switchy boy. Okay. Um, But there's something very, ob- like, lovely about him. But why do you think some people gravitate towards him, even men, in a fanatic parasocial way, do you think it's just, like, the internet stuff? It is what it is. Um, I think it's accessibility, visibility. Ooh. He's, like, he's always there. Mm-hmm. Um, you spend, like, your day with him if you are That's a true. consistent viewer, you know? Yeah. Um, all of the inside jokes you're there for. You feel That's like a, it, it's just a different experience. And he's uh, very... He just is a good person. Yeah, um, he is. And not, like, too much of a good person that you feel like it's a... What's that idiom with the show and pony horse thing? I don't know. Do you, I fucking suck with idioms. It, he's not putting on a show. Oh, like a pony... Like, yeah, doing... a show... Yeah, I get what you mean. Like a pony... Yeah, okay. I understand. Like a whole show... Yeah, no, 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 no. Thank no. you. He's yeah. not. So it's not... 
is very authentic and then it like so authentic where you get to see like the fuck ups when like he yes. accidentally says like people are subhuman and, and he shit. admits he's wrong and, like I've seen him like yeah. apologize many times and like he's arrogant but I mean we're content creators I haven't met one that isn't so yeah, exactly. you know what I mean and he's kind of surrounded by like wonderful characters people I shouldn't call them characters yeah but um yeah it's just like his his whole space is is just wonderful. Yeah. I understand why people are attracted to it. Why they um why they go there, why they stay there, why when they leave there, they are on a mission to yeah. fucking destroy it cuz it's like it's like getting kicked out of of your penthouse so you want to <laughs> see the building burn down. Like yeah. okay, just Do you think maybe don't get kicked out? <laughs> do you think that that obviously are you and Des- are you and Steven friends right now? Or no, you yeah. guys are just good. So you are friends. Ooh, just, just, just friendly, yeah, yeah. Just friendly. Okay. Because, like, what's curious about it, I suppose, is that I think it's hard to get close to online content creators. Like, I'm very hesitant. Like, I wouldn't – and I mean this in the most, like, respectful manner. I'm old enough now that I'm really lucky I have, like, a solid friend group and my partner and everything is really secure and formed. And so I'm not actively looking for new humans to be very intimate with. But mm-hmm. I want to be friendly and have friends. And I love Kyla. I love Melina. I love Steven. Like, I want to hang out with them one day when I get out of this house. <laughs> like, I will go hang out. And I love that. But I don't understand a little – I understand a little bit what's happening with the drama. But I don't really understand why it happens so often, I guess. Um. Well, I, I have some theories. But uh, I do – I super relate to that. I feel so lucky to be – um the age I am, Mm. to have a husband, Mm. to be, Mm. like, in a really solid fucking foundation. (laughs) We've got house together. We've been together for, I think we're coming up on seven years now. Ooh, nice. We are are polyamorous. Oh, great. Um, Okay, perfect. Yeah. I I do consider myself an ethical slut. Love that. I love that book. I love it. Yeah, so the way I'm, like, I was portrayed, and then I heard you say the comment, like, oh, this is a good reason to not ever hook up with Steven. I'm just like... Uh, don't, mm. Not me. Not me. Maybe because of how she's acting, I would hope that I never, never portray someone that I've been with to uh, to appear like they aren't an, an ideal or mm. that, like, I would, like, harm their right. interaction with them. Right. That, Do you, that stuff, like, hurts. So, it sounds, so the fact that you know what the ethical slut is tells me you're, like, years beyond many of the open poly people <laughs> that I keep meeting. So I am curious then because Thank I you. think knowing that book – knowing the lore or knowing the history of poly and open relationships allows you a completely different bubble perspective of how to interact with people. I'm guessing Lav Mm. has never read that book nor had that interaction with that bubble in an ethical, slutty way. Because, yeah, talking shit or even, like, um, like throwing you under the bus in terms of saying, like, you and Steven had sex when that wasn't really public. Like, I don't don't appreciate that, like, that at all. So for – in that regard – and look, I don't need to – I, I know Lav knows this. Lav knows you cannot just say things about people. <laughs> and you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because this is the consequence. So I agree yeah. with you that I wouldn't I wouldn't actually avoid having sex with Steven just because, like, of the drama. But I would have such strong boundaries with him because of it. And I'd probably, yeah. you know, not that I'm ash- I would be ashamed of it. It's more like, hey, I don't need some of these people to hate me because I've been with you. Not that I haven't. I haven't. I'm not going <laughs> to. Don't come for me. Don't come for me. But, like, oh, congratulations. I, thank you. I've heard. Thank you. I'm really happy and excited about it. But, like, that is something that, you know, now I told my partner, I was like, you cock block a threesome with me and Melina and Steven. I just know it. I, this is what's happening. Not that that was ever in the works. But, you know, it's just kind of funny to think about. But there is yeah. accessibility to him. He is a person who answers DMs. He is a person who lets you talk to him. Yeah. So he is vulnerable. So vulnerable that I'm like, why are you letting yourself be so vulnerable to these people? Well, not not only, like, vulnerable. He's, like, he's so understanding. Totally. Uh, like, I feel like if you are half of a competent, like, human, where you take just, you just need to take, like, an ounce of, like, personal responsibility, and he can, like, meet you there. Yeah, I think so. Um, so far, that's been I our think friendship. He's, I think he's very lived, and, uh, I don't know, I mean, his years online. So, like, he's lived on the internet, which I think makes you experience a lot more people than you would in the real world. 100. Um, 100. So, I... I do think that he's probably reached a, a stage in his life where he can he can understand people maybe yeah. a lot more than than we understand each other. I like to make the joke uh, 
that if Steven is going to, if Steven's going to disagree with me on what women, like, I don't know, take a poll on like what he thinks the majority of women believe, I'm like, I, I would have to double think before I correct him because mm. he probably knows more women than me. Like, fuck. Oh, that's interesting. It is. Um, it's weird being in a position mm-hmm. where you talk to so many people. And I do a lot of one-on-one calls with humans. So, like, I get this great opportunity to just listen to people in a safe space tell me things. And you're like, whoa, people are so interesting. And they tell me things sometimes that I'm like, oh, oh, this is new. Like, I've never thought about doing that this way. Okay. So it just, like, makes you – it forces you – in a lot of ways, mm-hmm. to like what I call bubble hop, which Steven does often. He'll like jump into people's like Nick Fuentes and then Sneeko and then Abba. It's like completely different people. No, these people yeah. are similar. They overlap slightly, maybe a little bit, but they're also different. It really gives you mm-hmm. insight, which I assume you're kind of gaining yourself. Are you not? Do you not do a lot like of talking to people's? Um, I, I do my best of, of talking to people, but then there I like go through moments, phases mm-hmm. where like I have the energy for it. And then I go through phases where I'm like, bruh, I just need, I need to play WoW or I need yeah. to play League yeah. and I need to get the fuck out of my chat. And yeah. I, I'll like randomly fucking yell at people in my chat if I think they're being stupid. But before we move past, I do want to double back to what we were saying before about whether it was public or not. Yeah. Um, And, and sort of correcting that and mm, feeling please. like I want to demonstrate it well. Uh, it not being public, like... It's not for any reason, any reason to me besides the fact that it felt like just unnatural to like just freaking announce. It's weird. You get on Twitter, I had sex with Steven. It's super weird, bro. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, it is weird. So I just, yeah, if it's public now, I just want to like, that's why I didn't want it to be public. It felt like, like it happened um, in the past. So like, who's bringing it up like later? Um, It was... It was a great experience. Steven's a wonderful person to be with. Um, not to objectify him. He is a great seat to have. Uh, and so all yeah. tens all around, okay? Yeah, yeah. Would recommend. I think that that's your, maybe your like a uh, poly brain coming into it too, where or the ethical slut brain coming into it, where, you know, it, it would be weird, even in poly circles when I, because I actively practice open um, relationships for like 10 years. It was really great. It was really lovely. Seattle is a great place to, have boundaries and consent, you know, mostly listen to. Um, but the thing that came into it was that, yeah, you the whole point of sort of de-stigmatizing casual sex or multiple partners or whatever was that we wouldn't freak out that it was happening. So yeah. like I said to Lav yesterday, well, this is all part of the rules, right? You're allowed to have, like if it's open relationships, like nothing bad is happening. There's nothing bad happening in any of these conversations. So I think it's yeah. odd that her brain, it sounded, okay, this is same with you when you were going after Max for a second. I think that Lav with all her issues, which she knows she has, projected onto you a feeling about Steven, which she was feeling, and then she just made Mm -hmm. it into weird drama that was so unnecessary. But I think that's what being a human is, and it happens. Like, it just, it's just a part of our brain. It's just what goes on. So I I think that she's obviously in this defense thing where she's like, I would never. But then we know she wants to, so I also, I get it. It's like. Well, I I don't know if she wants to or not. She said on my stream, it's on the table. It's on the table. Okay. To have sex with Steven? Just make sure we're talking about the same thing, you and I? Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. She, well, from my understanding of what she said to me on my stream, she opened to it. I mean, who isn't, right? Like, in the right circumstance, okay. like, if you're into somebody, why wouldn't you be? Oh, anyways, it's not important. Mm-hmm. But the point is, like, I obviously think you have an experience, Steven has an experience of being in open relationships that Lab doesn't have. So she's learning for the first time. This is a big part of it. The whole, But then again, yeah. have you seen Sneeko talk about open relationships or Fret and fi- Fresh and um. Fit talk about open so you know how there's different versions it's of open? It's so embarrassing. But, like, there's different yeah. versions. There's different bubbles. Like, some people have this, like, hierarchical, non-hierarchical. Like, everyone has their version. Some of them have it with respect, without respect. Exactly. It's <laughs> like, even open relationships. Like, my ex cheated on me, and everyone's like, how is that possible in an open relationship? I was like, bros, because there are rules. There are still rules. Yeah. So I, I think that that's the upper hand that you might have in the situation is that you are well-versed in the poly version of, like, the ethical slut version of it. So it just... It mm-hmm. makes you more considerate in the long run. So, of course, you wouldn't just go I around so. talking about it, right? It yeah. just doesn't make sense. But Lav might not know that, so she's being disrespectful by just airing people's laundry because she doesn't understand. Or maybe she does understand, so she's, like, super extra I unethical. Think I think she does understand. Okay, if she does understand, then we are bas- we're basically saying that Lav is somebody who can't be trusted and she shouldn't be talked to. Is um, that... Well, that's that's my hope of anyone who knows anything personal about me to not... 
Do no longer Mm -hmm. reiterate it to her. Okay. Okay. Um, Now, do you have a relationship with Max? I'm very confused about what happened with you guys. Okay. My history with Max is also very, um, my history is like a a meme. Oh. Uh, Another situation where people decided to tell me, don't like watch this guy's content. He's bad news. And so I started titling my streams, watching my best friend, Mr. (laughs) Girl's content. Just, I like, as a joke, I just don't like like to be told what to do. Yeah, Yeah, of course. And then he, he showed up. He's like, who's my best friend? And I was like, oh, that, that, that's me. Um, uh, nice to meet you. Was there a part of you that wanted to be friends with him? Um, I always want to be friends with people. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, like, similar to you, I, I feel like I, I'm so lucky. I have a good foundation. I've got a husband. Um. I feel loved, and mm-hmm. I I feel loved. It's I'm not I'm not lonely, mm-hmm. but it's like I want other people. I'm idea like, lonely. Like I need more people to talk about ideas with. Like I don't think I'll ever get enough yeah. of it. Um, I do like I don't know if, if I like talking ideas with people. I just like talking or yeah. listening to people talk is probably more ideal for me. Ooh, okay. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. Um. Wait, where was I going? Max's story with you, your friendship. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, so our friendship, I was just, uh, our first conversation, he gave me the space that I needed, um, understood that the titles were a joke, Mm -hmm. and that I wanted to review his content myself, um, and then when I felt like I saw enough of the content, I reached out and I told him what I felt, um, I, I gave him a small compliment and then told him, all the things that I want to debate or to yeah. to challenge him on. Yeah. Um, our first conversation was basically me telling him that, like, I thought his Tinder story was a rape story. Mm. That I don't think that he has a... That I don't understand um, why he wants to start a conversation about the complexities of, like, consent with such a clear situation mm. where it's, like, breaking cons- like we we've been disagreeing on this for for a long time yeah and um that was our first conversation our second conversation is me talking to him about how he sucks at conversations <laughs> um just i i'm always i've always been like critical of max um but really like not being able to pinpoint it i think mm-hmm. it, i came i came about looking at him in a very um very charitable light and I think a lot because of, um, because of Steven. Oh, okay. Um, which is a, a habit that I've, a habit that I have broken. Mm-hmm. Uh, it feels like sometimes when you are starting in the orbit that you kind of want to be, um, you want to be as charitable as Steven. Um, is but, he charitable or is he just capable of not? Maybe tolerant of Tolerant, different. like he's yeah. like, yeah. Or he just, like, I feel like he has this thing where he's just, like, cool, have fun, buddy, love you. And I'm, like, okay, but that was, like, not an engagement (laughs) Yeah. with the energy. But I understand he needs, like, a specific idea they're, like, arguing over. And then Mm -hmm. what are you – so when you look at your work, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Is like, Stephen obviously isn't trying to necessarily be best friends with everybody, but he's so nice to everyone. You're not sure if he likes you more than it seems, which is normal. Like, I think people – say that with me it's like oh Brittany's so nice she must be my friend it's like mm. you like define friend what does that mean so like when you are working with max or thinking about max like why were you do you feel like you've been i'm never doing it for friendship you're doing it just just to discuss the concept the ideas around yeah. the subject matter okay that's fair yeah that's for, fair for me it, um i i draw a lot of i don't even call them boundaries but i guess they would be boundaries where I kind of need the space to do, like, what I want to do, to think how I want to think, and I do feel pressured by other people's emotions um, or, like, their needs. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, It it does make me feel like I don't get to come to conclusions on my own, Uh, especially if I've already got, like, a a, a notion about you, Mm. if I picked up a vibe about you, I definitely need you to, like, go away. I'm aware that I'm biased, um, and your presence is going to make it worse for me. Yeah, okay. Uh, is that... Some people are mm-hmm. understanding of that. Some people aren't. And I, I feel like the way that I dealt with, like, Destiny, um, Stephen's lore, I like, I hope that that demonstrates that I'm willing to put in the work right. to understand someone. 
um, if you allow me to be opinionated throughout the way, like mm-hmm. I'll get to the right conclusion if if you get there. Um, interesting, interesting. Or when we talk about it, then you could try to make the, the argument to me. Um, and I'm willing to, I don't know how willing I am to change. I think for the most part, I'm willing to change. Um, but I do have like a lot of confidence in in picking up my vibes what like through your journey is just like a human separate from max and steven all the internet people like your life in general what has been the journey to bring you like to this point what has guided you like is there a belief system you hold is there a religion you're a part of is there like what's the thing that moves you forward in terms of how you see the world um i i feel like i've been hurt so much in my life Mm. And I think I, I try to do my best for, like, the, the small community that I have to just, like, call out things that I think are hurtful. Okay. Or, yeah. Um, or review things and try to, uh, try to apply maybe the arguments and the tools to, to understand why something is hurting and to make it stop hurting kind of thing. Okay. Uh, my like my dive into lab lore was a um lab and mr girl lore the, the doing them both at the same time is awful so i was on a i was on an anti gaslight mission mm, um mm-hmm. so hold on let's let's stop let's take notes let's see what the fuck is going on here let's not get gaslit yeah um and and then also in for for lab Let's not just be called misogynist if mm. we don't like somebody or yeah. don't like what they're saying. Um, so that was kind of like, it's kind of like what my mission was. But I am I'm really greatly con- like reconsidering how I'm doing lore. Mm. I don't like the outcomes that I've had. Because I don't know if you know this, but my, after Steven, my like second lore was Anna. Oh, and, um, really? Yeah. That was my second lore. She was the... No, not my second. That was my third lore. Okay. The the second one was actually Alabrel, I think. I don't know that but, name, but okay. Um, but Anna was the first person that I just straight up banned. Ooh, um, really? I think the first day. First day going into it. Because mm. um, she she made a joke out of, of what we were watching. I'd, I'd seen a lot of the content um, already previously before I decided to go, like, back in time and watch shit. Um, and she makes a lot of, like, really heavy accusations. Mm. Um, implies such a severity. Yeah. And is, like, often crying on stream. And to have her come to my chat and just, like, sort of laugh at everything. I didn't know if that was coping. I didn't know if she was um, doing something weird. I just, yeah. I didn't like it. So I, I banned her. Um has she um, ever, like, made content about you or felt like – did why – I want to know if this oh, – I wish we were talking in private for just a second, but I'm just going to say it out loud. Do you want to mute? <laughs> no, I know. No. I okay. just I want to be honest with everybody. I just don't understand why certain people attack certain other women on the internet except that they feel – I don't know. I felt like the way Anna reacted to me was, like, she was heavily associating me with Steven, and I was like, stop doing that. If you're going to come at me, like, as, I feel like she – because Steve and I have never even met in person. <laughs> like, so there's no, but I don't know if she's like jealous or if she's associating the women with Steven as enemies or why she went so hard on me, except that I know I'm, I'm a peer crazy. So I get it. But at the same time, I wasn't sure what inspired or if Anna was just struggling. And so she had no choice, but to mentally lash out because that's where she, her struggle lies. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I had no association with Steven when I did her lore. Really? Uh, I was just sort of known as somebody who uh, hmm. takes his content and recycles it. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. <gasps> like, oh, this girl's got no content. She's just rewatching Destiny. That's, I really, I really did do that. And I yeah. made, um, I made it to Twitch partner. So. Good for you, girl. I mean, he don't <laughs> mind. He don't mind, girl. He don't mind. <laughs> um. But yeah, so I didn't have an association with him, but uh, she was the first one to make contact with me one day. I am a little bit spicy on the bird app. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. And he quote tweeted me, and that's when she slid into my DMs to warn me about DGG. Oh. Um, and that's when, this was the first time I got like a bad vibe. Like, 
just knowing that this person is like quote tweeting me, you felt like you had to come in and what save? Yeah, like, that's what it, I mean. It, it's almost thought, like yeah, weird saving yeah. complex where I'm like, are you trying to save me or sabotage me? I can't tell. Yeah, the thought ran through my head where it's like, wait, hold on. Does this dude know that she's maybe going to like every woman that <laughs> that he talks to? Like, yeah, because she doesn't know me. She doesn't know anything about me. Hmm. I could have been his best fucking friend. It was so weird. <laughs> yeah. So fucking weird. Um, so do you talk to yeah. her now? No. No, just uh, like she's still, still banned. in my chat. Okay. She still um, sometimes throws me a message to let me know how fucked up I am. Oh, beautiful. Um, I love that. She remained banned in my chat because she... Her problem with me was I did not let her on my stream so that she could educate me on what emotional abuse is. I have really, I don't like when people, um, I feel like have an agenda or they, uh, they want to be the biggest victim in the room. Yeah. I can't do that. Yeah. I can't. Um, no. It's, can, go ahead. Finish your thought. Finish your thought. No, no. <laughs> I was just, um, so she's, she is aware mm -hmm. and she was made aware that, um, I've, I've lived through abuse, mm -hmm. uh, long-term abuse. Mm -hmm. So she she was aware of how um, insulting that was. I made it very clear to her. And she has, uh, I think she's only let up on it. Hmm. Like, ever since, um, ever since she's been, like, done looping. Yeah, yeah. But now, I, I dealt with that for months from her. I, I, I um, okay, so I have borderline, and then you... You have borderline. I also, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I got diagnosed in gang, Seattle gang. and I did DBT. I know, look at us. We're like, besties. So I took my therapy in Seattle. It was really amazing. It was like very, very helpful. And it would save absolutely my brain. Like it totally switched how I saw my whole life um, in conjunction with all the other work that I was doing. And so my brain, I recognize, like obviously I have biases and my brain has like a lot of trauma related things that I have to always when people tell me things I have to go okay what is this like is this my brain is telling me is this my instinct is telling me this this my intuition is going so what is when you're like getting the Anna's or getting the things like I don't know about you but like Anna and Max both they don't trigger my borderline into a full episode I haven't had an episode in over three years but I have like the inklings of a trigger where my body is like we might be in danger and I'm like from what and so I don't know if they do that to you as well but I can't tell if it's just my borderline um so I think for me, it's, um, I think it's PTSD for me. Ah, um, okay. It took me a long time to get out of um, repetitive, uh, abusive relationships. Mm -hmm. I am, my mind was very easily gaslit mm -hmm. and like the, the desperation to, um, to be validated by somebody who takes it away. Um. Mm -hmm. Like, please give it back. Mm -hmm. um, it took a long time to correct that. And I am, I get so much anxiety uh, knowing that I'm going to speak to somebody who I think has, like, no respect for me to, uh, to like, to exist in the same reality with yeah. me. I feel like w when you're willing to to lie and pretend like what you said is not what you said, intentional or not. Um, if I know that you're going to be like that, I can't, like, I, I actively try not to talk to you. It took, it takes me a lot. <laughs> um, took me a lot of looking through Mr. Girl content, um, taking notes on it, uh, trying my best to understand him in an, like, empathetic light. Mm -hmm. The the word fucking sucks at this point. I know, it's the worst. Um, <laughs> When people say, like, I'm an empath, I'm like, so you're just, like, a basic person. Like, so, so you just pretend like you care about people? That's the vibe I'm getting from It's just, like, the now. weirdest thing to identify as. Because isn't, like, sociopathy the, like, I know you're an empath, aren't we all? Until we're not? Like, isn't that the whole point? Like, I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. But okay. So, so, I'm, um, please continue. Yeah. Fuck. I was just at the place. Oh. So, that's the other thing that probably really bothers me about, um what I did last week, which is utter, utter, utter fucking failure, mm. like, of, of me and just, like, as a person. Mm. Um, complete disappointment to, like, my community and, like, the communities that I'm in because I'm... I know better. And I, I speak, like, on behalf of better. 
Mm. And I actively harm women when I do this. Um, and I also harm, I just, I harm so much. I've, I've even harmed my own ability mm. to be productive in like what I sought out to do. And I did not put as much effort as I did into, um, into like reviewing Max's content and stuff just, just to end it like that. So like no one's more um, disappointed or frustrated in, in me than I am. I believe you. I 100% believe that. Like, I, I saw the the video that you showed or the clips of, like, him mooning, I guess. And, like, to complete, be completely honest, girl, like, from certain angles, I was like, man, this this could be a man showing his butt. So, like, okay, I'll give her that. But I know this is heavy. I know. I, like, see it in you. And I, and I go ahead. Go ahead. Break. Break. Go ahead. Um, How's everyone doing? Let's take a little bit of a breather. <sighs> Cherry is, Cherry is beautiful. I love everything about her face. Her hair is gorgeous. We love her setup. I actually love this like blanket in particular. And like the candles are such a good idea. Also, I think those are, are those fake or real candles, guys? Because the light flicker looks real. But if it's fake, I need, I think I have candles like that in my house already. I need to like get them going. Because I caught my planter on fire did I oh wait is my earring falling off it is did you guys know that I caught my earring um not my earring sorry I caught my my planter on fire the other day I was doing like a little pole dance for OnlyFans and I was like being all cute and stuff and then all of a sudden I started smelling this smell and my plant was on fire because the candle from my witch box was so beautiful and powerful it lit the whole thing <laughs> It was insane. It was literally so funny. But like I, yeah, I did that. The pictures are in Discord. Okay. Hi. Um, they are fake. The candles? Yeah, they're all oh, fake. They're so good. The flicker looks legit real. It's moving with such it like is. literal like wind is blowing on it. That's so cool. Thank you. I love that. Okay, so I'm. Do you hear me just rambling to my audience just now? <laughs> Yeah, I have my... <gasps> okay. <laughs> well, perfect. Okay, so I am curious. Do you mind if we pivot a little bit? Yes. Um, Maybe we can... Oh, no, no, I, I don't mind. Okay, good. I am curious because I, like, other than that stuff, like, things happen. Can we talk about me and you? Yes. Okay. Did you make a... Okay, so this is what I recall. So I don't have... Actually, I can't confirm it's you, so I'm not going to play that way. But I remember Destiny and I had spoken. I don't know what we talked about. And then Anna went off on me. And then another girl went off on me, and I felt like it might have been you. But it was about the levels, I think, maybe? Was it? Did you talk about the levels at um, all? I've definitely talked about your levels before. So maybe it was you. I don't know. I just remember being called, like, a lot of, like, narcissist names. And I was like, I can't fuck with this energy because, like, I'm already borderline. So people telling yeah. me who I am, like, fucks with my brain so much. But I didn't mind that people had those passionate opinions about me so much is I just didn't feel like there was going to be a space for me to engage with them. So I blocked Anna right away when she mm -hmm. reached out to me because, like, I'm not engaging. But for you, you reached right. out to me and it was like – it felt so authentic of a message. Like, it just felt so real. Thank you. Yeah. I, I – it did come from a real place, so uh... – well, I'm good. glad that it comes across that way. It, it did. It shocked me. I wasn't, I was like surprised you reached out. But then the way you wrote the message was like, okay, this is just like a normal person who had a fucking moment on the internet. And now she's reaching out to me and talking to me like a person. So like all is forgiven. I don't care. And I don't even remember who was <laughs> literally you who talked about me. So like, fuck it. But did you have any issues? Do you that. have any issues with my work now? Um, I mean, it's, it's probably like the same, the same two issues. If mm -hmm. you want me to tell me, to yeah. say them. Yeah. Um, so the levels thing, mm -hmm. it's, like, it's impossible for me to get on, on board with it. Um, for, like, just also being borderline. Uh, for me, I know categorizing people that either I feel like, um, feel like there's a gap there. Mm. I can't understand them or they can't understand me. And mm -hmm. it either causes me to hurt them or them to hurt me. Like, I do my best not to categorize uh, people like that. So when I see, like, the level system... Um, that's the vibe it gets. It gives me like a like a coping mechanism to deal with people, um, and but this is this is coming from someone who still doesn't know how to deal with like people that I'm different from. So, uh, and, and that's like the other thing about my content. It, I feel like if it came off terribly, 
mm-hmm. it like I mean it could still be me I come off like a bitch <laughs> but I usually always qualify like my own my own um illness yeah <laughs> I hate calling it illness but you know I usually qual qualify with my own shit um mostly because I've been mentally ill on the internet okay yeah. my stream my stream my chat they know my shit they call me out on my shit um mm-hmm. I very much welcome it I don't like to be pandered or babied I it's insulting to me same same um my my husband is a brilliant brilliant man uh I only like being around like really brilliant competent people mm-hmm. and uh like one of the things that I demand of destiny is to to treat women like equals not to do the thing where you put on the kid gloves yeah because for me the the benevolent sexism thing it's it feels like the standard for women are just like so low Mm. because uh because everyone just wants it wants all the women to be able to come in and enter right and and i don't know if that's fair for me anymore to say that because mm. now I'm feeling like maybe, maybe accept some kid gloves and just like ask for them to be off for me. Uh, I'm making adjustments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's hard. When are we supposed to show compassion for the interesting uniqueness of a person's brain? And then when are we supposed to be able to have just like an adult conversation with them? Um, I know yeah. that happened even when like I jumped on Destiny's stream and like Lav and Mr. Girl were yelling at me and I was pretty baked. <laughs> And I was sitting there and a part of me, I am dying again. I'm always dying for people to authentically engage with my ideas. But if they don't, I become mm-hmm. like the brattiest of all brats. And I'm just like. I just want to say. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say um, that's the other thing. That was my my other problem uh, with you. Yeah. Uh, I say this. I can't ever bite my tongue when I have an opinion. So Please. if I offend you, just like let me know. Um, the problem with you on that panel with Lav. Mm-hmm. And I, I blame you mm. for Lav's current takes because oh. I feel like you've, you defeated her with a move. Mm. And so she realized it and then she took that and now she uses it. Um, you did this thing and I don't even blame you for like defending yourself because Max is calling you like a sex cult leader. Yeah, or yeah. Or something like just the most like evil, worst intended, yeah. intended um, sort of streamer or whatever like that. Um my only problem with you is the level system. Mm-hmm. And then the other problem is telling people you take me seriously, like mm-hmm. making other people feel ashamed for taking you seriously. That, um, that like, it almost hurts my feelings. Because mm-hmm. uh, I, I told you, I don't like when I feel like people, um, I don't think it's manipulating, mm-hmm. but it's, it's like turning it around on you. Like, here, you are a woman on the internet. I don't mean to put the woman in front of there, but, yeah. like, it means more to me because yeah. you're a woman on the internet. And you're speaking, and you turned your camera on, and you uploaded the video. You're speaking, and I've I've listened. And I think I've done what you wanted me to do, which is to listen. Mm-hmm. And then I have an opinion, mm-hmm. and now you're making me feel bad because of it. Because mm-hmm. stupid me, I took you... Stupid me, I took you seriously, and no one should take me seriously. I mm-hmm. the thing is, for for you, um, I'm I'm gonna be so fucking uncharitable to lab. So I apologize ahead of time, and I've already announced I have a bias. Okay, mm-hmm. um, to you, I feel like I understand it. Uh, in that debate, I understand it. I'm still a little offended by it, and mm-hmm. I hope you do back away from it. Mm-hmm. Um, and demand that people take you seriously, even with criticism. I would rather agree to disagree on on your levels thing than to agree to not take you like a serious person on the internet mm. um, when you do speak. Uh, but I understand it as a deflect for like the crazy shit that Max was like putting on you um, with like the calls and the OF being mm-hmm. like culting people in or something, like, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the way like lab takes it and now makes everyone feel ashamed for taking anything that she says seriously and i'm just like yo you copy pasted that Mm. you (laughs) that your problem when you couldn't uh like when she couldn't criticize you or she realized that like it wasn't working it wasn't sticking she couldn't justify it she couldn't qualify it right um and now 
even though when people criticize love, they qualify it, they justify it. They, they've they done their homework and they know why they don't like her. And it's most of the people giving her criticism isn't because of like they're misogynist or sexist. Right. Mm-hmm. Those are like the internet trolls. But she still manages to turn around and be like, you're taking me seriously? Mm. Like, bruh, I'm just on the internet. Yeah, yeah. Um, Man, I want people to not to not make those arguments maybe you could say like hey i messed up and it's not that big of a deal like so long as you acknowledge that and move Mm -hmm. forward but the idea that i just like listen to what you said Mm -hmm. and that's what makes me fucking silly is just like it feels like a lose-lose yeah you know what's funny is like being taken seriously is funny to me uh because i hate to say this but like if you look at any destiny panel like why is anyone taking anyone seriously on those panels like, why are they even taking, I think, like, why is anyone, why are we even qualified to be on, like, be, to be taken seriously? The, the awful part is, I think we are, as much as I have been categorized as, like, mentally ill mm-hmm. and just out of place, a fucking character and a terrible representation of, like, women or whatever the fuck they, they put on us. Mm. I think we are, um, I think we're more representative of people mm. who talk about these things in real life who are who others might run into at work who people are going along and like voting with i think we're more representative of those people than the the fucking philosophy major mm. who hops on his stream to have like the 10th conversation about <laughs> whether or not it's okay if they fuck their dog yeah because maybe <laughs> it's dead yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the greatest yeah. Uh, d- uh, philosophy question of all time. <laughs> I think that's the- where they all lead to is whether or not you can fuck your dog. L- I'm not all even gonna them. pretend like that's not true. That is literally so true. It always gets down to this. So, okay, here's my issue. So, I have been online <laughs> for a long time, and I used to take myself very seriously because I was in politics. I wanted to be like really like I wanted to maybe run. I had these aspirations of being president when I was in my twenties. Um, I had these aspirations of being someone very serious. Like I rolled with adults. I was really, and then I started rolling with these very quote unquote serious adults. And found out all I think of I saw its... you. Oh. I think I saw you on IRL panels. Yeah. Yeah. So I work mm-hmm. sometimes with like um, a debate like MythCon or MythicistCon or something. And I think Des- even Stevens worked with them. So I, I definitely wanted to be taken seriously at some point. But then I realized like none of these people are as consistent behind closed doors with their beliefs that they say in, in public. So I felt stupid for taking myself so seriously. That's like, um... Right. It's like the the Lauren Southern experience, right? When her, her experience is so close to mine. Steven's experience has been closer as well, where like you're in politics, you're oh, with these with really the big people. But then the socialists and all of a sudden behind the door, they're the biggest fucking capitalists of bro, all. Bro, like these feminist YouTubers that I've all met or even like had more intimate relationships with, their consent rules behind closed doors are fucked up compared to how they operate in, in like real like out loud I was like oh my god like and I'm sitting there in the room like oh shit okay this is like Epstein Island over here I'm out like I'm out like this energy yeah. is too conspiracy for me it's too weird and then I sound crazy if I tried to say like these are the conversations we're having in private but then like Mr. Girl it's like reasonable to discuss the spectrum of consent if even the people who are pushing consent are behind closed doors not following their own rules because they're finding it to to be too hard so mm-hmm. I want to have like all of this conversation without saying that we're so important that we have to be taken seriously with everything we say. In that same chat I had with Lavin, Mr. Girl, and everybody on the panel, I said something um, very quickly like, oh, I have like payment plans for people. I didn't mean literally like that was so like a misspeak. It, I don't actually have payment plans. I've never had payment plans. I meant to say I have payment options for people, which people took as payment plans, but that's not true. I have Pay- – uh huh. Wait, what's wrong with um? What's wrong with payment plans? Some people think it's like, oh, me guaranteeing money now into my bank account. No matter what I do, it's always like, yes, I live in America. I'm trying to make money. I'm not trying to hide that, right? I wouldn't. I obviously good. can't do everything I do for free, right? Yeah, but I mean, good. <laughs> I think it's good, but I understand that payment plan. Now people are like, oh, there's a payment plan structure, so you can guarantee port. Like most of my callers are, if they're on a budget, they there's a budget option. They're 70 an hour or my regular price, which is 250 an hour. If you can't afford the 250 and you don't want to wait for the 70, like just don't do the call, right? Wait, hold on. Wait, yeah. just rewind a bit. So when you say payment plan, because I'm, I'm still not finding the problem, yeah. they're upset because you are accepting money and portions before you provide a service? Which I have never done. But if I was to do it, the conspiracy is that I'm, 
egging poor people to go on payment plans to make sure I get my 250. But that's not what's happening. I've never taken literally like a payment plan like that. I'm, but I understand that no matter what I do, they're going to cultify it or villainize it. So when I get on a panel and these people are not taking me seriously, like I want them to take my work seriously in the sense that they're not going to be overly emotional and call me a cult leader. You can't take someone seriously and then call them a cult leader when I'm just a philosopher like person on the internet. Like I like philosophy. I like finding out why we're here on the planet. And that usually involves with, you know, putting things together. So I like categorization. It makes me feel really comfortable. I like that I'm a woman. I like that I'm queer. I like that I'm Middle Eastern. I like that you know what I am. It's like really important to me, I think because of the like dissonance I have with my own identity, very borderline, right? You grow up your whole life being gaslit un unintentionally. My parents unintentionally did this to me my whole life. And I've made peace with that where they confused me from a young age about who I was. Like, am I not the Britney I think I am? And then everyone's like, no, Britney, you're this. So when grown adults say, I'm taking you seriously, you're a narcissist cult leader. It's like, no, you're not. I want to be taken seriously in a philosophy way. Like John Verveke, who's a wonderful um, philosophy um, professor who does the meaning crisis, he would never come on my stream and be like, the levels are a cult. He'd be like, so tell me about where you got this idea for the levels. It must have come from a place. Was it uh, Socrates? Was it, you know, ex-philosopher? Like, who was it? And then we'd start discussing about how I even came into it because all philosophers are just random people who, educated or not, created a system that makes sense for how they view, like, ethics and morals yeah. and why, right? Mm -hmm. So why is every man who's created a philosophy a great mind and I'm the cult leader? Like, I don't understand. So I don't, I don't even know what, like, ignore the levels part, the part where you might do a payment plan. Yeah. Um, honestly, it just, it seems like uh, maybe people trying to find ways to criticize you mm. from, like, like, throwing everything at the wall to see what <clears throat> sticks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Like, here, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. You do this, you do this, you do this, and you do this. And all of a sudden, because there's so many things that they've complained about, that um, it feels like it feels like a valid criticism. Mm. And then what's left over after you feel like you've shaken off most of it, like, maybe a couple things linger around, that probably shouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, the mm -hmm. idea that we're supposed to make money as content creators, like, does that feel bad for some people? Maybe. Mm. Um, it's kind of the goal. It's kind of how it's supposed to happen. It's the dream and job, right? For a lot of people, it is yeah. for me. Yeah. You're supposed to, when you do sex work, you're supposed to get paid for it. Yes, ma'am. When you post content, you're supposed to get paid for it. If you're going to provide a service, whatever you want to call it, you're supposed to get paid for it. Um, people can challenge you, uh, I guess, if they want to, of whether you're doing any of these things ethically, but... Um, not ethically. Yeah. If they agree with you. Yeah. But the idea that you get paid to do it is, um, and that being like a root of criticism is, is ludicrous. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it, I think it's super infantilizing. If I hope that's the right word. Infantilizing for your audience. Oh, completely. Imagine being, imagine being a supporter of you and being told like, oh, I'm sorry, but if you give money to this person you like you don't even know that she's fucking pulling your leg. Yeah. It's like when you when you hear women try to um put down other women using the patriarchy. It's like, "Excuse me, did you mean to do it in that way?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could just criticize me. Don't um don't use men's opinions to put put me down. Like you maybe have your own. Yeah. Um I think that's the biggest part or like I have a client list I don't mention out loud. Obviously, like it's I don't tell people who I talk to, but I talk to a lot of content creators or like people with like an insane amount of wealth and like they're not they're not like I think Max tried to paint my audience as like young vulnerable people and that might be his audience but my audience just is on a different journey right now maybe in my 20s mm -hmm. when I was going through the height of my borderline and stuff sure maybe but my audience is so shifted you know they're older they're growing with me they're buying houses they're getting married they're having kids or they're like getting out of college and trying to decide what to do with their life or maybe they're even a little younger but they're not dealing with like um they're dealing with philosophy existential crises. They're they're dealing with just their everyday life or even just managing, you know, how do I go to work and talk to this woman about this drama? And I'm like, let's talk about it. And then I give them solutions or maybe they just watch anime with me or maybe they don't do any of those things. It's just a matter of what they want to do. And so I think I just love humans and I love that they're so capable of multiple things. But when you are multifaceted, you get to enjoy life that way. And I think if you're not, it must be harder to understand that many of us are doing that. You know what I mean? I think um, I think there 
you know my criticisms of you. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't think it's stopped me from, like, enjoying hearing you talk. Mm. And, and then especially, um, hearing you empathize with me or, like, understand me, Mm. um, that was at a, at a time where I feel like I really was being misrepresented or mi- in, intentionally misunderstood. Um, that was, it was really nice to hear. Uh, so I definitely understand the appeal. Hmm. Uh, I understand somebody feeling like, okay, I'm at a hard time and I would, you know what? I would like to talk to Brittany because I think she's going to, um, she's going to understand me or hmm. she's going to maybe give me like a charity in this situation that I'm going through. Yeah. Uh, I hope so. I think that's my goal. My goal is to create a bubble in which I'm not recording you. I'm not shaming you. I'm not here to tell you you're a piece of shit. The world's already told you that a thousand times or what you're going through is like, Oh cool. What's that about? Or like I have a lot of women who call me who are a uh, boss lady women and they really struggle with like being in their relationships or even their queer women who are like, oh, I'm going through that queer crisis. I was like, don't we all? We're dating men. We're marrying men. Like, oh, we look straight. I get it. So like I think a lot of people forget that a lot of very secure people still struggle from insecurities and need someone who's secure as her, in herself who also is mm-hmm. open with her insecurities to talk to. And knowing that I won't go around telling people who they are or telling people I do calls with X and X or telling, you know, that's not my business. Like, and now one, you know, one ear out the other, like, girl, I'm not here to do that. But I, that's what I'm trying to do. I like Mm -hmm. that you might've said things about my work that maybe were harsh in the past. And then I could still see you now and be like, ah, oh, whatever. Like, not a big deal. Who cares? Because that's, that's what I mean by Mm -hmm. taking us seriously. I don't even think life is that serious. I just think it can be, obviously. I just think that, it, so it, why hold the grudge, you know? So instead of, okay, so I'm taking what you said there mm-hmm. and I'm thinking that maybe the way that I need to interpret how you're saying seriously is to like put permanence on you. Ah. Um, like, okay, maybe you, you think that like you're silly to look at what I'm doing and thinking that like, um, like that I'm a Nazi cult leader. It's like, bro, I yeah, was think that I'm in I'm like watching anime rigid. All yeah, yeah the, like, thinking that I'm rigid or something like that. Like, live and grow. I don't know. In, include some hippie shit in there. Um, <laughs> but, but definitely, definitely take you serious as a content creator. I think. Yeah. Um, I think I. Not that I didn't. I'm skeptical of everyone, especially people As who have be. mental illness. Sure. I'm I'm a shit person in that way. I think I told you I had a lot of bad experiences with other people. Um, and I guess I could just more so map this onto polyamory. Mm. So the way that you, you saw the book that I read and the way that I'm talking about it, and you're like, oh, you've done the work. You're like at, at this level maybe. Yeah. Um, I find that there's a lot of people when they have mental illness that say that they're here and they think that they're here. Totally. But it's like, it's the loudest decibel on 10 that they are (laughs) down fucking here. And I just can't deal with it. Yeah. I can't deal with the, the idea that you think that you figured it the fuck out to the point where you're telling me. Yeah. Um, who boy. Cause then I will, I will go Beyonce and I will, uh, (laughs) I'll lemonade your ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I get that. I totally get that. No, yeah, I... So I... Yeah. When I first heard about you, saw our conversations, um, what is it that, that Stephen likes to call them? The the pixie people? Uh, the pixie dream girl? Like the manic pixie dream girl? Yeah, manic pixie dream girl. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. The high energy, very opinionated. I've figured out um, half of, like, my mental illness. And so it gives, like, immediate red flags. Totally. And I'm just like... I go in my protection mode, and I'm like, okay, no. <laughs> totally. Um, hold on. So that was um, initial response to you. Uh, and then, of course, the, the bubbles thing. And then just, like, um, I guess as I – the the more content of yours that I watched, um, of course, I start having opinions. And, yeah. and then just wanting – being a little disappointed that um, 
you didn't want to be taken seriously, but I kind of, I understand where you're going with it now. Yeah, it's hard too because I think I radically believe like we don't know what we're doing on this planet. Like I believe, like I, I just. Bro, I don't even know what I'm doing on my stream. So, <laughs> so I think I have a hard time when people are like, this is very serious, Benny. You can't like gay people read books to kids. And I'm like, oh, I, I cannot take you seriously, right? So when people mm -hmm. are like, take me seriously, it's like. How am I going to take you seriously when it has to begin with you have a belief that was written a book and you believe it's true so you get to dictate people's beliefs, right? So how am I supposed to even yeah. be – and same with me. I don't think the levels are anything more than a tool. I don't think I'm sharing a – I think it's like a truth in terms of a tool. Like a hammer is a hammer and in truth it hits nails maybe. But like mm -hmm. it's it's one of those things where I think it's a tool to understand the world better. I'm much more compassionate and lenient also, on people. Mm -hmm. I also haven't gone through all of it. So, Fair. Um, Fair. And it's a living entity. The reason I'm never going to write it down um, is because I don't think that, one, people will start – Well, <laughs> permanence. And people start, like, identifying, like, I'm a leveler. And I'm like, oh, God. Like, I will get off the internet yeah. right now. I just – I know humans. I know what they do. They just have a habit of becoming obsessed with the idea that this one thing will tell me what the truth is. And I don't believe that. I think every, every bubble, every philosophy, every religion – holds a little bit of truth and you just got to figure out which part of it is real but that's the problem we can't know that so I think the struggle is that we can only know what we know and for me knowing is so specific like some people will say I know Stephen is a good person I know Cherry is a good person well what does that mean I know that like does that mean that um Stephen never litters does it mean that Cherry never makes mistakes like is that okay like you know what I mean so Brittany I have a very lenient view of bad and good and I think most people are good. I just think most people are messy. <laughs> yeah, I super like that about you. Oh, I am a messy person. That's actually how I describe myself. Ah. That's so funny. Yeah, I feel, um, like a, I feel like a klutzy, hot boomer mess, hot mess all the time. All mm -hmm. the time. Like, just all the time. And I, I think that I have to just humble myself and remember that I am – I barely know how to get my OBS running. I don't know why anyone thinks I think I know what's good for the world. I don't. I just know that the bubbles are there in terms of cultural differences mm -hmm. and belief systems and how we're raised. And so that makes it so everyone is just going to have a different reaction to reality. Like, I don't appreciate yeah. when people tell me who I am. It freaks me out. But I'm also used to it. I've had it my whole life, right? I know you better than you know yourself. Like, oh, I'll tell you who you are. Let me, you know, and that's very frustrating. And I think that's the big part of the borderline Mm -hmm. identity issues so I've worked so hard on knowing myself going to therapy spending my own money figuring it out and reading thousands of books so all I know the yeah. best is me I don't know anyone else the way I know myself especially um I think allowing yourself to meet new people mm -hmm. and doing fucking content online um there's a lot of people who feel like they know you yeah. because you because you post a lot Totally. Or because they've DM'd you before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or because you went to one fucking brunch with them. Mm -hmm. um, but there's this, uh, there's this real unease about someone having that confidence about you mm. when you know that it shouldn't be there. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've actually had somebody call me out to tell me that, like, my disorder was acting up and that they knew that about me Ugh. because because we had gone to brunch one time before and we like um we like had two debates or something like that like I don't know how to I don't know how to not go right to 10 when mm -hmm. that shit happens because mm -hmm. you gotta you have to be some type of stupid or some type of bad faith to think that one brunch means that you that you know me mm. that you know anything about what I'm going through you could just just call me a bitch <laughs> just call me a bitch say I'm a mean person do yeah. you mean like that's my mo right now everywhere mm. um but to imply like anything about my mental health like that's so it's just fucked I mean, gosh, I I'm so used to it, right? People always go like, oh, Brittany, you're so obviously triggered. And I was like, I don't know if you're using the like meme trigger word or if you mean medically triggered, but obviously I'm not medically fucking triggered right now. So like yeah. I always wonder with that or even if, you know, I think it's just normal. I've had so many people. Um, I think my, my mom tells me it's my warmth. It makes it look like I'm closer to people than I am because she'll be like, she'll see me in the store, talk to someone. She'll be like, do you know them? And I'm like, no, they just came up to me to talk to me. She goes, why did it look like you hug them? And I was like, yeah, but I don't know them. I just, I'm just that way. I'm like, I can't wait. If I was a little old grandma, all of my actions would make sense to everybody. 
But because I'm not old, everyone thinks like you can't just be nice to people. But I think everyone's mostly good. So it's easier for me to think nicely of people automatically. And at the same time, not feel comfortable with people. Like I think Max is a good person that I'm very uncomfortable with and feel very unsafe around. But I think that that makes sense. And those two things can be true at once. And I think that I grew up um, in a political world where they expected me to ditch everyone around me because I was, quote, uncomfortable with them. Or like, oh, would you leave your kids with Max? Obviously not. But then that's not because of his cuties take. That's because of every take he has. That literally has nothing to do with his cuties take. I just wouldn't yeah. trust somebody with that energy around a child that was mine because I'm very picky about who gets to be around my kid. Like, I don't trust mm-hmm. nobody, girl. And I don't know about you, but when you grow up in a world with a big family or even a Middle Eastern family or a POC family, they're not the biggest fans of mental health or they're not the biggest proponents of mm-hmm. admitting fault. So I'm used to dealing with people every day who are grumpy, arrogant, loud, and will tell me exactly to my face. Like, if you ask my mom, is Britney gay? She'd be like, no. So, like, you can't even trust my own mother to know me the best because my mom is in denial of that part of my brain. She'll be like, oh, Britney's had her moments. It was a phase. So it's like, who do we even go to to know? I'm sorry, am I there? Am I here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. I think we cut out. Who do we? I just said frustrating. Oh, frustrating. So frustrating. And so I think that that's the problem is that I am trying to make it clear to people that do we all know we're doing this to each other though? Do we know that we're even possibly doing it now to Lav? Like, are we doing this to Lav? Or is Lav, is Lav really understanding she's fucking up? Or is she not fucking up and so I can't even blame her? Like, is she, is she smart enough to know better? But then if she's not, we can't hold her to the seriousness of maybe another level but then that sounds really condescending and it's always going to feel condescending that's the thing I like that I am I want to be like the beach bum philosopher that's like don't don't I don't want to be in academia bros I think it's stupid but at the same time if I was in front of a real academic I'd want to have a serious conversation out of respect to them for what we're talking about and I'd want to be able to talk with them but that's not the same when I go to YouTube no offense and I'm seeing the panel that was in front of me that night, Chud Logic with his black face, boring and so silly provocative. Like, he's obviously just yeah. a white boy who thinks he's being really provocative oh and he's being so fucking basic. I'm like, oh, black face? Go. Bro, that's so 1920s. Boring. Next. I've been told. I don't know why he does this. Like, White people um, are obsessed with being the center of no, attention. No, no. <laughs> no it's, it's Chud specifically. Chud <laughs> Logic specifically, okay? Yeah. This motherfucker was like, a communist he's so against racism he's so fucking like his actual politics are so fucking soy mm. i told him you better actually start getting racist or else no <laughs> one's gonna buy this whole fucking <laughs> shtick that's the thing right it's like how serious so tears like lav and i are trying to do a fake call and chud just interrupts he goes is this worth 250 and i'm like how can i t- why is anyone taking anyone here seriously when chud's like give yeah. me a second i'll do a whole fucking hour with lav for free bitch like right here on the internet i know my work is worth it but that's the thing is that Chud doesn't even give the chance because one, he knows it will ruin it. And two, it's just like his thing, right? So again, I'm not opposed to be taken seriously, but I most certainly am not going to pretend that these are serious thinkers. No offense. I know. I completely, I completely understand. Um, that's like, like when I join a panel and uh, it's talking about politics and we're on the subject of like... Uh, literally anything okay mm-hmm. everything that i say it's coming with a grain of salt half yeah. of the shit that i know are from conversations with my husband or just uh, articles that i've read over the years i'm not an expert right nobody i should not be attracting scholars to want to come talk to me or anything <laughs> like that so i i understand what you mean but yeah. it's like I'm, I'm just a i'm just in this space okay <laughs> yeah i'm just trying to have the conversation because i think it's fun and it's like the one way i want to spend my life on earth is I want to be doing this. It, the fact that I can make money is a miracle. Like, God bless the internet. Because, like, what the fuck? I also think that, um, like, people like us are just, it, we're more relatable. And I think mm. we pull a more um, more normie base to to this political space. Yeah, maybe that's it. I will say my audience, though, they're, like, privately so unique in many ways. They live very normal lives. They're in normal jobs and normal expectations. They have normal responsibilities. And I think that's a missing um, – I'm not too normie. Like, I can be like, hi, guys. Welcome to my pumpkin spice latte, like, stream for November. Like, that's not my vibe. 
But my vibe is mm-hmm. obviously I want to be normal. I always say this to people. I feel like my life is really normal. I wake up, brush my teeth, drink my coffee, go on, go to work, and then I stop work, maybe. <laughs> and then I watch trash TV and I continue on with my life. I don't think I'm trying to change the world. I'm actually deliberately trying not to change the world. I'm trying to only impact for the positive the people who want my version of positive impact because my brain is not going to work for everyone's brains. Like I have a bestie. He comes yeah. and does my streams with me some or my uh, podcast with me sometimes. We could not be from different worlds. Like we just literally could not be more different. But that difference, the conversations we have, it allows us to recognize which people are more like him, which people are more like me. And the people who are more like him are less likely to engage with my content because they're just different. Like they're, they think differently. They're not – It's just, that's life, okay? My audience only knew who Destiny and Max were after I started watching them, some of them. Some of my audience knew, but that's the thing. Not even my audience as a whole knows Destiny lore. So for Destiny or Max to think that I am like this great people, like people must know who we are. No, they do not. Like nobody, here in this town where I live, um, we -hmm. told this couple I'm on YouTube and they're like, what's YouTube? And I'm like, it's an online website. People post videos and they're like, oh, weird. Like They don't. They don't, no, they don't know what YouTube is. And they're retired firefighters okay. and cops. They're in their 70s. Never heard about it. Not even from their grandkids. Wow. So what I'm trying to say is this illusion we have that everybody knows what we're doing or everyone knows who we are is just such a fucking nar- – like it's a little narcissistic to me because I know no one knows who I am. I, my neighbors every day, nobody knows who I am in this town. Nobody gives a fuck what Brittany does. She, she go to Walmart. She buy her groceries. She come home. Nobody cares. So like to get on the internet and to mm. feel like, Brittany, like you should care what you're doing. Why? None of you do. Not in private, you don't. I'm, I'm like the opposite, especially Ooh. when I look at your situation. Um, I'm the opposite. I feel like people are slowly finding um, the internet in these sort of spaces, these sort of um, social little communities. Um, and I think they are going to kind of become the, the new like watering poles, if mm. you will. Like people used to meet in churches and I think they're finding themselves in like little communities that are I agree with that. through yeah. content creators. Um, and I, I kind of did this for, for sex workers, just kind of giving an argument to um, support the, the issues that people had with the parasociality mm. of being able to contact somebody via OnlyFans and, yeah. and stuff like that, or, or to pay a sex worker for their company. Um, who, who are you to decide that a fully competent adult can't do what they want with their money? <laughs> um, who are you to decide that, who, what is, maybe it's like an 80 year old dude who mm-hmm. doesn't have legs anymore and yeah. they just want to flirt with somebody totally. and, and they, they just need this in their life and they have the money to blow. Yes, like, ma'am. who the fuck are you to decide what is, um, what is adding to their quality of life versus uh, add, like being a harm to them? Also, it's easier. I, it's easier for customers to hire a sex worker than to get a girlfriend. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Because not because and they're lonely, because they're rich and busy. Like, so, yeah, that's you know the I other mean? thing. You, the, you can just like think of several situations in which like, oh, yeah, it's probably good that this person can just like randomly like – or or feel some uh, connection, like let's say like soldiers overseas and stuff like that, right. who don't have the time to date or anything like that, and they they left home and like I don't know. You can just think of situations and this idea that you will have a community um, who has grown to like you as a content creator, likes your outlook on life, likes the compassion mm-hmm. that they see you apply, mm-hmm. and sees that you know what they're they need something right now and they got 750 or I don't think that's your price. No, I don't know why that number came to mind. Yeah. <laughs> and they've got 250 and they decide they, they would like to spend that money on you. They want, they think that you are worth it. Yeah. You are a product, um, not to objectify you in that way, but, no, but um, my time is absolutely a yeah, product. It's a product. It's a service. They think it's worth it mm-hmm. and they want to pay you for the call that they're going to find value in. Yes. I think it's just, it's so infantilizing to, to them, it's so, um, it's counterproductive to you as a content creator to mm-hmm. shame you for making money. I just, I don't like the entirety of that equation. Right. Uh, right. And so I would, I would like to, like me personally, I go the opposite direction of none of this matters. Um, it all matters mm-hmm. and it matters for the people who need it. Um, and those are the people that I'm here for. If yes. you think that there are, uh, 
dumb people, retards out in the world who are being taken advantage of, I recommend that you become an advocate for mental health services and like uh, better education. I don't know what to tell you. I can't take on everything. I am helping the people who are asking me for help. Yeah. Um, the, the people who don't know better, let's start at the pre-K. Like, I can't, I can't fix that. Well, I think the issue I always have is that the road to hell is paved in good intentions. So I remember when Los Angeles was going to make um, porn uh, companies use condoms in all their porn. Even if you were a mom and pop shop out of your bedroom with your husband or wife, condoms. And I was like, this is bullshit. And then people who weren't in sex work were like, why? Isn't this good? Condoms are safety things. I was like, condoms also bring down the price of your porn. So if you're a husband and wife, you've been monogamous and you do porn out of your house and it's a studio, now LA County is going to make them use a condom, which makes no sense because they are going to lose money on it. So like it's good for the safety, but it's bad for business. So why would you take away a married monogamous couple's ability to make more money because you want to keep them safe from their extra partners on on set? It just doesn't make sense, right? But of course it sounds like it makes sense. And I think the issue too is that I think that sex work and then what you do like I know a lot of sex workers who have day jobs like you could be a therapist by day and a sex worker at night like I know a lot of people who have two jobs so I have two jobs I do my calls which are outside of all my sex work if you make it adult at all I'll just block you and you won't get a refund like I do not want to do sex work that way I don't do phone sex I do not want to sell my body via a call it's just not it doesn't make me feel good it makes me feel bad and I don't like it but if we're talking about philosophy, ideas, anime, life, oh shit, yeah. Like I'll talk to you for hours. I'll, I'll, let's like start, like literally this guy came to my house the other day to fix my, my washer. We talked for an hour about philosophy. He like sat down at my table and we had coffee and I was like, he's like quantum physics. I was like, let's talk about free will. And like we sat there and we'd like on a paper, we're graphing out ideas. I do this with anyone who wants to engage with me. And if I have the time in the spoons, because I'm obsessed. And after, what did he ask? He asked if we could be friends. And I said, no. And I said, now you know where I live. Because I told him, I don't okay. have I don't have the spoons. I'm already on the fucking internet. Mm-hmm. So many people are demanding my time. My own friends know. She called mm-hmm. me yesterday. She goes, ma'am, why aren't you answering my messages? I was like, ma'am, you are one of a thousand of overwhelming messages I get every day. I'm so sorry. I just can't. I can't do it. So I'm already at a point where to get what Brittany wants out of life, I have to talk to people. But I also need to pay my bills and have babies. So, okay, how do I do this? Well, I'll charge, right? And then I'm trying to do it within my values, which I think are the subjective part that makes everyone uncomfortable. I don't think we know what we're doing here. So for someone to strongly say, I'm religious and that's the answer, or I'm secular, that's the answer. I'm a communist, that's the answer, is so exhausting to my brain. I just think that they're <laughs> they're not lying, but they are, and they're not insane, but it is sort of insane to think you know what's going on on the planet. Like it is a version of insanity mm-hmm. that I don't think anyone wants to admit out loud. And so I'm the one who looks crazy because I'm like, but we don't even know what we're doing here. So aren't you putting a lot of pressure on people For something we don't even know what's going on. Like, why does everyone feel comfortable? And I know I used to. I used to be a two in a bubble, pushing a narrative, thinking that I knew best for everybody. But how can you know best for everyone when you're not a vegan? You're not a sex worker. You're not black. You're not Asian. You don't know anything about this person's life. And so that's the issue that I'm always going to have. So, like, nothing matters. But everything matters because it's our real life. It mattered to me that Max called me a Nazi co-leader. Because now people are like, Brittany, will you address the rumors of you being a Nazi? When I feel like I couldn't even qualify as a Nazi if I'm Middle Eastern. Like, why am I even being asked this question? Like, I'm not, can Middle Eastern people be Nazis now? Is that a thing? Because I grew up learning you couldn't be a Nazi unless you were Aryan, like white, like European. I I have no idea. I think there are even black Nazis today. What is that? What is a black Nazi? Is that, like, is that real? I don't even know what a Nazi is That's what I'm saying. So So I just, I have a struggle. I want to have all these conversations. I want to talk, I wish I could talk to Max about the consent conversation, but he doesn't want a conversation. He just wants to be allowed to rape people. (laughs) Take that back. Don't clip that. Don't clip that. But kind of, right? I think I, I told him the only person that he should be having uh, that talk about consent with is a sex doll bro like that's the thing though I okay do you know though like I want to I want to hear your opinion on this I have been in those situations where people women have put me in a position where they're like no 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 yes 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 no 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 yes 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 and it's like I'm confused so are you into it or not and I had a girl the first girl I ever went down on um had another woman in the room watching her consent to sex with me but then after she even took pictures of us and then after she goes I felt like you took advantage of me and I was like oh well, now I'm doubly confused. And so there was a rumor for like a year that I took advantage of her, but then she started accusing everyone of doing it. So then we found out she was just accusing everyone she's had sex with because she was ashamed she had sex. Do you know what I mean? Yes, yes. I understand the 
the afterwards shame or whatever. Right. Uh, I think I, I saw that in high school happen. A girl got caught, uh, like, come on her sheets, and then mm. she didn't do... She didn't do it lightly like that. She told her mom that she was raped oh, and got God. a kid, like, accused of, of rape. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's what I'm so. saying. So these bubbles that shame women for having sex or men create these instances where their sons are now being falsely accused because you've shamed women <clears throat> so much for having sex. Now women feel pressured to accuse men. And then men are being sent. Yeah. And I'm sitting here like we are creating the chaos of the world, but we're all blaming each other when it starts at mm -hmm. home. Are we shaming our children for having sex? Are we shaming sex in yeah. general when it's a part of the human experience? Are we, you know what I mean? Are we creating the system yes. that we hate? Is Max, who's Max, to be mad at you? I'm sorry, I'm going to go off. Who is Max to go off on you to say, Cherry did this thing to me. She accused me of something that could have really impacted me. Um, when he literally did that to me, and again, like you, I understand, but don't you know you're just mad at yourself? We're mad at each other because we're mad at ourselves for continuing the cycle. Dude, the next day, like, uh, a podcast that he did with, um, with the... No Jumper? Uh, Who? Jumper? Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw with it. No Jumper. <clears throat> where he, I, I think he was, like, he was struggling to get charity in the oh, debate. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Wait, wait, so, wait, wait, wait. I knocked you out. Mm -hmm. Wait, I knocked you out. Okay, okay. go ahead. Uh, he was he was struggling to get charity in the debate yeah. with, um, with the dude who was Flocka, really very Flocko? rigid towards him. Yeah. And, um, and he, like, invoked destiny to... to I, I don't know why people do this. Um, it's like all roads lead back to destiny. You don't... Whatever. I'm not going to psychoanalyze. Um, but he invoked destiny to appeal to reason. Like, oh, you mm -hmm. wouldn't do this to destiny. And he's mm -hmm. like, destiny never said that he raped somebody. And then Max just, like, lets it fly out. Like, yes, he did. He did say that. Like, I know. I know. I know. That's what I'm saying. It's insane. Also, that Flacco guy or whatever... Isn't he just a normie? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you not know how to talk he is, to a normie? He's a normie. But he was so he reasonable normie, within the normie rules. Like, talk to him, understand the bubble, talk to him. But Max can't. And Max is also, and it just, you know. Mm -hmm. you, you can see the amount of frustration that he has with his own content and Bro. how it's interpreted. And it feels like the same conversation that I've had, that other people have had over and over and over again. And you can hear what he says um, in response. It, like, it's it's always the other person's problem right they are they're virtue signaling signaling they're not mature enough to have this conversation they're too close-minded i right. think somebody joked around like he wants to throw out and call them a level one uh, i think that's a reference to you yes <laughs> but, um but then he will go and he'll be like okay yeah I, I imagine it's gonna bother you i'm not gonna put something on the internet that's that's not going to um it's not going to be interesting. It's not interesting if it's right. not that extreme. Which makes it sound fake, um, right? Doesn't it make it sound it like does, he's it does. lying it now? Like so I'm a... like, so you're just doing it for clout. You're doing it for views. I And I've had this conversation with him where I'm like, listen, the, the whole empath thing, like, it's not going to work out for you, okay? You're not being empathetic. You don't care when people don't understand you. You shut them the fuck down. Yeah. I think ABBA, I, I made a video about this where, like, the, the time that ABBA came on to tell him that his conversations are insufferable. Yes. Um, yes. Yes. They are. Max did not give a give a fuck. Yeah. About what Abba thought, and it's just like, okay, hold on. You you say that the whole reason that you got into this is because you want people to to hear two sides of a story. Mm -hmm. You don't want them to just, um, you don't want them to moralize the situation. But right. then he came on this new arc to Destiny, where he wants Destiny to all of a sudden start moralizing to to Fuentes and them, which is like very ironic. The mm -hmm. person who you have benefited so much. From the fact that they're not moralizing shit, you all of a sudden now want them to moralize. What's going on here? Right. Um, right. And then you look back on the content and you realize, oh, wait, moralizing has happened this whole time. It's just, it's only for him. Yeah. Um, and it's not empathizing because you don't care and like to to get people to understand and and to do better in conversation so they do want to to understand and to like you can reach them so if we're if we're not doing this to empathize empathize to people mm. we're not doing this to reach a new audience what the fuck is going on here yeah when you say that it's only going to be interesting if it's the most like extreme or the most provocative then you do kind of sound like a grifter you do kind of sound like you're just creating content you're just being um what is the the c word where you're a coomer. Just you're kidding. Deliberate. No, no. <laughs> Where you're deliberately taking the opposition. Um, um, contrarian. Uh, contrarian. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're like, 
He does feel it that way. Off. When he said Marshall yeah. Linehan, Dr. Marshall Linehan shouldn't work with patients because she has borderline, I was like, okay, now you're just being retarded. Like, in a way that's so offensive to everybody involved. That, yeah, and that was my second discussion with him that um, that we had. Uh, and these are criticisms I've been had of Max. Um, and I feel like <laughs> I'm so frustrated with myself because I kind of, I, I feel like I've done a lot of the work to mm-hmm. get a good read on him. And um, I've... I just have to figure out how to get back to being allowed to have, like, opinions about him. Um, probably while maintaining the fact that, like, I did fuck up. Yeah. I just feel but like an impossible situation right just, now, but I okay. think it's just still fresh. So that shit happen. You made a mistake. Oopsies. No big deal. I don't understand how, out of all people in the world, Max can get, just get the fuck over it, considering the fact that he's put people through so much. And, like, that's the issue is, like, he doesn't want to give it to other people. He just wants it for himself, the compassion, the consideration. Yeah. Which is why it's hard to care that he got his channel deleted on an emotional level. Like, as an artist, as a YouTuber, I care. I'm like, fuck, that sucks. But, like, same yeah. with Sneeko. I um, love Sneeko. Sneeko's got my phone number. I, like, message Sneeko. And I still am like, bro, why did you die on the hill of this hill? Like, why did you die on this hill? You know? Mm-hmm. It's like, why are you choosing this hill? But I know. I know as somebody who's weird. Of course I want to push the barriers, but I actually think it's fine to be normal. So that's the issue. I think the world is fine. So when Flacco has an opinion that, yeah, if you're in your 30s and you're into 17-year-olds, you're kind of a pedophile, yeah, that's a pretty base take. You're at least fucked up. Like, you're at least something is going on. Like, why are you into people who are basically like children? Unless not in a pedophile way either. I'm open to the idea of the conversation, right? My grandma was married at 12. I think I have some things to say about how these situations culturally happen, whether we like it or not, for good or bad, right? But my grandma, it was in a happy marriage that was arranged. She didn't want to get married. But it's what you did in Iraq, right? So, like, they had a good and successful marriage, and they learned together to suffer through in a marriage they both didn't want. But that doesn't make my grandpa a pedophile. That makes him a person in a bubble that forced people to do this thing they didn't want to do in order to keep the village going, right? Or to keep the lineage going. His father wanted sons. So I feel like the nuance is there. The nuance is what force from your bubble are you pushed towards suicide bombers they say many suicide bombers are forced to do it because their kids are being held captive their families are being held captive so again i'm not saying there aren't people who are doing it because they want to do it and there aren't people who are forced to do these things so in order to have that nuance let's talk about it but max just wants to be able to say things that are icky and then just have like no consequence and that's fine yeah but that's not how the world works right yeah and then on, on top of, like, getting over that hurdle, I I really have to reevaluate and figure out how I'm engaging with, um, with content mm. because I do feel like I created, um, like, a rabid chihuahua with, mm. with love. Mm. So, like, I think if I, if I were to sit down and write out all the ways in which um, she's being a hypocrite, with the hills that she's dying on with me. Yeah. That I feel like is harming her own integrity and the things that she believes in. Um, I think she still wouldn't listen. Yeah. Um, I, do you think that, sh- um, uh, I was about to call her Sherry. That makes some sense. Lav, do you think Lav actually, integrity is a hard word. Do you think that Lav has a value system that she can fundamentally rely on to push her narratives forward? Because I think she's still building it, right? Mm-hmm. So she wouldn't, have a sense of so self. My, yeah. Yeah, my take is that there's um there's no like foundation there. Right. And like usually when you have a foundation, when people check you, it's easier to figure out if you've fallen stray. Um and I think even when she's faced with the things that are hypocritical, mm-hmm. it she's very resistant to it. I understand that nobody is going to be receptive to um, people in, <laughs> insisting or implying the worst intentions. Um, but I feel like in a moment, I severely fucked up. I was absolutely reckless. Um, probably even more so than is, like, on the internet. Like, I, I live-streamed, okay? Mm-hmm. My anger came out in many, many words. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it took hearing from Steven and realizing that he... He did not see what I saw. Um, I, I take him for for an adult and to be reasonable. I don't care when he disagrees with me. Chances mm-hmm. are he he sees something that I don't. I can get um, short-sighted. Um, 
So for, for that situation to happen, and I do feel like it played out really honestly, and I think most people who have um, spoken to me have seen it too. Uh, that situation matched with later in that same fucking call of Lav wanting to bring up this mm. weird grooming allegation that she has of a larger streamer that she's she's tried to say on Steven's stream like several times now. She's spewed it in Chud Logic's Discord. Um, Wait, I'm getting lost. Who? That's she's spreading a rumor about oh. X. YouTuber who's grooming? A, um, a, a streamer. Who do we know? Uh, a Twitch streamer do that's I know grooming. Who it is? Probably not. Um, it's not. It's not real. It's um. Oh, it's, not... it's irresponsible. It's like there's fake details. Oh in there. God. Um and uh it's also um. There's like, there's infantilization involved as well with like what the age is. It's not. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of people have told her like. This is, don't say that, okay? Like, don't do this, don't do this. Um, this is irresponsible. I can't have it on my platform. Yeah. She's told over and over and over, but she still wants to spit it out there. Hmm. And it's like, hold on, I fucked up, but you are still, still trying to, like, do that shit. Like, just for one fucking second, can you be, like, a human and see that, like, um, I've made a, a fucking mistake and mine isn't out of, like, maliciousness but i think she only sees red with me mm. and i think it's i i think it's lore streams my lore streams oh the, interesting. the fact that i won't entertain a conversation with somebody mm. in the beginning um the fact that you i can't like i can block you ban you from my chat i can't stop you from watching my stream yeah so it's like i i act like i'm in my space on my own when um when I'm not on my own, the other person can very much see me. So it's kind of like having a conversation with somebody, but you can't talk back. And I think it drives the other person absolutely mad. I think I look like the most, um, like I'm lacking the most compassion possible when I'm just coming through like the words that someone says. Mm. Um, and I think I create my own, um, my own looping enemies. Interesting. Do you want to be somebody who is going to continue having moments like this with Lav and other content creators. Like, you, like it's hard not no. to in this. I will say, okay, so I don't consider myself a Steven Orbiter, obviously, because I've been a YouTube content creator my whole life without any, like, I just consider it a job and I happen to collab with Steven sometimes. But I mm -hmm. don't always feel like um, I'm a part of that group because, again, I... I take my life very seriously. Like my job I take seriously as a job. Like my calls are very important to me. So I put a lot of my energy into my calls, much more than I do to my streams. I because that's like real money, real people's time, real I have to be very considerate. But if I started associating and I think being associated with like um that energy, oh Brittany's one of the drama people, Brittany does this, I think I would lose credibility in some ways of being a problem solver. And I try really hard to be somebody who's on my own and doing my own thing for the, for a lot of reasons, but mostly because of this, because I like everyone individually. Like I can like Lav and I can tolerate Mr. Girl in different ways without ever saying that I trust either of them. Like I like Lav. I don't need to trust her to like her. I don't even care if she's a liar. I think everyone has problems with lying. And I think that's the issue because I try really hard not to lie, but it's very easy to lie. You just do it accidentally. So I and I don't think people mean it most of the time. I'm just more much more lenient, which allows me to be much more accepting. Lav, I think, is too not lenient, uh, so unforgiving that she almost doesn't have the right to be that arrogant towards others because now it's going to come back to her, which she sort of conceded to in the Kyla talk with her. But I'm not sure if she really knows it in her whole consciousness. Dex? Yeah, I don't know if, like, it's in her – like, with Max, right? Like, look at Max yelling at Destiny the other day over the Reddit ban. It's like, Max, grow up. But the problem is, is he can't because he wants to believe that his well, friendship with Steven gives him perks, which well, is... Well, you don't understand you know. that, um, like, Max, uh, and I think Lab, too, they they know Steven um, better than anybody else, so... How? I don't Why? know. Why? How? Who? I have no proof I, of that. Steven doesn't tell me said. that. But Steven doesn't tell me that. I want proof. I want proof that they've hung out in real life a thousand times. I want proof he, they know his middle name. I want proof they know his fucking social security number. I mean, who number. cares if they hung out a thousand times? But like, it's just, I don't know. All you know, of that's crazy to me. That's the thing. They yeah. act like they're so close to him, but I'm like, you're being, cr like, how are they not just like parasocial fans? Right? Like, I want to know, um, Max in particular, I won't go for love like that, but like Max in particular, like, what? how is he different from, if he's not a streamer who can uphold, hold his own, 
then he is just a fan who's using Steven. If you can't make your own views on your own Reddit, you need Steven's Reddit, then you're just a fucking, like, clout chaser. Like, I don't get it, right? I've never thought I need Steven's Reddit to promote my shit. I never even thought to post on Steven's Reddit. Why would I ever go there? Except to watch, like, I do go there. I like it in general. But, like, mm-hmm. why would I post so, there? Um, you if know? I can be... If I could be super charitable Tell as me. someone who does, I I chill in the DGG chat. Nice. Um, I don't. I'm not super. Uh, I'm not a big Reddit reader. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do know being in that community, it's it's nice. Um, there are people in there that are more tolerable than other communities. Um, and I th- it's got to be a little bit different from Max because he's actually like built a community. Like he's like a he's a real streamer. Yeah. I've I've just been floating along. So I, I think that there is a, a comfort in a community that did accept you, that did try to understand you and empathize with you and then feel like you're um, you're getting kicked off that community. Mm. Like, I can understand that feeling. Oh, and okay. I understand it because I've seen other, um, other chatters, not so much streamers, but, like, chatters react poorly to being, like, banned from the chat, mm. whether it's for, like, a couple days that they try to negotiate, then it turns into a couple weeks, then all of a sudden they're having a mental breakdown and they're screaming and and then the only way that they can talk to Steven is by like making fake fucking accounts over and over and over again. Um there's is not crazy. A lot of <laughs> <laughs> like am I crazy? I'm just saying I'm like I don't understand I'm... what's happening. I listen, um <laughs> Everyone has found a community there, and whether whether they are there because of Steven or because of the other people that they enjoy talking to, yeah, that's on the individual person. I think if you were to be forced to leave school one day out of nowhere, you would be so upset with it. Um, even if you hated your, your teacher yeah. and fighting with your teacher is what got you kicked out. Yeah. Uh, so I understand the feeling in that way, and I feel like not acknowledging that almost um, insults other people who have who work hard to get unbanned and stuff like that. But I do, when it comes to Max, someone who does have his own fucking community, who has built his own community, um, and who, for some reason, is staking his entirety to, like, defend whether or not people from his community need to be unbanned from Destiny's community. Like... I don't know. It feels like you've got them in your community. Shouldn't you just be happy with like that? That's like that's literally why, like as why a bas- do you need yeah. yeah why do you need soldiers in in r slash destiny? Like what is going on? Shouldn't like yeah. I think you do more to benefit if they want to and they can only exist with you and they're yeah. your avid supporters. Yeah. Uh, Maybe so that's... there's definitely like room to to question what the fuck like in this particular case. Maybe that's it a little bit. I actually I so I have a problem like a literal. Uh, brain I don't know what to call it but like um, my viewers have tried to explain this to me too they're like um, you have a habit of misusing the word friend I was like what do you mean they're like you'll call people friends that like you've just talked to once I was like eh same thing whatever yes. acquaintance friend I don't give a fuck you're not inner circle if you're not inner circle I don't fuck oh you shit like you know and that's part for people to understand is like my inner circle are the people who know everything about me everyone else are just cool people that I know like if you and I hung out and we went and got coffee like let's say we talked every month we could be like, oh, yeah, she's a friend. She's a caller. She's a co-worker. She's a streamer. She's like all these things. All those things are probably correct. But like I can't say she's in her circle. I don't know shit about you. Like I don't know you like that. I would never call you at 2 a.m. for help. Like I would never do those types of things. I don't even have – like I don't even have people's phone numbers. You know what I mean? I stick to Discord. So my whole thing is that I have an issue with how we all view these like relationships and then how we project them onto yeah. one another. So like my, I, my parents – They grow up believing like friends are not real. They don't stay with you. You don't have friends as adults because in their head, a friend is somebody you know that you see once every 10 years or through work or like friends are not, you have a husband and a wife. That's your friend, right? So my mom and dad always raised me with your friends are going to leave you. Their best friends are their cousins. Like they see them. They're all Middle Eastern people. They see each other. Those are their friends. And then they have friends that are non-related to them, but they're not like, again, it's just like an adult relationship. You see them on occasion. You don't... Again, I'm trying to make people understand how we're all defining friend or parasocial relationship is going to be different based off the bubble. So for Brittany, I consider Steven a friend. I consider Kyla a friend. Do I have either of their phone numbers? No. Have I seen them in real life? No. Like, 
if they were like, oh, we're not friends, we're coworkers, that's also accurate, and I'm good with that. But, um, you know, it just depends. Now, I, find it's, mm-hmm. I find a similar um, issue with content creators calling each other friends. I, Like, me personally, I end up, like, looking back and regretting how many people that I just throw out, like, oh, yeah, I'm friends with this person. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's my friend. Oh, my God, I love this person. Oh, my God, I love you. Like, ex- yeah. even just exchanging I love yous and then... Like, it just, it feels weird later, and then I realize how it comes off and how maybe it looks like I'm closer than I am right. with people. Um, I, I, I But don't it just sucks. Like, it sucks that like, I, I, just I say, say roll with it. Shit in the moment. I say roll with it, girl. I say let's roll with yeah. it. Let's negotiate. So, like, Kyla and I, we privately negotiated our friendship and in a call, like, private call. And I said, what do you expect from me? What are your expectations? Like, if you message me, do I have to message you within a week? Like, literally, I will ignore my phone text messages for up to a week for even my own sister. Because I just get Mm -hmm. overwhelmed. But people think because I'm so lovely and nice and accessible or they see me online. So they'll be like, she has the spoons to message me back. Why hasn't she? I literally don't even have the spoons. I have the spoons to do this. I don't have the spoons to do this and this. Like I don't have the energy. And so I think that's the other thing is um, I am – I like people. I think people are wonderful. And I want them – I want to be warm to them and accessible to them. But I don't want people to then ride with it and go crazy. But it happens. It's natural. My stalker did it with me. Everyone was shocked my stalker was a woman. I was like, why are you shocked about that? Women are the worst when it comes to over-assuming intimacy. Like, what are you talking about? That's so normal for me to assume. Like, I'm not shocked my my stalker is a woman. Like, that makes total sense to my brain. Um, it's just for different reasons. She, well, well, sort of, she was in love with me slash wanted to be closer to me, which is what men say too. So I don't, for me, it's all the same. All humans are the same to me. They're all trying their best and fucking up constantly. And we're just going to keep doing it until it works, you know? And that's it. Like, I don't need to say Max is a bad person for me to say I dislike Max. I think Max is a good person with a lot of fucked up ideas. And I don't like interacting with him away from having Steven as a moderator. Your experience, um, growing up probably, uh, Like, I think that's what I like about you. Um, I could definitely tell right away, probably have every reason to receive me in a bad way. I think I do myself no favors to be looked at in a positive way. Hmm. Um, Especially when I I really enjoy just, like, being loud at the mouth and, like, saying crazy shit sometimes. I love shit posting on Twitter. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't do myself any favors, but you definitely were just um, very charitable. And I felt like like your read on me with like maybe good intentions or no bad intentions is like more honest, like who I am than like the the part that I like to play up mm-hmm. more often. Mm-hmm. Um, and I maybe that's because you've gotten to a point where you, you saw your parents and their they're gaslighting as like not intentional. Yeah. Um, I grew up with uh, with intentional. Mm, um, that's so hard. So, yeah. So I feel like I have the opposite. Mm-hmm. Um, which is why usually when I like talk to my stream, it's everyone knows that like I'm kind of like looking for it. Yeah. I'm on guard like naturally. Totally. I'm very like hands off when it comes to people who. Um, it's just I'm, I'm not fucking sure of you. Totally. Uh, yeah. Totally. How many walls so, you got up, girl? Because I used to have like a thousand, but now I have one really nice wall set up and like an alligator that guards my feelings. And then I'm very picky about who I let in. But I find that it's really easy to have casual relationships with everyone that feel really deep because like, you know, I see people for a living, right? It's easy for me to most of the time to do that. Mm-hmm. When you're looking at yourself, it makes sense to me that you'd have walls up. But how many you got up? How many do you think you'll take down eventually? Or do you think you have enough up right now? Um, I'm, I'm not real. I'm not really sure. Okay. So it's like, it's like the confidence wavers, ah. um, which is why I don't take like every conversation because when I'm not super confident about, um, my understanding of, uh, of them or like what they're going to do, their intentions, I don't know how I'm going to take the conversation. If you heard my first debate with Lav, I was like, um, I was a child. I did I, not I hear form. it, so feel free to fill me in on any of the details. Um, <laughs> it basically. Oh wait, so I'm so I sorry. Did off. you guys do that privately mm-hmm. together on your streams, or did you do that with Steven? With Steven, I did hear that one. Okay, go ahead. Okay, okay. It, it started off with me, um, which she thought I was like farming. I was fishing for new mm-hmm. views, 
Well, and isn't that I think what Lav's doing too by collabing and building her brand? I'm confused. Well, again, why are we denying that we are all why literally we shaming, yeah, the shaming creators? you making money, shaming you trying to be successful? It's so it's, funny. We all do that. Um, <laughs> but since your conversation with her, I did like write her a really long, um, long message. I asked for permission to send it to her. Great. Um, but I wrote a really long message because I'm I'm just so sick of being misrepresented and misunderstood. Um, and it's gotten to the point where it feels like it's intentional. Mm. And uh, so I feel I, I did my best to clarify to her. So just to be clear, I'm on here. I'm talking about these things. Yes. But I have articulated them to her. Okay, great. Um, privately. So what she viewed as me, like, farming for, for extra views um, was not what I was doing. I have, like, a lot of concern about my lore streams and what they do to people. Hmm. And I'd already seen her, like, um, kind of losing her shit with me. Um, and she has, like, the tendency of having a problem and making it everyone else's issue instead of um, her own. And, like, there was a point where she... Uh, she... What was it? She said, like, um, she couldn't help but watch my content and that it was, like, self-harm. Oh, uh, yeah, knew, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I know this person has, like, a history. And... That's, I don't like other people's emotions on me. Yeah. Um, that was an easy block for Anna. <clears throat> and um, and for Lav, super easy block. But I didn't initially do it, it because I found out about this while I wasn't streaming. Oh. But the next day, the next day she shows up in my stream. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's when I hit her with the ban. Mm -hmm. And I linked her the suicide hotline mm -hmm. because... I am not about to be liable for shit. I'm covering my motherfucking ass. People can say it was a dig, that I'm just trying to clown on her. Um, honestly, I just don't want to be responsible. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm naturally, I just look rude. I look rude when I talk, when I'm being assertive. I, I sound rude. Um, you have a... I rub people the wrong way. You have a very interesting energy. It's kind of like... um it's not like a mean girl energy. It's like um, a goth who sits in corner, does not want to talk to anyone, but everyone feels like, oh, she just needs a friend. And she's like, no, I literally don't. I just, <clears throat> it feels like when I get to the point where I am assertive for myself, I'm I'm usually doing it because I'm fucking confident in that mm. moment. And then when I'm confident, I, I, I don't know. I'm just more bold. Yeah. Um, and also, I, so I think I did that. there's, like, a lot of mm -hmm. mean girl energy happening right now. And Lav is, like, I call her my, my mentally ill little sister. <laughs> like, I was just, like, I get it. You're, like, in the throes of, like, your stuff. And I get it. I Because I, mm -hmm. I now have the comparison in my own life to say, like, there was a difference between when Brittany was in therapy and, like, really getting better. And then when she exited therapy and gave herself a few years, I'm, like, even more Di like I'm so different. And that takes time. So I'm I'm patient. I can't wait yeah. for Lav to find that 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 way of being but the dilemma is that I don't it doesn't I'm not investing my life into Lav so I don't have to take any of it personal if watching my content was giving herself harm I probably wouldn't even have banned her or done anything because I feel like you're adult you know maybe you want to self-harm today like maybe you do like oh. I you know what I'm saying but I understand your desire mm -hmm. it seems like you and Steven are very good at blocking people I have I get I feel icky around it so even on my discord everyone knows I'm very like three strikes like I have to have a really good reason to block you and usually it can be like hey you're a really nice person you're a good person but you're fucking up the vibe so I need you to leave my Discord because you're making everyone feel uncomfortable. And I know that I can get along with you, but I need you to know it's exhausting. And you're like, you know, you're yeah. rubbing people the wrong way. So Lab does this. She rubs people the wrong way. And because of who she is, like Matt, Steven can be charitable to Mr. Girl. I can be charitable to Lav. But that's because Lav, like literally she can't hurt me. So I feel safe being vo like being able to be around her. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So do you feel unsafe with Lav or do you feel annoyed by her enough to block her? Like, what is the feeling? Do you know what I mean? Like, how much is she in control or impacting your existence? Um, I, it, it just feels like, it feels like my space isn't my space. Fair. Um, when I'm, I'm just doing my thing and I want to do my thing. Yeah. And I feel like you are using, um, really like loaded language and maybe like loaded implications to pressure me in a certain way. Yeah. So I it's like I don't have a problem with what I'm doing, but I don't want to deal with like the noise that's coming from you. Yes. So mm -hmm. 
my mm -hmm. reaction to it, which is, this is like the second time, maybe even there's been more times, but two come to my mind of something that she says as a joke mm -hmm. that I'm not, I'm uncomfortable by, that she turns around and then becomes aff offended by my discomfort. Mm. And it's just like, you can't reverse Uno on a fucking joke. Because if it was a joke, why would you take the suicide hotline seriously? Mm. And then in, and then if that was fine, why did you turn around and link me the suicide hotline the second you saw that I fucked up? Mm -hmm. Do you think um, it's a low trust issue? Like everyone has such low trust on the internet that we're just assuming like, is this a jab? For me. Is this a jab? For me, I definitely, I'm definitely low trust. I, I know I am. You know, I, I will say I've only become high trust because I put the boundaries on myself. So I have high trust now because I don't let anyone, I give everyone very strict boundaries with me again, because I've got everything already solidified in my life. It's easier for me to be willing to also lose friendships or relationships because I know everyone's on their yeah. own journey. I had, a, I've had friends I've known for years just ghost me. And I'm like, wow, okay, they must have been really going through something. Like, that sucks that you thought this was the best, best method to end the friendship. But people be going through shit. And I always assume it's their issue, which is a little bit like it could be me, but I'm doing, I have a value sheet that I check. So if, as long as I'm within my values, I'm just like, well, then I, what, I can't do anything else. So it allows me to be very like good with everything, but I don't like the fear I have every time I think one of their viewers are going to stalk me or go for my Patreon or knock me off OnlyFans or call me a Nazi cult leader. And then all of a sudden regular like businesses that don't know me might be like, oh, she's a Nazi. I can't trust her. And it's like, bro, like, that's not cool. So I understand all of this and I understand that fear. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So what do you um, – go ahead, go ahead. Wait, what was the question? Well, I'm trying – not so much a question, but I'm just trying to figure out like if this is the reality of this reality, like this is what's happening, like this is our sphere, then why do we – why do you think the most introspective quote-unquote people are the dumbest fucking people? I'm going to just say it. Like we're – sometimes like we come with the – to the dumbest conclusions. Is it just our bubbles? Is it just our biases? Like, what is it? Um, I, so I don't even know if I'm the most introspective. Mm. Um, I think, I, I don't know. I, I, I like to think that I'm, I, I am introspective, but it's, uh, I get told I'm mature in coming to, to my conclusions, but I, I fucked up like so many times. So, uh, whatever I am, I'm, I'm still struggling. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but so you're not trying to be like a thought leader you know how max is trying to like change people's minds and destiny's trying to like challenge people and what they believe you're just trying to observe humans and enjoy that process of observation yeah that's kind of what i do okay uh, i there like are that opinions that i have yes like, there are strong opinions that i have um mostly around like race and stuff like that um colorism within the black community yeah just biracial being something that's more um respected and acknowledged uh appropriation uh kind of not so much highlighted and like allowing people to appreciate other other races and their cultures um before we allow people to just up and fucking transition their race mm -hmm. because that's um mm -hmm. that doesn't make sense mm -hmm. uh yeah i have like opinions around there and opinions about um the internet technology um platforming moderation so you obviously like have that. your niche like you know i do what you're but doing when it here. comes to when it comes to the interesting stuff that's on the internet it's all fucking drama it's all interpersonal and i live in that fucking bag i like it i watched reality tv um mm -hmm. i i have a brain that's wired for chaos but mm -hmm. it's wired to like watch people's chaos i kind of flail when i'm in the chaos um it's not that it I flail, but I get better, mm -hmm. and I often would rather, I would rather try again and have my voice in there than to sometimes hear the people that are, that are the ones that um, I'm watching. Yeah. So, I don't ever, I don't, like, look at myself as, like, a finished piece. I kind of, um, I'm, I'm still seeing if I can mold myself or curb myself to fit into doing more conversations or debates okay or if I kind of have to be in a, a hidden corner I don't know 
I'm curious about your uh, personal self, like yourself off the internet. Do you feel like you're in your final form of like your personality or do you think that you'll severely change? Like as an example, I always tell people in my 20s, I was really open to like body modifications. And now that I'm here, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm basically going to be this person for a really long time, just wiser as I age. But I'm probably not going to turn around and just get like tatted from like forehead to toe. Oh no, I'm, I'm not getting, um, I'm not getting tatted. I've flirted with the idea of a tattoo, um, but it's not something I ever, uh, will jump the gun for. Yeah. So like, is Um, this like your final, like, is this who you are? Like, you know how you meet people and you're like, yeah, that's just like who they are. But some yeah, people change dramatically. Kind of yeah. So do you think that you'll probably just like age in wisdom as you move through life? Or do you think you'll severely change as a person? I'm hoping I age in wisdom and like tolerance of mm. what's different than me. And probably yeah. um, be able to hold more friendships. Yeah. I am the type of person who I will I will cut off. When things get like a little bit difficult, um, I will just abandon ship. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty good at that too. (laughs) That's the thing. Okay. So that's the thing. It's like, it's a kind of borderline superpower sometimes where I'm just like, Oh, bye-bye. Chink. Oh, bye-bye. Like, see how I did that? Like protection mode. It is. It is. And so I think that's why I had to formulate, like I personally had to say like, okay, who's in my inner circle, outer circle, and then everyone I know. So like I've been preaching this video years ago and people were calling cap on it, but I think it's totally relatable where they said they're not friends. Like they don't necessarily hang out outside of work. Right. Oh. And I think that's really prevalent amongst YouTubers that I know. So many YouTubers I know run amazing collab channels together, but they don't actually like invite each other to each other's weddings. Even comedians do this. We're like, you'll see the drama with Bobby Lee and Kalila and everybody. And Bobby Lee's like, why doesn't anyone oh, yeah. invite me to 4th of July parties? It's because like no one's your actual friend, Bobby. They're all just like <laughs> friends via comedy. But no one's actually that close yeah. to you. Because like, look, if there's 100 comedians, you think everyone's going to be besties? Like, I don't get why everyone thinks that. Like, I don't understand mm-hmm. why on YouTube we're not, like, did we all grow up in the same kindergarten class where we were told we were all friends? Because that was just for kindergarten. Now we're adults, so we can't be friends with everyone, but we can be friendly with everyone if you want to be. I'm friendly with most people to the point where, yes, people think that we're probably closer than we are. But that's, I don't want to stop being myself because people misunderstand. I just want to clarify, move on, clarify, move on, or block, clarify, move on, block. But that's more effort on my part that I'm willing to do because I think there could be some amazing people that I might be missing if I wall myself off. And I don't want to lose yeah. that chance, you know? But I also don't want to get hurt and I don't want to get betrayed and that. I don't want to have a stalker again and I don't want to do any of those crazy things. So I don't tell people where I live. I'm very private. I don't give up my phone number unless I feel very comfortable with someone, you know? And that's like the method mm-hmm. I take. But that's because I know what I'm also – what I want to do with this job and where I want to take it is like I th- I've always wanted to be a talk radio host. I think there's something missing from the internet and I think this is the beginning of it. Why are we fighting? Why aren't we having good conversations? Why are we drama farming? Or why are we saying people's personal information on the internet? Like, why are we doing this? It's something deeper and much more interesting than drama farming. Like, why Mm -hmm. is Lav doing this? Why is Mr. Girl doing this? Why is even Steven entertaining it? Why does Steven let people come on his show and yell at people and demean people? Why does he call people crazy bitch? Which I love. Don't get me wrong. You don't have to change it. But the question is, why? Oh, to be fair, he called her a dumb bitch. Oh, a dumb. I'm sorry. A dumb bitch. Which, yeah, like, and I don't mind the language. Like, again, in my own private home, I'm, we don't censor language here. Like, talk how you talk. But on the internet is our goal as a collective to have these panels so we can make actual dialogue. Like, why on my channel can we have calm conversations? But the moment it gets to Destiny's panels, everyone's fucking yelling. I think, um, I mean, part of it's also me. Uh, mm. Being able to, so, so that's what I was going to say. Um, fuck, I was on, on the process of that. Uh, the way that that conversation happened with Lav, uh, she thought that I was drama farming Mm. because I had like questions about my lore and I go to Destiny because I feel like if someone's going to be like blunt with me, um, it's probably going to be him and it's probably a good idea to make it very clear that I am insecure with how like my lore streams are going, Mm -hmm. um, or with like what I'm doing. Because usually when I go on his stream and I say this shit, I get like, I get DMs, people interested to, to talk about it that aren't just my community that like likes what I'm doing or that maybe is really enjoying the the drama of it all. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so she reacted to that um, really poorly, and that's when she just started saying like, "Oh, Cherry is just like 
I think she's jealous. Hmm. Um, she just has it out for me. She's like nasty. Uh, she was farming me, and um, <clears throat> I got I got messages that day to uh, offers to hop into Discord and to talk it out, hash it out. Which for me, like I articulated, I don't want to hash it out until I watch enough of your content. I feel like you are just going to lie to me, and that's going to trigger the fuck out of me. Um, but then I get these messages, and I did go on the stream for advice, which ended up um, mentioning, like, the lab situation. So I d also don't want to be a bitch, because I'm not, I'm not a yeah. pussy. I will hop on if now it, it feels like a, a call-out fucking thing. Yeah. Um, and even in hopping on, I tell Steven, like, bruh, I'm, I'm anxious. I feel like, how do you talk to somebody who you think is just going to fucking lie to you, mm -hmm. who's going to gaslight you, and just, like, intentional or not, like, that shit will trigger me. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, the conversation starts, and I'm already triggered. I'm not even, like, I have so many points that I can give, and it's almost like my brain is is blank. Yeah. And I'm like, and and she's just like, oh, come on, Cherry, you have pages. You took notes. Cherry, you've been doing my stream lore for really, and just, like, egging, egging, egging. I'm just like, Lava and would I'm be just great getting more fight. angry. Lava would be great in a street fight. She, like, pulls hair without even thinking. She just goes for it, which is part of the problem. She yeah. has that young person energy where she just wants to be like, fight me, fight me, fight me, which is, for me, I'm like, okay, that's, like, very adorable. I love that for you. But, like, that's mm -hmm. the thing. She's impacting people's lives, and it's hard. But it's also hard that she wants to be taken, um, I think, like, seriously, because, again, what does that mean? Or she doesn't want to be taken yeah. seriously now, which I'm not and sure And then all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden, it's like, like, because I look like a child in that mm. um, debate. I, I'm like, I'm, I'm flailing in the beginning, um, but it, but it's like people can see that she's changing her mind, flip-flopping, and eventually um, I just start resorting to making fun of her. And, and people enjoy that more anyway out of me. But it's like, I'm not, I love throwing shit and throwing shade. Yeah. But I like it after I, I do a good job. Mm. So it's, I'm not even enjoying where this is going. I'm not enjoying the upload that happened afterwards. I don't feel good about this. Um, I would like to be much more serious. Uh, like my my debate with Max, even though it ended the way that it did um, after like my review of it, the actual debate, like that's what I'm supposed to look like when I'm mm. prepared and when I know what I'm getting into. I'm, I'm really proud of that debate. Um, even though he gaslit the fuck out of me in the end, mm -hmm. uh, but I I was prepared and I I was I was following through. That's what I I needed to be prepared to yeah. talk to a lav, and if I'm not, I get triggered. And so I think it's good to know that about yourself, though. I think like you willing to know that is a you putting your boundaries on yourself to say like, hey, like I'm not gonna like this is gonna be my best. And I think that's yeah, really I, that's so important. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So you you asked like what the what the goal is? Um, yeah. I I don't know. I'm I'm hoping that I I get better. I don't I don't know if I if I can though. We'll see. I think it's um I know for me again I don't go on panels because I I feel like unless. No, if, again, if we're having discussions about ideas, that's different. But if we all think we're yeah. like, if you're not in the political sphere, if you're not out there like gathering phone numbers and doing things, I don't give a fuck about what you think, like generally speaking. Mm -hmm. But that's because, I, again, I I think how intimate you are with a movement tells me like how invested you can be. And some people just vote and they call it a day. Some people are involved. Some people aren't. Some people just get on YouTube and talk shit and like they just that's their thing. I think if I, as a Britney at least, I just want to have ideas about or discussions about ideas. I always joke that I want to make it so you have a better time at Easter with your mom or like Christmas or Thanksgiving or, you know, because I know families are struggling and I think a lot of this comes from like where we come from, right? So much of Lav's issues are her mother or her parents. So much of Max's issues are allegedly his parents. By the way, we've never talked to anyone in Max's real life. So frankly, I don't know if any of that's true. And so like that's the problem, right? Is that we are just assuming these content creators are also telling their stories accurately, which could not be true maybe. I bring on my siblings yeah. on purpose so people can hear from them so they know that I'm not just like, talking shit like I bring on my conservative like religious siblings so they can be like oh yeah Brittany like she did this and we did this as kid and this happened because I don't know that anything that anyone is saying is ever true so I have to also take all of that with a grain of salt I've never talked to the, like their parents I don't know that that's is true 
You know what I mean? So I think that people mm-hmm. have to understand. I don't know if they actually know that though. Does you think? Do you think Lav and Max have actually processed that? I don't actually know if any of their stories are true. So I'm just kind of. Ge- I don't think. I don't think Max has. Um, yeah, I, I have no idea with Lav, but like the way that Max reacted to Flacco, Flacco, yeah, um, when he was trying to explain, because because Max acted like it was a gotcha. Yeah. Like, oh, you're just virtue signaling about rape because if you're not going to call the police and report me, you clearly don't feel that way. Right. And Flacco's like, well, hold on. Because now, like, the way you called it rape, so that's why I'm saying it's rape. Um, But am I going to go out of my way to find out if you're telling the truth? Like, that's a lot of... You're, exactly. You're 100%. You're putting a lot of, like, shit on me. And, and, like, Max just... I don't know how he acted that way. And uh, honestly, I'm like... I'm embarrassed to be some of the people who came on board um, reacting to it were like, ha, Max got him. Like, that is not a gotcha. What the fuck are you gotcha. talking about? F- okay, that, I, that's. I don't understand why everyone thought Flacco was being unreasonable. And I'm like, this is a normie take. You're saying the yeah. majority of Americans are being unreasonable, but this is a normie take. You can't say it's normie and then be like, he's being unreasonable. No, the unreasonableness would be the unreasonable take. So then we have to yeah. talk about what this means. Like, look, I'm not. I could see that Flacco was having a problem because the nuance of it is is hard. Like, I know people who've been in their 30s who have, like, f- like flirted or had sex or whatever with 17-year-olds. And I'm like, why are you doing this, you fucking weirdo? But then in their heads, they're like, I was really going through it, man. And then, the, oh, the girl lighter, better age. Or they could create these narratives that I'm like, great, let's talk about the nuance of narrative. Let's talk about the nuance of lying about age. Let's mm-hmm. talk about – but Max isn't even doing that. But And it's not even just that. He's on someone else's show telling them, hey – to prove that you aren't a fucking virtue signaler, you were supposed to come in and start your interview show that is, like, hours long right off the bat this way. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. Like, you you understand that they're supposed to warm up, get to know you, get, like, lead up to a conversation. Yeah. Most people, like, what he's asking that that he should have done, no one would have taken that well. Everyone would have looked at that like an ambush. No one would have liked their uh, podcast moving forward. So I'm professional. What the fuck? Did you just set this guy up? Um, you're, you're not asking questions. You're just making implications of him. Like Max somehow is like the most unreasonable person in this situation mm-hmm. with the utmost confidence. And I can't believe that I'm with like other orbiters who just completely signed on board to it. Like, mm. oh yeah, Max got them. This Flacco guy, he's he's fucking off. He's getting owned. Well, that's why like, Max feels so confident because all those comments on yeah. the podcast are like, Max totally, Flacco was like, what, what a way. Even Adam was kind of anti-Flacco and I'm like, oh my God, what is going on? Mm. Max is being I don't so- even hold. I don't even hold Adam Adam responsible for that because I feel like that's what you're supposed to do mm, when one like person. Good counter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're not, so, like, you look bad if you're going to do a gang up two on one. Totally. Like totally, he's totally. supposed to try his hardest to keep it even ground. Yeah. And I felt like I thought it was really good the way that he could like tell Flacco, like, I, what, did you think you were going to like get this guy from the jump? Like Flacco, you're being unreasonable. Mm. And then Flacco doesn't like turn to Adam and starts like yelling at him. Right. That, that was able to exist between the two of them. Flacco I thought was that they super did amazing. Re- I, he did not freak out at all. He just took it. He went yeah. going. He kept going with it. And that's the thing is like I sit here. I'm like we're all grown adults, aren't we? I'm so confused. Why is the, yeah. why are all the conversations going this way? Like why are and they all turning have, into this? And to have your own <laughs> content be questioned, mm. which is supposed to be like a content creator's dream. Wet dream, right? Yeah. Um, which I... Uh, doing my lore, I realize it's not fucking really. It's not really their fucking dream, especially if it, if someone's going to be critical over it. Mm. Um, we pretend like we want our content viewed and analyzed, but not so much if it's in a negative light. Mm-hmm. But I expect Max to be at that point by now because he's gotten right. so much criticism. Right. Uh, so for for his content to be brought up, looked at, questioned, and he responds so negatively... And it's being pointed out to him. And then he just continues ridiculing that guy. There's just, like, like, where, where is your empathy at, like, actually? Well, yeah, that's – I don't – okay, I don't believe that word anymore when people say it at all. But that's the thing is that Max can't yeah. – and I understand it. Look, I can't see Max clearly. Like, I genuinely cannot understand 
his perspective in a logical sense because I don't think it's consistent enough logically. And then from a belief system, I can just say, yeah, that's Max. Like that's his belief system. That's what he thinks. And that Max is going to virtue signal in his own way. Like I thought it was virtue signaling when and, and double downing when he said Marshall Linehan shouldn't work with clients. Because again, I am borderline. And Marshall Linehan, I attribute her work to saving my life. So it's hard for me to see this man who does not have borderline, who has not lived with it like I have for my whole fucking life and struggled with it and like dealt with suicide and all these awful things. And for him to sit here and be like this therapist who like challenged the medical community, who went against the grain, who was a rebel, who's everything he says he tries to be, he's upset that she managed to succeed where he failed. And I think that's what it is, is that he, when he, even when he was in college and he tried to be like edgy with the shooting stuff and he got suspended, he's doing it again. And he's like, why doesn't this keep working? And I'm like, maybe because it's not reasonable. Like maybe you're not, same with Sneeko, who I love. Sneeko's not being reasonable with how the world works. But the thing is, he, um, he's existing in this er this area Mm -hmm. where he knows it's not reasonable Mm -hmm. and he's telling other people like they have to understand why he's not being reasonable mm-hmm. because why else would somebody watch his content and it's just like what what <laughs> no you it should be very reasonable to you, you should be, be able to explain it. Mm-hmm. it it shouldn't just be oh this is just i'm just making it provocative right for, right for views like you can't have a big purpose behind what you're pushing and then also say i'm just trying to be provocative it's understandable if you're being provocative for the purpose and then you wouldn't mind elaborating right you would be so used to it by now you would have the patience to go through it right there's this streamer i don't know if you've heard of him all relevant uh yeah i know the name yeah yeah, yeah. i think he's okay. talked to steven right yeah yeah um he's probably one of the earlier debaters that i wait well i tried to emulate is he black no <laughs> yeah, yeah wait he's black. was he the one i was on a stream with, with Lawrence southern or is that somebody else Oh no, I don't know. No, that's that's um that's a different person. That's a different person. Okay, I can't keep yeah. up with these orbiters. Okay, go ahead, keep going. Um, he he was actually on the, the one with um, me and Max, the the recent one from oh, last week. Okay, okay. Yeah. So there was um Abba was there, and then there was another black guy who was on camera. Oh, that's okay. Cool, 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 cool. Okay. Um. All relevant somebody who I've watched him have debates where the other person is like the person I don't want to talk to because it seems mm. like they are so resistant. But he is so patient because it's like he understands where their argument is. He understands where the end of their argument is. And he's got all the patience in the world because it's like, okay, you want to pivot to here? All right. I know how to talk you from here to go back to there. Mm-hmm. And like he's just he's he's just exploring them or yeah. um or he's yeah. like already understood both sides of the argument that he can have the patience for it i think it's something that steven does really well too um i think for most people who have a great understanding of a topic and of other people are capable of doing that but it's like something that i don't ever see max really doing i feel like he resists the other person Anytime they try to um, explore down an avenue that he's not interested in. Yeah. <laughs> which is kind of a little bit like, I'm bored. I don't want to talk about it. Let's talk about something else, which is fine. Mm-hmm. Like, I wonder, like, when the humbling is supposed to start, right? Like, when people start having a pattern in their own life. Like, if I started to notice that, like, women were banning and wouldn't talk to me, I'd start to feel like, wait, what, am I doing something weird? And then I tried to make a decision within my values if I was or if I was just being rejected. And I guess I'm surprised that Max hasn't done like a self-reflection moment where he's like, maybe it's me. And it's funny because like I don't – he doesn't need to though. He's not obligated to. I don't think anyone is obligated to be self-aware. It's just wanting to make sense of like what he's doing and why – Yeah. And a lot of times just like why. The why. Everything. Even the fact that Steven is his friend and he can't seem to have discourse with him is so interesting or like have a conversation about – I don't know. I think there's a little bit too much um, like uh, dependency happening maybe. I'm just trying to relate it to like what is happening in real life, like off the internet. And the internet's real life. I get it. But it, I don't know. It's hard for me because I don't know about you, but once the camera is off, like I'm in a totally different bubble. So okay, it's, so I know. am – I'm an introvert, so I'm kind of – I'm actually terminally online. Um, it's like a frustration that I have sometimes. Mm. Um. I'm not complaining about pretty privilege, but mm-hmm. I do feel like um, I don't have the the cred of looking like the the terminally online like video game 
addicted person that I I tend to be. Mm -hmm. So you're having like this experience where like I think I don't know if other people would relate to that too because I know Max has like clients and stuff like that. He does like working out stuff. But for what is your like your husband? Is he your real life? Like when you turn off the camera, like isn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So he's real life, but he's also. He's also like uh he plays video games all the time. Oh, okay. Um, we mesh really well, and we don't have like um a super dependency on like oh we have to go out on a date every Saturday okay. or some shit yeah. like that. Yeah. I would lose my fucking mind. I can't be held to like a schedule or a, a routine like that. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Interesting. <laughs> so maybe that's it. Maybe I'm I forget. Also, my friends like to point this out because I have like a. I'm, like, obsessed with my family. I'm, like, very interdependent on my inner circle. Like, I'd rather spend all my time with them, period, over anyone else ever. So Mm -hmm. even with money, like, I'll lose out on calls because I'm like, ah, I could do a call right now or I could go watch anime with my brother. And I will choose to watch anime with my brother, which is, like, the big joke. That's why I think it's even funnier that Max is, like, accusing me of being a cult leader. I don't spend enough time online to be a cult leader. Like, I just don't spend enough time. (laughs) Like, I love my Discord. I think it's the the most amazing community I've Uh ever facilitated in my whole life, even more than my YouTube community, which is amazing. My Discord group is, like, I want to spend more, like, if I spend any extra time with them or with the people, it's going to be them, and then it's going to be YouTube. That's why I only stream once a week because I love YouTube. It's so great, but it's not the same as hearing people's voices. Hmm. I was surprised you only stream once a week. Yeah, I I did two a week during um, my, I recently got diagnosed with, like, an autoimmune (laughs) disorder, and so I was, like, busy dying. But I'm back on it. So I do my podcast and I do my stream. And I'm not a streamer like that. I, I just like talking to people. But my calls are my favorite. But my life is the most important thing. So like this is my job and I love it. It's such an honor. But I really know that I'm going to die. My family's going to die. And if I don't spend time with them, like I'm going to regret oh, it. Okay. You know, we're all like, we're all, gotcha, we're all gotcha. like, we all like, yeah, like I, you know, not literally like die in 10 years, but I mean, it could girl, I could, my uncle just like people be dying all around me, like young people be dying. And so I'm like, okay, if everyone, like I need to really value the time I have with my, my people. So I, I want to do that. But that means that I have to choose, like um, my partner and I were discussing this. Um, I told him, I was like, I want to be with you, but I need you to know that I'm never going to be like a um, millionaire CEO because I'd rather spend time with my family. And he's like, that's cool. And I was like, no, no, literally though. Like, I will make money. I'm, like, a workaholic. But I also, I I don't know that that will mean millions of dollars, right? Because I know what it takes. It means spending less time with your family. Men in America spend less time with their kids when they're the breadwinners because they're working. And it sucks because that changes the relationship they have with their fathers. So I think people forget that if you're going to choose work over your real life, you're going to lose time with the people you love the most, which is fine. But even work to most Americans, like, most men – They say, I don't know if this is actually true, but like they say a lot of men just have jobs to make money, but they're there. So that like, like work life balance, like figuring out what you want out of life, that's up to every individual. And so I think for me, it's easier for me to disconnect from all of this stuff because I'm like, yeah, but like at the end of the day, and even my family knows, my family's been trying to get me off the internet forever. Even now they're like, get off the internet. I was like, I can't, I'm addicted. I love people. I love talking. But they just they, – yeah. they see how much it impacts, like, the scariness of everything after going to court for my stalker and everything. Like, that was hard on my family. That was really difficult for them to process why I kept doing this. So, again, I'm just – I'm trying to make people understand, like, we're, you, you, ever, does everyone know they're doing it to themselves, though, by not – like, does Max know? Does Lab know? Detaching. Like, yeah, they're not they're – Yes, not, they are in – they're in a bad habit and they're refusing to change their behavior – Um, and wanting other people to satisfy the bad side effects of their bad habits. Um, um, yes. Yeah. Even Steven, like, I wonder if he knows, like, he spends all that time on the internet, so doesn't he know that's less time with, like, the people he loves? Is that okay? Does everyone know they're doing that? Like, does everyone know we are deliberately spending less time with the people we love? I feel like... Which is fine, maybe? I feel like we figured that out when, um... The people we're with, they ask for time. That's true. Uh, yeah. I think it just, it sucks. I think especially being content creator, especially for politics, especially when you cover drama. Yeah. That there are times that you just, you need a partner that understands, like, hey, I need to, like, live at this computer for, like, two weeks. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. I will go, like, we hug and kiss. Fuck sometimes. Yeah. Please be busy. 
Yeah. That kind of thing. Interesting. I wonder if it's a type – that's actually why I think I'm um, maybe not as like a – I am i couldn't be a streamer for real, real because I just – I don't have the spoons, I think, to be with other people when I could be mm-hmm. with my people. But – I think that that's the point is I'm so needy as a human. Like I need to be like if my person lived with me, he would literally I'd be attached to his hip. But that except when I'm working because I just love being with my people. So that's it too. It's a personality difference, huh? It's like certain people are made to be certain kinds of streamers. So I think that's beautiful. Like you said with your husband, you guys both play games and you're good not being Uh, like with him all the time, right? Yeah. That's great. We both play video games. He's very motivated at his job. He's um, he's a software engineer. Love that. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah. So – so you're probably yeah. made to be a streamer more than even I am because you're a, you're like you're good with focusing. being terminally online. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, the, okay, the only part that I'm not good at. The only part that I'm not good at is um, the other people. part. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> Which, you know what? Becoming a good streamer requires networking. So, yes, that, it does. We'll see. We'll see. I feel like I'm built for it. But like the networking part, I don't know. Okay, so here's the last couple of questions, and then we can check in on our spoons and everything. I'm curious about, okay. now that you said that, you're networking, you're doing these things, do you ever feel afraid that, like, you could lose networking possibilities because you flirted too hard or had sex with somebody or did anything like that? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. I'm kind of a, an amazing uh, sex partner. Great. Okay. <laughs> so you feel like it's not going to make fallout. Uh, so wait – why did Lav say now I'm confused again. Why did Lav say Steven was ignoring you? Uh cuz he was. Okay, and then that you were like yeah. fine with that or did you think that like happened? Like he was Mhm. So he was going through his shit. Yeah. I was going through my shit and then it just it became something where I needed to be um on the back burner. Yeah. And I'm just like like demanding um and it just hurts my feelings. Sure. And and then I, I vent and deal with it in my way. So yeah. but we just handle things differently. And so while it's happening, bumping heads completely. But then afterwards, it's like you can understand and hopefully don't fucking do it again. Yeah. OK. You know? That makes sense. I'm so BDSM that my brain is like, have we all negotiated boundaries and friendships? Like, do we actually know what the expectation nope. is? Because like <laughs> most people don't, right? We just start dating. We start falling in love. We start They're making not. friends. And then we wake up one day and go... And- you know the impulsivity is is high with me <laughs> fair yeah fair i think that's also pretty common with like it's not good yeah <laughs> it's not good to yeah. live there i work on it <laughs> i love that about you okay so i feel like lab does this too though where she feels like she's really working on it and i feel like she's self-aware enough to repeat it to me so i'm like okay so if you can say it to me out loud now you just have to put it together so i deal with people mm-hmm. like this who are like hey i do this with my nutritionist where i'm like hey you remember how you said not to eat this thing she goes yeah I was like well i ate it and she was like, Brittany. And I was like, I'm sorry. Like, I had to. I was like, I, I just, I cannot switch from fucking overnight to eating anything I want to not eating anything I want. Like, I can't do it. So I think that I'm mm-hmm. trying to figure out is if we're going to give people time to change and what we need to do in that time. Like, un- Steven said something really funny the other day. He goes, uh, I'll check on Nick Fuentes in like a year. And I was like, ah, oh, that's my vibe right there. Like, I will ignore someone and be like, hey, you're really going through it. Call me in six months when you're mm-hmm. over it. Because I can't, your shit can't become my shit. I'm already dealing with too many people. So do you think, like, that's uh-huh. what needs to change in this space is we need to give people time to change and then give people space through that? Oof. Uh, maybe. I'm I'm kind of the person who I blow shit up and then I take my own time. Oh, okay. But my my own reset, like, it's it's pretty quick. <laughs> okay. Um, so you're not too worried about them. But I know, yeah, I like, I, I give myself those resets. I give myself those breaks. Um, mm-hmm. I have realistic expectations of, uh, the harm that I'm bringing to situations, um, or the fault that I'm bringing to situations. I don't have that expectation of other people though. And I don't have any idea how to put that on them. Cause I feel like it took me a really long time to even understand how to reset mm-hmm. while I am like internalizing and really like digesting what the fuck happened and what the new game plan is. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes mm-hmm. people, they take a break, um, but they fixate. Yes. They fixate oh. and they ruminate and they're not actually doing the thing that they're supposed to do, which is reflect on it and take the break. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. 
Maybe I think and then, they must feel yeah. very scared to take a break too. It's very scary to think that I, I disappeared yes. from YouTube for six months during my stalker ordeal because I just didn't know what was going on with my own like like brain and my borderline was the worst at that time. Just like active every day, just constant looping and cycles. And my family, like I would cry like in my parents' arms like all the time and they would be holding me in my 30s. Like I'm sitting here crying in my mom's arms. And I was like, what's going on? Like, I don't know what to do. Like, all my feminist friends are ditching me. They're calling me, like, a sex trafficker. And I'm so, like, confused. They hang out with me all the time. They know I'm not sex trafficking bitches. Like, why are they believing my stalker? And it was because everyone at the time was feeling pressure to just believe. So I know why Max and Lav, especially Max, wants a space where he's not going to be completely just judged. But then he doesn't create a space in which it is easy to not judge. So I think we do that with, we all do that, right? I just think some of us are from further away from a reasonable take than we want to believe. And I think that I am going to make the statement that I am the most reasonable because I have radically accepted we are all different and living in our own realities. And that is the most reasonable take because it fixes every problem we have with one another, which is like we are not agreeing on if this is the color white. Like we can't even agree on the color of a dress. I think we also um, don't really agree on how to – how to cope with um, the stressful situations that we're in. Yeah, totally. Um, I am very much the reset with um, like digesting mm-hmm. while taking breaks. Mm-hmm. Whereas a lot of the solution is to keep going. After three streams, like people will forget. Um, I think these are two very conflicting situations. Totally. And I think one one leads to maybe a forget and move on while the other um leads to maybe more substantial change mm-hmm, mm-hmm. at least or in the at person least, observing at least in the person meditating or, on it yeah or at least um longer formed um positive habits because yes. we can always fall back onto bad tendencies uh that's like a big problem that i have i digest a change but when i get triggered it's really easy for me to like fuck up and become like impulsive or just uh my shit yeah um so yeah i don't know yeah i I think our our solutions are different so what works for us we tend to tell to other people and that might not be what's going to work for them which is again back to the bubbles but yes it's not going to work right right. (laughs) like what's right what's good what's this what's anything it's like this is the problem we're all having so i'm sitting here like if we all know that if we can say it out loud we just said it to each other right now there it's in the it's in Mm -hmm. the the world then why don't we move off of everything else with that knowledge? And it's like we can't because we hold trauma and biases and distrust and lo- like for people. And so it's just going to keep going. And I think the world is cycles. And this is why I think the levels make sense to me because I'm like, okay, so everyone has a different version of a relationship with introspection and extrospection. Everyone has a different relationship with themselves in reality. We're all trying our best. But like even the families we're raised in – don't agree on what we're doing on the planet, what we should be doing in the future, who we should be, you know, regulating, who we should, who should be doing what. So doesn't it make us all wonder, like, are we doing the same thing to everyone else? And should we then say, that's why my calls, I think, are success, so successful. Because my job isn't to push you in a direction of Brittany. It's to push you in the direction of your joy. So if somebody says to me, like, hey, I'm really, like, Muslim. I don't eat pork. I really practice, like, no alcohol. Um, how would I have a good marriage? It's like, oh, okay, so let's talk about within the rules and bubble of Islam, how do I give you advice, right? That's my job. My job is not to say don't be Muslim because I'm an atheist. That makes no sense. But that's what everyone, I think, default does because someone said, my little brother said this the other day. He said, um, if you don't want to convince people to believe like you do, then you don't have the right answer. And I said, no, 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 no. That's the trap of religion. The trap of religion is that we have the right answer, so everyone must be like us. And so I'm saying that's the trap Max is falling into. That's the trap Laugh falls into. It's a trap that a lot of people fall into, and they think they're against the grain. Max thinks he's a rebel, but he's a rebel who wants to create his own rules, which is just a Kanye move. Do you hear Kanye wants to create a whole city of just his own city? And I'm like, go for it, boo-boo. It's so human to create, to say I'm anti the rules, so let me make my own. And so that's why I think I'm so able to like push myself away from these things and say like, I'm not in that bubble, bro. Like in my bubble, I can't even fuck with this energy. Like this energy is silly. Like the idea that sex workers can't be like a viable job. I can't even fuck with that energy. I get it though, (laughs) but it's so Mm. funny to me. Like it's just at this point kind of silly. Like why? They don't know why. They just say, I believe in a God. Well, that's great. 
but like I don't believe in that God. And right there, the reality mm. is shattered. So I think that's everyone. Anyways, that's my monologue. Do you have any last minute thoughts, words, anything else we should talk about? No, this was um, wonderfully pleasant. Good. Uh, I'm so glad. Same. Yeah. I think so too. This has Thank been nice. Thank you for having me on. Yes. And please reach out if you need anything. My DMs are open. And um, I think the audience liked it. I'll double check with the chat. But I'm I'm sure this was lovely. Honestly, it was – this is the kind of conversation I'd like to always have. Just nice and normal and, I don't know, natural. I'm glad. Yeah. Me too. All right, girly. Well, please reach out if you need anything. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Okay. Bye, Terry. Right, bye. Bye. How fun is she? Good talk, huh, guys? Okay. Let me check in with chat because I'm kind of, like, super behind. Actually, let me pee too. Let's go ahead and pee. Let's go ahead and do the thing in the bathroom. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Be right back. Be right back. I am muted. Hi, I'm back. <laughs> I wasn't saying anything interesting. I was literally just like talking about my ears. Sorry, boomer moments. This is why I can't be a full-time streamer. Okay, hi, I'm here. How are you? Okay, how did we feel about the conversation? Um, how did we feel about the vibe? I thought, um, I thought it was really nice. I like Cherry. I think she's a very sweet person. But I think as you've seen, I'm very, I, I think I just, <laughs> Maybe I just do better with women. Like, I think I might. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not muted now, right? Somebody tell me when I'm unmuted. Somebody tell me when I'm unmuted. Wait, someone tell, someone tell me when I'm unmuted. Oh, unmuted. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Ah. I feel pretty good. I don't know. I feel like I'm in a good space. I also, I also kind of, I'm not going to, can I tell you guys a secret? I just, um, I, I hope that I can become the person that people feel good talking to. Um, I, I really do hope, thank you for letting me know I'm unmuted. I really hope that people can feel comfortable reaching out to me and we can have these conversations um, because it's hard. I think this job is so stressful, but it's mostly emotionally stressful. We're dealing with a lot of like, don't dox anyone, don't hurt ourselves, don't, don't, you know, don't do anything that's going to completely just like ruin anything that we've 
we've created. And so I think that it can be very intimidating um, to be a streamer, whether you're small or big. You always just feel like you're never enough. You always feel like people don't understand you. And so it's very difficult. I understand what Max is feeling in that way. I don't understand what he feel feels in other ways. I understand that Cherry and Lav and everyone wants to feel represented and seen. But I also understand that as people, we misrepresent ourselves all the time. Myself included. Sometimes I get a, um, like a, the same thing Cherry gets where when people tell me um, who I am, I double down and I just become like, what you say? Like, you don't know me. Fuck you. Right? And I think that that is a defense mechanism that also feels like I can be petty and I'm allowed to be. I try really hard to be strategic with my petty. Because <sighs> I feel it all the time. Like, I definitely have petty thoughts where I'm like, ooh. But I try to be strategic. So I hope in the future that I can be a space where people can have more um, honest conversations or calmer conversations about these things. I don't like that Destiny streams turn into to drama fests. It, it gives me anxiety. But it also makes me want to double down. It makes me want to deny people my truth or my story because I feel like you don't even fucking deserve it. And at the same time, that's not how I feel internally. I want someone to understand me. I, I think my ideas are really fucking good. And I think I can do a lot of good for the world in, in certain bubbles. I don't think what I want to share with the world is universal. I think it's specific. But I think that that's what we should all bring to the table is specific ways of being. And I think that we should be open to everyone being a very specific way of being. Um, and again, I, I think like Cherry, I like to research and research and get to know somebody before I go at them or just say, I don't know much about you. Like with Cherry, I didn't do any research. I just went into it. I just knew her from the streams and stuff. And that felt really good. But you could see that I didn't know anything about her enough to like move the conversation in a particular direction or to ask her about herself. I had to like learn it all on the spot which has its own benefits, a little bit more organic of a conversation. Um, it just, it just, it just, it creates a new interaction and that's kind of cool in and of itself, right? So I like Cherry. I hope we can talk again. Um, you guys know I love Steven. I really like Lav. I, in a, in a, in a very like, I can see enough of her that I can humanize her enough. So I, I like that. Um, and I think we get along really well. I hope she continues to come on my streams. Um, I love Kyla and I hope Kyla and I get to talk for many, 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 many years. And I hope we get to be friends. But that's the thing is that our life will pull us in different directions. And I think we have to be open to how intimate a friendship can even, um, grow based off of those different directions, right? I was supposed to go to Miami this summer. I was supposed to visit everyone. I was supposed to go see everyone and I didn't. And you could say that in some ways I missed an opportunity to be closer to people. Or you could say that I chose the people I was already close to and I invested in the relationships that I already had. And so I think that people forget it's not always about finding the next relationship. Sometimes it's about cultivating and being good to the ones you already have. It's, it's so much of it is being grateful for what you already have. And I think that I'm really lucky that I've spent the last 33 years building those relationships while people are still doing it. Um, I think that's a big, big, big part of why I have an advantage of not being very personal about any of these conversations um, because it's not personal to me. It's very work-related. When it gets personal is when people don't allow a space um, to talk about ideas because they're personally invested in you not succeeding or not being able to really be honest about how you feel um I don't know if you guys follow the atheist community stuff but I used to be in the atheist bubble on YouTube and like Matt Delahunty was like a really really popular person in that bubble and like he recently left the organization he's worked for for so many years and everyone in that bubble was like whoa this is like the biggest news da, 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 da. I'm not in that bubble anymore but girl when I was yeah, that stuff was, I would have paid so much more attention. It's a really big deal. But now that I'm not in it, I'm like, I don't know the significance of this anymore. But I remember knowing, I know the feeling of when something should feel significant. But when you're not in the bubble, it's just not the same. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Raiders Cat, thank you for being here, says, if Destiny won't dye his hair, um, then the chatter should do it for him. Okay, I don't know what y'all are talking about, but if Destiny does not dye his hair blue, I'm going to go to his house and, I don't know, 
something something will happen but no I would love to see him with blue hair I think he'd look really good but that's the thing right um I think we're all just trying to do our best I I don't know I don't I don't know this is the moment where I can hear my discord saying stuff like what's your real Britney opinion and then what's the general opinion I think my instinct like my general my my internal Britney Britney opinion is that I think Max is an unsafe person to be around because he isn't consistent enough with his values that Lav is not someone I would trust um, more than I more than doing like this stuff because she feels very like she doesn't have a value system she relies on Kyla I have high trust with because she has an obvious form of value she sticks to like obviously like Kyla is very very clear about where her values come from it's so much easier to trust her because she's really consistent um Steven is very consistent but at the same time I think Steven has a little bit of a people pleaser tendency which makes me distrust him because or no let me rephrase distrust his judgment of people and also his like pick of women is obviously like as a cluster B myself I get it but I think there's something there as well I think Steven might also like cluster B women because they tend to be pretty interesting like I would say that Lav and I and Cherry are interesting whether or not that's in a good way or a bad way you know but I think that we are definitely not normie women that you would just meet and who are like, hi, Stephen, welcome to my blah, 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 blah. You know, that's not what he's going to get with us. So maybe he likes those because they're, um, they're like, yell, like they're like, we're aggressive. We're aggressive. And Stephen likes aggressive women. Um, so I don't know. There's something, but he's kind of a people pleaser. Like I will say, and if Stephen, you know, he wants to come at me for this, but like literally he is nicer to me. He is softer to, on me. I know that. I know what it's like to be treated softer. And he does. He does. Um, and that's fine. That's He can do that. Um, but I think he does it because he wants... Why does he do it? Um, is he being considerate of my feelings? Or is he not willing to engage with the levels as an example to such a degree enough to really treat me without the kid gloves I don't know I just know that he is when it comes to my work he, he's nicer to me um which is fine but in some ways doesn't make me feel seen which is why I don't think we'll probably be as like close as we could have been in another life but I really hope Steven stays my friend for a really long time but yeah I'm not everyone in my inner circle has torn apart my level system all my siblings my friends my partner like they take my level system and they tear it apart because they know that that's how you love Britney you love Britney by engaging with her and her ideas um ooh, Izzy says but you're soft with everyone wait am I soft with everyone but I think he's marrying your energy do you think Steven mirrors my energy to be fair uh to everyone else on Steven's stream is kind of insane maybe you probably haven't had a big enough of a disagreement. I mean, that's the thing. Is he not engaging with the levels because he's afraid he actually would have to admit they're pretty fucking true or they're pretty, like, a pretty good tool? Or if he thinks they're, like, if he wants me to disagree with me on something, I mean, disagree, like, if the level, you know what I'm saying? Like, he could use the levels as a way to create good, great content. He could tear me apart. I don't know. Destiny has been complimenting you a lot, Brittany. Well, obviously, I'm amazing. But, like... It's because he knows that I'm not, I'm really not judging anyone um, in a real way. I'm just, I think, enjoying the process. I think he respects you. I think he respects me too. I think it's a mutual respect for sure. Oh, maybe that's why he doesn't tear apart. I guess you wouldn't go to Verveki and tear apart his meaning crisis. But I guess you would too. I don't know. I don't know. And I'm not trying to be a, a philosophy teacher, obviously. Destiny isn't soft on you. You're just attacking him. Wait, what? Conrad, you had best say that again. Destiny isn't soft on you. You are just attacking him. What do you mean? If you went hard on Destiny, then he would go hard on back. Well, I'm not the, that's the thing is that I don't, so Destiny mirrors energy. Wait, I'm trying to think of, 
So you're saying he doesn't want to research. Wait, so he doesn't want to research. He doesn't. You're saying, oh, a typo. Oh, a typo. Okay, that was a typo. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Um. Hmm. Interesting. I guess I I I I don't want to dis I don't want to fight with Steven just to make fucking views. But I yeah. Hmm. I it's fair for him not to be interested in the levels. That's always fair. Um so I'm fine with that. Like I'm fine with him not needing to create that energy with me because we don't need to talk about my work. Um, and my work is only so serious, right? I just created a tool that I think is really efficient. Um, I would love to, I don't know, I'm working on this like series for the levels so I can like make it my meaning crisis, but it's like the series for the levels. And I think it'll be really good and helpful um, for people to understand why it's hard to take myself or the why I take my work sort of half seriously and why he's probably not going to come at me about it if he's not really disagreeing he isn't wait conrad says he isn't going to attack you because you aren't attacking him he is a constant defense mode oh yeah well i don't want to attack him i i just want to have a conversation which we do we do have good conversations it's just like if there isn't an argument does that mean steven can't engage in ideas he just engages in debates is that what we're saying about steven because that's kind of sad like i hope that's not the case um conrad says so he likes to spend his energy debunking lies all the time that i don't think he wants to spend a time attacking your levels oh that's fair yeah that's fair that's fair i guess izzy says how do two people who are open to a lot of possibilities argue about anything when anything can be possible so true yeah that is well I have to ask him about this because he said I misrepresented his idea about moving people towards more towards his views. He said that's not what he said. And I want a clarification on that, I guess. Andrew says most of his gloves off approach comes from people stake, uh, people staking a strong position with something that he feels like a real harm from what I've seen. His arguments with Lauren Southern, he often goes gloves off. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Obama. Um, don't worry, we will debunk your levels. Thank you guys, I appreciate you. I just think that it's a really efficient tool for certain brains and maybe not for others. Docking says, I think he sees the levels as a method to view people which can be right or wrong, ju more just a lens. Oh, so there isn't much to attack there. I agree with that. I do agree with that. Why does, okay, I agree with that. That is fair and I will, I will take it. Okay, then I am okay with that. I think that makes sense. Um, oh, I'm running out of spoons. I almost do want to talk to him, but I'm like, I'm kind of running out of spoons. Um, I should probably just get off. I could not be an all-day streamer. Guys, I'm like already, whew, I'm already tired. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about, though? Anything else we should cover? It's 2 p.m. Pacific. I don't know how streamers stream all day. Literally, I'm so exhausted. Talk to Destiny now, maybe. Ugh, is he doing anything right now? I'm kind of out of spoons. <laughs> That's the problem is, like, I'm already tired. <laughs> I'm already tired. Oh. Hello? Hi, can you hear me? Oh my God. Loud and clear. What's oh, up, bud? Hi. I just touched a cherry. It was really nice. Nice. Yeah, it was really good. But there's something that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, you said something in the stream when you were reacting to me yesterday, and I just wanted to clarify. But I'm kind of running low on spoons, so just like forgive me, okay? No problem. Oh. I have so many spoons right now. I'm so tired today. Basically, you said that I misrepresented something you said about... Um, like I said that you wanted to move people in your direction and I think you said that was wrong. Um, 
Fuck, I'd have to see the exact clip. Um, I, did, I don't know if that's misrepresenting me, because I think I've said that in the past, but I don't think as much. That's not generally my stated goal anymore. But Okay. Uh, so just if, so I, if I said I disagreed, I, I don't think it was, I, I would hope. I'm not saying I'm disagreeing with you. That's just not exactly what my stated goal is anymore. But yeah, go ahead. Okay, so just to clarify then, what mm-hmm. is your goal as like a content creator and thinker? Is it to move people in a direction closer to like your narrative? Or is it just for you to understand how people think who are different from you? Like what is the goal? Um, I think right now it's just to show like some level of like some base level of like empathy or understanding towards um, some people. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I hope things happen as like a byproduct of that. But like my explicit goal isn't like moving people closer to me or converting people necessarily to like my point of view. Okay. And then I have a question in relation to this because you know how you guys, I came onto your stream when I was high and Lav and Mr. Girl and stuff were having their moment with me. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was very much like, why are we taking ourselves so seriously? But then Cherry just said something interesting. And she and she said that we were basically discussing what does it mean to be serious about our work? I think my levels, as an example, is a very efficient tool. And I think it's really good for some people. But I don't think I'm an academic. I know I'm not. (laughs) I know I'm not serious in that way. And I don't want to convert people to my way of thinking, but I do take myself seriously as an adult, as a contrast to what Lav and Erudite and I were talking about. I take myself seriously enough that, yes, I do want to be treated without kid gloves, but mm-hmm. at the same time, what does it mean to be serious in a, in, a, in a bubble on the internet where we're yelling over drama? Like, what does it mean to be serious given why, how we spend our time? You know what I mean? Okay, what does it mean to be serious? Yeah, like if someone said, Stephen, do you take your work seriously? Um, what does it mean to be serious? I guess it's going to depend on the type of work. So like um, for the type of work that I, it's going to depend even on what we're talking about in terms of like, um, like being serious. So like for me, like being serious might be like preparing in advance for a debate mm-hmm. um, or it might be taking like the things in words I say seriously because I know they have an impact on people. Maybe mm-hmm. that's like a form of like being serious. Um, yeah, but obviously that's going to vary based on the type of, if I'm like playing league, that's going to be different, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's where I'm trying to find like a happy ground where I feel like I do it. I live on my little island and sometimes I talk to you and sometimes I talk to other people. But my goal is to share ideas that I think are useful and helpful to people who they are useful and helpful to Mm -hmm. and to move off of that. So I think I take myself very seriously in certain capacities. Like I'm very, I take my job as an aunt very seriously, right? Um, As a YouTuber, I take the job of it very seriously, like showing up, being productive, trying not to be such a boomer on stream, which does not happen. Um, Mm -hmm. I take my calls very seriously, right? Making Mm -hmm. sure I'm on time, making sure I'm present. Mm -hmm. But in terms of how I'm impacting the global world, (laughs) it feels very silly to say that I'm very serious about impacting the world. That feels childish to me. What do you think about that? Um, well, the words that you're using, um, sound aggressively outwardly pointed, Ooh. but I could agree with you. It just depends on what you mean by that. Um, because in one mm-hmm. sense you could say it feels silly to me because I don't feel like that's the type of impact I aim for, or I don't feel like those are the types of conversation I have. So it's kind of silly to think of it that way. But then in another way, it could sound like what you're saying is that like anybody on the internet that thinks it can have an impact on people like that is silly or no, wasting their yeah. time. No, I don't yeah. believe that. Obviously I think that you have great impact in your local communities in the world. If you are a global like, um, influencer, I suppose, um, mm-hmm. obviously people impact the world in different ways. I just know I am not looking for global domination. I'm trying just sure. to be a good local kind of positive. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe I can take myself seriously in that, but then at the end of the day, like I'm just a fucking content creator. Like how serious can we be? I'm not actually sure. Like I can, I'm just trying to get people to get along during Christmas dinners. You know what I'm saying? That's my kind of goal. Sure. But I mean, like when you say like, how serious can you be? It sounds like you're not talking about your mode of operation. It sounds like you're talking about like the topic where serious is like kind of some weird adult version of like this is a serious topic versus like i'm sure you can seriously take the topic of like how to get people to be nice at christmas dinner right 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 okay yes that is true and the vibe would change Mm -hmm. depending on how we tackled that issue because it impacts people's mental health you could say that going to christmas at my mom's could literally like trigger me to the point of suicidal ideation so like maybe it is a very serious you know in that way it's very serious right Mm -hmm. yeah i guess um i guess i'm having a little bit of a a disconnect I suppose like you know how Max was telling um Cherry that like oh like or he was upset with you for not taking her mistaken accusation too seriously because it really could have impacted his reputation 
I don't understand mm-hmm. why he thinks he can care about that when he goes around saying such shit about other people and he doesn't think about the implications of what we have to deal with when he says shit like that. Um, well, to be fair to Max, I don't think Max makes like sexual assault allegations towards other people, right? I mean, no, I, though my flirting with him was a little too strong for his taste. Sure. Right? He said it was kind of rapey. Yeah. Um, hold on. I, just a really quick question. Yeah. Oh, guys, not for you. I'm oh, sorry. Fuck you. <laughs> why are, I don't know why these lubricant barrel, uh, barrels are going in here. I don't know what's causing it to load. It should never be happening. It's only when it's less than 240. And when I check here, I've got over 3,000 barrels being sent by the signal. What the fuck is going on? Okay. Um, <clears throat> so you're asking me, like, how can Max be upset? If, it's, yeah. if you make it a little broader, like, yeah. how can Max be upset when people make accusations about him when he says, like, really ridiculous stuff? My, my, my belief would be that um, Max is probably thinking, like, well, if people are getting mad at me because of, like, the serious topics that I grapple with, that's okay. But if people are getting mad at me because of fake sexual assault allegations, um, then people probably it wouldn't be okay with that, right? Yeah, but I mean, that's what I'm trying to say. I'm, sa- I'm trying to say that Max himself, like, we all have to deal with backlash from sloppy content creators. I had to deal with it when Max was sloppy with me. I had to deal with it. So I guess I just like, yeah, take it, like suck it up, bro. We all have to deal with this and we do it to each other. And that's what I- I don't know if everybody does fake sexual assault allegations to each other. That seems to be a little bit. But she obviously just like when it's, it's kind of like I could see in that moment why she panicked and thought that's what was happening. And I can- Yeah, of course. Right? So I can like be like, okay, no big deal. It was a mistake. And, like, Max, it's a mistake. But also, I guess I think Max, like, also, some people on the internet, not just Max, want both. Mm-hmm. They want to be able to be provocative and still not have consequences. Like, it's like Ethan Klein. Ethan Klein said the most horrendous thing about Ben Shapiro. And then he goes, mm-hmm. well, I'm a Jew. And I'm like, okay, yes. And that is, yes, we all understand it was a joke. I watch Ethan. I know he's outrageous. But at the mm-hmm. same time, why would you even think the thought? The thought itself was such a negative, awful thought that I'm like, why are you – acting like you're not trying to be provocative and why are you shocked that YouTube banned you when like everyone's on high alert for anti-Semitic issues, right? Mm-hmm. Like why would he say that? It's kind of like yeah. this this d- cognitive dissonance that's happening in adult content creators that I feel like our job itself is turning us into such, like I think we forget that it's not that serious, but I guess if you want to start going around canceling people, now we have to take it seriously. And, yeah, and I think that was the main issue with Ethan, why people are yeah. so critical of him, is that it seems like he was kind of like championing this type of culture to some extent. Yeah. So now when it comes back to bite you, it looks kind of bad for you to be like, wait, well, hold on, I was just joking, or totally. I didn't mean it like, that seriously. And it's like, what if Steven Crowder had made a comment like that? Like, yes. how would you feel about it, you know? And it, exactly. he'd probably be fully on board with canceling Steven Crowder for it, you know? That's what I'm saying. The lack of consistency is so difficult, but I think it's because we don't actually know why we're saying the things we are. Like, I'm, you know, hardcore about freedom, blah, blah, blah. I'm all about try your thing, live near bubble, do your thing. But mm-hmm. I think that that's, I think that's what I told Cherry. Look, at the end of the day, we don't know what we're doing on this planet. We're trying our best to figure it out. And through that trial and error, we make mistakes. It gets messy. Sometimes we genocide a whole population. But that's what humans do. Like humans are one of the most trial and error species I've ev- like I've ever understood. That's what I understand us as, as a species who tries its hardest to trial and error. We do what we think is right, but we fuck up most of the time, but we're trying. Like, I don't know that I need to become consumed by the inconsistency of people's actions unless it directly harms me. But I find like people try to get the, um, they try to preemptively go on the attack, which causes the craziness to amplify. So like, why do you think you've been having so much drama on your channel lately? Does that make sense? Like, does that... I'm sorry, I'm having like 20 thoughts. So just yeah, I was gonna say that's a little separate from <laughs> what you were just saying. But I'm I'm, t- I'm connecting um, it to the idea that these things keep happening, but then we wonder mm-hmm. why they keep happening. But it's like, but what are what is what is the pattern you're exhibiting that allows this to exist? Like this energy. Like why is Lav or Max or why are we having yelling matches on these panels? Like why do you think that happens? Um. Uh, for me, if I were to try to like single it out as a single issue, I think it's generally because people are generally very unempathetic or they don't understand where other people are coming from. I think that's where the vast majority of shouting matches are coming from, mm-hmm. is somebody failing to understand the position that somebody else is taking. 
Like, I think that's where, yeah, I think that's where most of Max's issues are. I think that's probably where most well, of Lav's issues are. Well, wait a second. Then why did you struggle yeah. to understand Lav's, pos- Lav's position about her being, like, pro-sex work but also doing sex, or, sorry, anti-sex work but also doing sex work, or maybe her issues, like, did you actually have issues with her stance or just the way she handled it? No. I think that, well, firstly, her stance was, was incomprehensible. Um, but my issue isn't with her stance. I've said this a lot on stream. Um, my... Uh, I, I like Lav because I think it's interesting. I think she's relatively intelligent. I don't think she's an idiot. Um, I've never thought that before. Um, I like Lav because it's interesting to me to see somebody that has obviously been severely affected by something who's reasonably intelligent going through a big like transitionary period in her life. Mm-hmm. That's something that's interesting to me. I like to watch the, the change. Um, my issue with Lav, and I'll say this every time somebody asks, is that while she's in this highly transitory period, she is aggressively attacking other people, but then it seems like she's changing her opinion the next day. So, yeah. like, her really aggressive statements about, like, you, her really aggressive statements about uh, Miss Genevieve, um, her really aggressive statements about sex workers in general, like, all of these were framed in a really aggressive manner, but then they change the next day, and then people are like, okay, well, hold on, you were just shitting on these people for not something that it seems like you've come around on in 24 hours. I think that was the issue. Yeah, but we, we know she's going through a transitionary period in her youth, and this is so normal. Don't kids go back and forth all the time? Um, yeah, but if you're going to be now. really, if you're going to be really aggressive while going back and forth, people are going to fucking destroy you. Probably right. should. So. No, no. As yeah, they exactly, should. Yeah. For so sure. my goal. I, yeah. But I wasn't destroying. I wasn't usually attacking her on that. I was usually just kind of like asking her questions and kind of like poking and prodding. It wasn't until she started to kind of, I think shit talk me on other platforms that now it's like, okay, well, hold on. I think I've been fairly charitable towards you, but if you're going to be aggressive with me on other platforms, well, now I'm going to be aggressive when I have you in front of me. Right. So that's yeah. kind of where our little blow up came from yesterday. Yeah. 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 How are you? How, um, Okay, I'm gonna ask you a personal question, but you know, answer how you want. Coming from yes, coming from Twitch, you had all these mm-hmm. like follow-ups. Mm-hmm. Coming here to YouTube, you've made like kind of better friends, but then also it's been chaotic. Mm-hmm. Um, do you feel safe with your YouTube friends or streamer friends? Um, I feel like I have a really good handle on where people are at and what people are capable of. Like, there are certain people that I can tell, like, could flip or things could happen with. And then there are other people where it's like, I don't think that person would. Um, and for the most part, I think my internal reads are generally pretty correct on people. Nobody's like, I don't know if anybody's like shocked me where it's like, oh my God, I thought this person would be like loyal to the end. Um, and then it's like, oh mm-hmm. fuck, they turned on me for something. So I think I generally have a good feel of people. Um, w- one thing that I think that is true in life in general, um, like I always ask, if you go to, you know what Denny's is? You know what Denny's is, right? Like the restaurant, Denny's? <clears throat> yeah, if you go to Denny's and you get a steak, Right, it, like you, you know, you enjoy your steak at Denny's. Yeah, if you go to a really expensive restaurant and you get a Denny's steak there, you're going to be really upset. But like, it's the same steak. Why would you be mad in one place or the other? And I think that the issue is that most of the disappointment in life comes from the mismatch between expectation and reality. Yeah. So when I'm befriending certain people, there are certain people. It's like I know that depending on how things go here, this person could flip. And as long as I'm expecting that, like when it happens, it's not like surprising to me. You know, like I know that Lav has her things and she does her things, and like she's fun to talk to, and I don't mind like hanging out with her. Like that's fine. But like if Lav is like trying really hard to be friends with Mr. Girl or some shit comes up where she's getting shit on my community, it's like yeah, it wouldn't really surprise me if Lav was like fuck Destiny, this guy's a piece of shit. It's like eh, okay, whatever. Um, like that's not like a shocking thing to me. Like it's within like the the world of possible expona- um, expectations that I would have for her, right? But like you and I have talked pretty closely quite a bit, and I feel like I have like a decent beat on the type of person you are. Mm-hmm. If you went live on your stream and you all of a sudden were like, "Oh, I actually think that Destiny and Malina are horrible people," and blah blah blah, that would be surprising. You're like, oh damn, that actually kind of feels kind of shitty because that's like way yeah. outside of the realm of expectations um, yeah. that I would have had for you. Um, but it just depends on the person, you know. Like where Max is at right now, so I'll stake out maybe a risky position. We'll see if I'm right or wrong. Um, I could see Max having big problems with my community and maybe problems relating to me and my community. But I think that even if that continues, unless it gets really rocky, I think that in general, me and him will be okay. It might be a bit tumultuous, but I think it'll be okay. Because for all of Max's faults, I don't think he's like a bad person that would try to fuck me over or backstab me. I don't think he's that kind of person. I think that he just has a lot of problems seeing these from other people's points of view sometimes. um, And then he can get emotional, which is fine. Um, But I don't think he would like fuck me over really. I don't think Max would ever be that kind of person. (laughs) Well, maybe, but Max, I don't think so. I feel like Max is not going to intentionally fuck you over like in a malicious way. I think he Mm -hmm. might be so morally pushed into a quote unquote corner that he might feel like he has to uh, regardless of your friendship like take a stand which is yeah and something of- that comes off negatively yeah but like if people have to do that like eh, you know it's fine i understand that's different than like like for instance i don't think and i could be wrong 
But if like all of Max's DMs were leaked right now between like him and Lav and everybody else, like he might say some things where he's like pretty critical of me or like, oh, I think that Destiny's missing this or that or whatever. But I don't think it ever be like, Destiny's a fucking piece of shit. I fucking hate this guy, blah, blah, blah. Like yeah, I can't, yeah, you know, yeah. I don't think anything like that would ever be leaked. Yeah. But. Um, I feel like Max does this thing though. And I'm a little like, I would be worried in general. Well, no, 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 scratch that. Fuck that. Listen to this. Okay. Listening. Yes, Okay. Ma'am. <laughs> in relation to like friends like us like I think about our friendship quite often and I think of us as um like getting to know each other still in many ways yeah and of I'm, course because technically we've spent probably less than 20 hours if that talking to each other right yeah and we haven't even met mm-hmm. in person yet so there's so much mm-hmm. more to gain from just being in your space right just to feel your energy would probably change things up a little bit Mm-hmm. Um, maybe more trust or less trust would happen. So I think yeah, way more, but yeah. hopefully, <laughs> but I think that's the problem is that I think that even from the outsider's perspective, there's like, Oh, Brittany and Steven must be very close. And I'm like, Whoa, like I mm-hmm. like, I like, I love Steven. He's so considerate, nice to me. And as a friend, I, I love him so much, but like, God, I don't even have this man's phone number. Like everybody relax. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I can't know you yet, but I know mm-hmm. Hopefully what I, what I do know about you reassures me that you would remain a good friend. And so I can have high trust, I think with your consistency, you, your energy, the way you talk, the way you, you've been for the last whatever years on the internet reassures Mm -hmm. me that I can put a higher trust um, expectation on you. Sure. But with other people, I can't exactly always have that. Now with Lav as an example, Mm -hmm. I see Mm -hmm. her as a person that I don't need to have um, a high or low trust with. Just a medium, a nice medium. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it's going to depend on like what you're going to share with somebody too, right? Like this happens a lot where people on my stream will be like, why did you ever let that person on? Why did you trust that person? Why did you bring that person on? They fucked you over, blah, blah. And it's like, they kind of fuck me over. But like the level of trust you think I have in these people is way higher than I actually do. Like it's not like any of these people are actually fucking me over. They just like me and then they go on to shit talk me. But they don't have any leverage over me. They don't have any like private or super crazy information or they don't have any like access to my business. Like, you know, now if Melina were to like flip and like take half my assets or something after marriage, then it's like, okay, that's a fuck up. But like somebody that used to like me on stream and then shit talks me, it's not like I had a huge trust for them. Like that's, it was just a person that came and then they went, you know, that happens. How do you emotionally feel in relation to the like the Lava Mr girl stuff are you actually like you know how on stream you seem very invested are you that invested off stream or do you just like oh whatever um i just get mad when people say dumb things that just triggers the fuck out of me (laughs) um i'm not like i'm never like it's not a personal thing where i'm upset where it's like oh no why are you backstabbing me or blah 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 anything like that it's usually just like you're what you're saying is so dumb and it's triggering the fuck out of me that's generally how i feel about things yeah okay i guess you know Mm, when you say you're triggered by things do you mean that and like the it's upsetting me so i'm gonna like be like loud about it yeah that's what i mean not like i'm actually like medically triggered um yeah yeah like, yeah interesting i'm not having like a trauma response or something yeah i have a theory because cherry and i just talked about this i do have a theory that i can enjoy everyone and the differences you all have and i hope that i continue to be a space where people can come talk to me in a less yelly way and we mm-hmm. can have open discourse about what's been going on. Um, mm-hmm. But I think that I I live so hardcore in my offline life that I when I come to work, I'm really just working. But also I'm getting to know people slowly and maybe we'll be friends, maybe we'll be close, maybe we won't. But it feels very like less personal naturally to me. But the way that the drama ensues on your channel feels so personal to me. And I just don't understand how it's not unless it's for views, unless people are getting upset on camera so the views come in. I mean, the people are personally, the people that come on that get upset are genuinely very upset. Um, And they genuinely have like very real issues with people. Like that happens. It's not like Stardust and Mr. Girl was not like fake drama. Like they had, they were close friends and then everything like, yeah, super fell out. And there was like a lot of crazy shit Mm -hmm. that was going on there. So I mean, like that's genuine. Yeah. Okay. I guess, I guess. Oh. Oh, Oh, hi, Dan. Yeah. Having a good day? I'm having a fine day. Just thought I'd come in here and, you know, we're all talking about how we're all best friends and everything. And I thought, wait a second, I'm the best friend and I should be in this call as a result of that. Okay. So, cool. I like that. How was your guys' dinner yesterday? It was very Great. good. Yeah? yeah? Do you feel mm-hmm. like you're very close to Steven? Oh, so close. Very close. Yeah, but you know, close. If Dan um, fucked me over, I would be upset. That's a person who I'd be like, wow, didn't see that one coming. You know, yeah. the big thing is, is that you, and I think I said this before to Steve. You can't you can't buy it with words or philosophy talks or anything. It just takes thousands of hours. That's it. There is no shortcut for it. There is no let's have a big heart to heart. 
there is no, I think for anything, it's just, you got to be on the streets with the guy and see what he can do. And it just takes time. And there's nothing you can do about it to bypass it. But, you know, it's just it. It's like being an expert at something. Time. Yeah. So I would say that um, time can do it, but I think there's a reason why. And I think there is a way to shortcut it. Um, the way that I always view things is that if we go through a certain situation where you could fuck me over and you choose not to, that's in me, those are the things that, oh, okay, I, I think I can trust this person. Because I theoretically could spend hundreds of hours with a person and we've never been like in a high stress situation where you could fuck me over, but you don't. I don't necessarily trust that person. I just know them for a long time, you know? Like, hmm. um, yeah. So what kind of like what if you had a relationship though? What if what if our friendship, Steven, is one of the smoothest mm-hmm. and best you've ever had for thirty years? What if we never fight? Um that terrible, means it, but it's possible. Well, well, that means it's not the smoothest and the best, right? True relationships require conflict to see where you can push them a little bit you know it's not just, necessarily never... but i mean it, it would probably there's like a hint of truth to what dan is saying is that like it means we probably haven't scratched that much depth or mm. there's some sort of like relational thing that we're missing because generally people are unless we're ca- clones of one another which we're definitely not <laughs> um yeah usually there's going to be some kind of point of conflict yeah or i mean something, you know? you're obviously like the girl version of me so i think that we're similar enough that we would have natural moments like i'm waiting I just told this to my chat. I am waiting for us to have like our disagreement moment, but I think it's difficult Mm -hmm. because I don't, I don't know that we don't, we must disagree on something, but I don't know if that's actually true. Maybe we just are so open and we're good with people being who they are that we won't ever have a disagreement. That's what I'm saying. Like, what will we, we'll argue probably about how to do things. Like we might argue about like the ethics around something and that might be our fight, but we're probably not gonna, I don't foresee us fighting over like real stuff. Like maybe differences. Yeah, the people. problem is that like mm-hmm. we inhabit areas that are so different mm. that there's not much room for there to be the friction that would cause a fight. Yeah. So like for instance, here's something that we theoretically could fight about, but my guess is going to be that you'll be like, oh, okay, yeah, I guess that's probably true, and you'll drop it immediately. But yeah, well, let's test it right now. Okay, okay. you ready? We might have a big fight right now. Okay, okay. ready? Okay. So. From a geopolitical slash historical standpoint, you mentioned earlier that it's silly for somebody to claim I'm anti-Semitic because I'm from the Middle East. <gasps> Were that you watching comment, my stream? Shut up. Don't worry about it. But that comment is a little bit silly because there's a lot of Arabs in the Middle East that fucking hate Jews, <laughs> right? So that's not really a good oh, argument. That could be an argument. they would be Nazis. They would be anti uh, but they wouldn't be they Nazis. They would be super anti-Semitic. Maybe not Nazis, but they'd be super anti-Semitic, I'm okay with that. right? Obviously, yes. Obviously, the Middle sure. East got problems. But, like, yes. Okay. Oh. I just, I think I hate the word Nazi. It drives me crazy. Oh, okay. It just well, doesn't make talking sense about that, but... to call me a Nazi. If you call me an anti-Semite, we can talk about that. But, obviously, that's also not true. <laughs> Because I'm not, like, obviously that's not the kind of, if you actually want to get bubbly about it, I'm not the kind of Mm -hmm. Middle Eastern that would be anti-Jew because we think we are Jews because we're all from, we think, like, Adam and Eve, like, the Garden of Eden was, came from Iraq, came from Elkush, where my parents were from. So, like. I do not think that. No, so like that's it's true that most Arabs think they are Jews. I'm not, Arab. not saying most Arabs. She said from the place that she specifically. I'm Chaldean. Oh, I'm not Arab. I'm Assyrian. So like that's the thing is I'm not even real Arab. Like when people say like my Arab callers would be like you're one of us, and then my other non-Arab callers like the Jews are like you're one of us. We're all one of each other. I get it because we're all from the same origin. We all share the same forefathers. We all share the same like basically God. Like so I think in that regard it's one of those confusing bubble things. So when you say Assyrian, like A S S. Yes. Why? Assyrian, uh, not Syrian. I knew, I, I, I knew an Assyrian. Oh yeah. Not that great of a yeah, not that great of a Rust player, but very loud. You remember <laughs> him too, right? I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I, wait, he was very loud. Lo- oh, interesting. Okay. We're very loud as a people. We're very loud. I, I, I'm. You're two for two. So he far. literally speaks in a shout. Yeah. Yeah, that that's how some yeah. of us are born. So I think like I get my feelings. I do get my feelings like hurt a little bit when I'm like, oh man, they don't see me. But then I go, oh well, that's the internet. People don't see each other. So I, I think that that's why I like Destiny or Steven is because I think that you try to see people. Like you attempt to see and understand them, even if you mm-hmm. don't always get it right. You're at least trying, and that's very fun. That's exciting. Yeah, I try my best. Wait, is this like a fucking suck off session of this guy? Because he's not that fucking great. I'll be honest. Oh, he's fine. Good. You're, you're, you're like okay. That's it. Okay. I mean, Jesus. I mean, you're the one who spent thousands of thousands of hours. Hours, true. Yeah. So I'm. Well, not- he spent thousands of hours with me, right? If you think about it, he gave me the roles, not the other way around. He could have kicked me out. He chose not to. So essentially, he was joining me, not the other way around. What's your? That's, that's very easy. What's the favorite part about you guys being friends? Because I actually do like your dynamic a lot. What's your favorite part about being Steven's friend, Dan? 
being right most of the time and then having him not admit it and try to weasel out of it is usually like the best part about it because it happens so often. Cringe. Steven, yeah. what's your favorite part about being friends with Dan? Yeah, what's your favorite part, Steve? Uh, really I embellished. One, I think Dan being older helps a lot. Ah, as, yeah. as much as I hate to say that, I really do think that I'm... Dude, I feel so boomer when I say that. There are so many people that when I... are. I hate that I've become this because as a kid, it's so frustrating. When I say kid, I mean someone in their 20s to see older people do this. But there's a lot of people, this happens with Sneeko, 100%. It happens with Lab, 100%. Like when I hear them say certain things, all I'm hearing them say is I'm 24, I'm 24, I'm 24, I'm 24. And it's like, I get it, dude. I totally understand where you're coming from. But oh my fucking God, is it frustrating to listen to? Your ageism um, is getting worse as you, as you get it older. It is, yeah. It's that's what happens, so right? When you get older, you, yeah, you turn really ageous, yeah, I guess. So Dan being older probably helps. Um, our senses of humor are pretty similar. Dan is really good at recognizing like the limits of his knowledge. So I don't think Dan would ever come to like start a huge fight with me over some shit that he's totally clueless about. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then we vibe off each other basically, yeah. Um. Knowing your, so basically my skills are I'm old and I know that I'm a moron, so. <laughs> Not a moron, but if yeah. you want to be dramatic. I think, no, it, Dan, so. I think yeah. Steven is trying to say that your wisdom inspires him to think about his ideas better. That's what I'm oh. hearing, that your oh. age contributes to your wisdom because like steven's ageism is pretty bad but i have a question steven if you if we're being like observed by like um, a person in their 60s do you mm -hmm. think that we would be the children like we'd be um, the young people i'm not sure it's hard to say a lot of adults are real fucking stupid there are a lot of adults i know that are like you act like a high school or a 20 year old so i'm not sure i mean I've maybe by a really adults. wise adult yeah, good one. Maybe by like a really wise adult, they'd be me that way, but I'm okay with that. I hope that when I'm 60, I'm way more wise than when I'm 33. <laughs> Obviously, God, that's the goal. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I'm, I'm wondering about too as well. I know, I guess apparently you watch some of my stream. I'm just, I guess, confused when I watch all the panels and everyone's yelling. I can't tell if they do it because they're on stream with you. Like, why can't this No, I think it's just because people genuinely have a really hard time understanding each other. And then, like, when you're talking to somebody, they seem so fucking stupid because they're not understanding the basic thing you're trying to get across. It's like, okay, well, that's then people are just going to get more and more and more upset because they feel like they're not being understood. And then, you know, if you're not being we also understood, do, you scream louder. <laughs> we also do a really good job of making people, like, kind of go batshit a little bit. Or, or I would say confront things that they wouldn't normally do. Like, we can suss that shit out very fucking quickly. Like what's going to drive someone to go fucking mental or what they're trying to hide, that type of stuff. It seems like a, something that most of the people don't do as well. So it's well, like kind of stirring the shit a little bit, mm -hmm. but like getting down to the fucking point, right? Like, you know, you know how to, I don't want to say how to hurt someone, but like, you know what they're not talking about. You can get to the point right away. Steve's very good at that. Like if someone comes in here, like just cutting through the bullshit and being like, Hey, why'd you say this? And they're like, Oh, okay. Well, uh, you know, there's not a lot of bullshit there. Like, okay, Dan, when you had me on the panel and you were shit stirring, which was very mm -hmm. funny, and I'm convinced you like me so much, actually, because I feel like boy, well, like, I just feel like this is a boy thing to do, but I get it. Um, what was your, what was your goal there? Was your goal just to enjoy the shit show, to make the panel angry, to get like emotions up? I honestly don't, don't remember. I remember ah! that, uh, let's see, what do I remember? I remember that um, I gave you shit for interrupting something, which you did do. And it's not exclusive to you. I did that yesterday, actually, with someone who just comes in here fucking uninvited, like, hey, guys, it's me. Um, fuck off other people in here. I have a conversation to do. And it just drives me fucking crazy more than I'm trying to, like, you know, uh, do anything else. But there's a lot of people that have that in them. They just they see they got the roles and they're fucking showing up. And it's like. Did you guys hear what's happening in Cuba right now? I cannot. And it's like, motherfucker, we are talking about what type of dog is sexiest right now. Yeah. Can you wait your turn? I don't know. Just <laughs> okay. that shit bothers me. Yeah. Um, that's my like um, social misunderstanding of the rules. Steven is also very confusing. He's always like, Brittany, come on. Brittany, I'm talking to you. Oh, what are you doing right now, Steven? He's like, just chilling. Just like talking to you. And I'm like, okay, I can just come in whenever. And then I get yelled at and then I feel bad because I don't want to take other people's Wait, time. when do I yell at you? No, you would never. But like, you know, it's just like, I don't want to like actually. Well, that's because other people are always. You well, know, we do it. We Dan do it for him. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, true. I'm doing it for him. Fuck Dan, you, okay, Dan, I need to ask you this because please tell me I'm not crazy. Steven does treat me with kid gloves, right? He's nice to me. Um, I think, listen, I don't, so I'm going to preface this. I would say maybe a little bit, but it's also because he's trying to put people into his life right now. I think he's been burned by so many people and he thinks like, oh, here's an interesting person. Um, he could obviously make you hate him like so quickly because you say a lot of dumb shit, but he doesn't do it. He's just like, hey, listen, they have their own thing. He defends you a little bit. He moves on. He could, you know, as a, so that could go a different way. If, so if what you're saying is, he doesn't come at me like he would someone he hates. Of course, he oh. doesn't do that. 
But uh, when I think of treating somebody with kids' gloves, when I say kids' gloves, this is what I usually mean. Well, hmm, there could be two meanings to this. One is that I'm intentionally like tiptoeing around somebody to not hurt their feelings. Mm -hmm. That's pretty rare. I don't actually know if I ever do that. The second one is usually like um, I'm spotting things that could be problems or could be contradictions, but I'm giving you like the benefit of the doubt and I'm letting you kind of explore those or explore that in a conversation rather than trying to like fucking destroy you in a debate where like you said this, but then you also said that and now I need you to recognize you're fucking wrong. Like that's generally what it means when somebody says like kids gloves. So like when I, so I would say for instance, like I've treated live with kids gloves, but that doesn't mean I've treated her. She's not an idiot. I'm not treating her like a stupid person and I'm not like not challenging her. Like our conversations, I think most of them, even the ones where I'm being nice are really challenging for her. But I'm not like, um, I'm not sitting there trying to be like, well, you said that and then you did this, you fucking idiot. Like, what? how can you say blah, blah, blah? Like, I'm not like going hard, like trying to assassinate. I'm giving her like, a, in my mind, a space to kind of like explore those ideas in a relatively safe manner. And then like, you know, be able to kind of say whatever and, and do that. Yeah, that's what I mean. I guess when I say kids gloves, no, totally. I really shouldn't say kids gloves. When I say that, what I really should mean is I'm extending like a really high level of charitability. You're probably not going to get from anybody else on the internet. Well, there, there is one thing as well, is and I think, um, like Steve can, I don't want to say like go hard because there's two types of going hard. There's like really like getting into it. And he's done that with me and he's done that with Mr. Milton. But both of us are, you know, we know we're all coming out of this at the end of the day. I think there are some people that if he do, did do that type of like really harsh, brash behavior with a hundred percent, like they're, they're not going to be like, oh, that was fun. I want to do that again. And more so like start shit talking him on their stream later. So there is a lot of people that fall into that camp. I don't know how you would react if he did that to you but uh you know certainly that is something that hasn't been done to you yet but that's just because you're a different type of person so far maybe that's it too i i it's funny i want kyla and i just talked about this too like what does it mean to be taking like to take someone seriously like we we're talking to lav about it I mm -hmm. take my my meat. I take myself seriously, but I also don't like. It's so hard for me to take so many things seriously when it's just all very much. I don't know. It feels kind of fake. My life sometimes, like as a content creator, it's such a weird, awesome job, but it's a total blessing that could go away tomorrow, right? And I'm trying just to enjoy it while I have it, but I. It's hard for me to invest in it like I did with politics. Like politics, I thought I was changing the world, right? I was really invested. So I was ready for battles every day. But here, I just want to have the conversation. Like I wonder if you avoid, Stephen, coming at me about the levels because you know it's just a subjective tool, that it doesn't matter. It's not trying to be objective. So it's like, what's the point of discussing this? Um, and since that's Why don't I come after you about like the levels? Yeah, like, why don't you, like, you know how people seem so angry about it? Is it just because you know it's not that big of a deal, so you're like, what's the point of getting angry about it? I think the reason why people get angry about a self-made level system where you've appointed yourself the highest level is people feel like you use it as a way to be condescending towards people, and people oftentimes really don't like to be categorized. Mm -hmm. So in their mind, there's a girl like you that doesn't fit any of the traditional molds of intelligence. You don't like wear glasses and do STEM and debate politics and all that shit, right? You talk about what you talk about on your stream, mainly interpersonal stuff. So you already don't fit the mold of what they would expect to see as a very intelligent person. And then you've got a level system where you categorize yourself at the top and they probably feel like if they talk to you, you'd categorize them lower. Um, I think that harbors a lot of resentment or they would harbor a lot of mm -hmm. resentment as a result of that and then people will attack you for it. Um, I don't attack you for it because I have a very cohesive way of how I view the world. I don't necessarily care if you and I disagree on some things or if you would say I'm like a level one or a level two, that wouldn't, I don't think you'd say I'm a level one. But like, <laughs> I don't think I would really care that much like where you put me, like I'm on yeah. my journey, I'm doing my thing, I've got how I'm figuring out the world. Um, what I'm curious about, or the, the thing that I would super attack you over, is if I felt like you were generating a lot of really, really, really bad answers from your system, and that's probably what I would start to hit on you over. So, like, if you were saying things like, "Yeah, like if you've been a level three for like over a year, you should probably like give up on life and like go work as a janitor because you're not gonna make it. like." If you were saying like yeah. stuff like that, I'd probably be way more. Or if you were saying things like, "You know, it's really hard for black people to not be like level two, like that's just kind of where they're on up," then I'd right. probably start like you know going pretty hard. But as it stands right now, like you just have a way of how you arrange people, like your system of organizing things in your head, you do it based on introspection. I think introspection personally is a very important quality. So if mm -hmm. you want to organize your view of people around that, I tend to do it around confidence and self-esteem, but I bet you can make these two things relating to one another. Like people oh, yeah. with higher introspection probably tend to be more, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I probably wouldn't make a formal level system, but maybe I would, you know, maybe someday, who knows? Um, but yeah, so I like, I just, I don't see, there's not, you haven't said enough for me to get like ultra fucking ass mad over it. The way that a lot of my fans get ultra fucking yeah. ass mad over things. Okay. Um, that's, that's right there. I also right don't there. hate women, which helps too. But what is that? So whatever that exists <laughs> that allow, very funny. So that right there, whatever that is, what is that? What is your ability 
to just see it and be like, oh, yeah, okay, it's a system. She made a tool. No biggie. And then other people's inability to do that where they're like, oh, Brittany's like a cult leader and like it's so dangerous. So I'm like, oh, my God, you pussies. Like why, why are you making me – like what is this? I think that there is a very natural, very human, and very normal thing where people that are too different than you necessitate some level of hatred from yourself. I don't know why, if it's an in-group, out-group thing, but that just seems to be a really normal human thing. Um, I notice this a lot, especially after reading an essay by that Scott Alexander guy, that even when we have what we would consider to be a diverse group of friends, when people say they have a diverse group of friends, what they actually mean is they've got a group of friends that are diverse in ways that they don't care about, but in ways that they do care about, there's often very little diversity. Mm -hmm. So to use the classic example of like progressive person, right? They might say, I've got a really diverse group of friends. I've got Hindu people, I've got black people, I've got all the all these colors, all these religions. Then my thing would be like, okay, well you don't care about that. You don't care if somebody's different skin color. Do you have any friends that are MAGA Republicans? Mm -hmm. Do you have any friends that are pro life and then the answer is like fuck no absolutely not. okay we well, don't have a diverse group of friends they are diverse in some ways but they're for qualities that you would never like cut somebody off for mm -hmm. you don't have anybody that's diverse in ways you wouldn't agree with so i think it's pretty natural that when people see somebody that they disagree with to a certain amount it's very 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 hard you've heard the saying live and let live mm -hmm. that is such a tremendously fucking difficult thing for most people to do if people see somebody that they disagree with it almost has to be like that person's a fucking idiot this person is so stupid this person has no fucking idea what they're talking about they're so dumb it's like maybe they just view things a little bit differently than you um, and I don't even necessarily blame them. I think my audience skews a little older, but they're probably the meaning age is probably around 25, 26, 27. Mm -hmm. um, it took me until I was like 29, 30 to stop viewing people as lesser or worse than myself because I would view that a lot because I'm a relatively unemotional person or a more, I would say like, logic brain or right brain or whatever that's how i view things for a long time i would always be like oh i'm better than these people like these people are worse than me they're so emotional but now i'm at a stage in life where it's like okay well there are pros and cons to both types of thinking if you want to be a truly holistic person you have to incorporate both types of thinking and if you view people that are different than you as worse than you there's like this whole gamut of human experience and behaviors and ideas that you're like depriving yourself of but that took me a long time to learn so yeah i mean i don't blame other people for not necessarily being there yeah for sure. And obviously your job where you talk to a lot of people, it like forces you to also see the humanity in so many different, different ideas. Like it allows you, I think, to be more patient, which my job as well allows that. But uh -huh. also I'm striving for it after, especially after being so political for so long. Um, I am so tempted to get back into politics, but I really don't want to. I just think it's like a dead end. Uh -huh. And I, and I, I'd like to think it wouldn't be because it impacts people's lives in such a real way. But it just, it, there's no growth there. There's no expanding on ideas. There's no openness to actually like coming together. There's no willingness to even have a conversation about, you know, do people really view reality so differently that they're willing to vote this way for that reason? Like my sister-in-law, she's really pregnant right now. Thank goodness. We're so happy about it. But she, okay. she made the stance, we're talking about abortion and she, I'm pro-choice, she's pro-life. And she made the stance that like your body doesn't belong to you the moment you're pregnant. And I was like, ooh, can you see how that would be very hard for somebody with like borderline or somebody with suicidal ideations or somebody who feels like who's been raped? She, wait, I missed that. You said she something, um, you're borderline, she's pregnant. What was the thing that you said right she before that? She said that once you are pregnant, your yeah. body does not belong to you anymore. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha, okay. And I was like, do you know how, like what that sounds like to somebody who, who you know, we've already been put in situations where our bodies weren't ours at the moment. And uh -huh. so we're trying to have an, like my consciousness is still there. The baby is growing. Yes. And I'm feeding the baby, but my body's uh -huh. still something different from the baby. But she was like, sure. no, once you get like, once you're pregnant, that baby like owns your body. And that freaks me out. Like that logic, like that thinking about it that way uh -huh. sends me into like, Ooh, runaway mode because I'm like, Ooh, uh -huh. that sounds scary. That sounds like you're going to really let like me die on a table for a baby that's three weeks so, old or whatever. Well, here's something that I'm really curious about then. Um, uh, hold on, wait, you, uh, wait, I'm asking you real quick. I'm not making this up, right? Yes, I'm open about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's a question that, how do you feel about your, yeah, how do you feel about your lupus? What do you mean? And then the context of me asking this is um, I have another friend that I've kind of made kind of recently and they, when she talks about her autoimmune disease, she feels fucking horrible that like I'm trapped in a body that is like literally trying mm. to kill me and it's like the worst feeling ever. 
And I've wondered if you, well, I'm not trying to invoke this fear in you if you haven't thought about it like that. So I don't want to do it. <laughs> but like, have you ever thought about like, okay, well, you know, in one sense, a baby could own your body or in another sense, like your body is trying to destroy itself. Like the lupus owns your body. Have you ever had that framing or thought about it that way? Or uh, I think of my body and my consciousness as like these things where my body carries my consciousness. And so the body mm -hmm. is like a ship and the ship sometimes hits an iceberg. And so sure. my lupus is like the iceberg. It's like, fuck, okay, I have an infection or I have a thing that's attacking my vessel and it's going to make me sail slower or like not hit the tides as smoothly. So I mm -hmm. think of it more like that. And I am, I've already gone through like, actually the hardest part about my lupus was yes, accepting that my body completely changed and it's not as stable. Um, mm -hmm. But knowing that I could get better, I'm working with a nutritionist who's very fucking expensive and wonderful, but she's mm -hmm. wonderful. She's really helping me. And she told me it's never going to go away. You're never not going to be sick, but you can be stable and you can be better. And I said, mm -hmm. okay. And that is just like radical acceptance. I can't change the fact that I have this. I can just work mm -hmm. towards um, pairing up my vessel and taking care of my ship to the best of my ability. But you, you know, think of the same. You can think of like a baby in a similar way, like radical acceptance. I've got a dude growing in me for nine months. Yes, totally. So I actually spiritually think that abortion is really bad for the soul and bad for the everything. But I think that it's necessary. The same with everything we hate doing in life. Sometimes you mm -hmm. have to. Sometimes you have an abortion, right? Sometimes it happens. I've never had an mm -hmm. abortion, but I definitely had a false pregnancy scare. And um, uh -huh. I made that call to Planned Parenthood almost right away because I was like, uh-uh, I'm not having this baby right now. So uh -huh. I, I think that um, that's the problem with me is I know people have pointed it out that I have a personal belief, like a Britney belief, and that uh -huh. I have a – but you have to survive in the world belief. So if I'm living and I have privileges and I'm healthy, yeah, have a baby. But if you're in survival mode and you fucking don't have $10 to your name, maybe having a baby isn't the best and maybe killing it is better, right? We've uh -huh. justified abortion all this time for that reason alone. I think it's a fine reason. It's maybe not the best. And ultimately, in a great functioning society, we wouldn't have it. Mm -hmm. So yes, of course, I can understand that my body is now this home for this baby. And when I have a child in a few years, fingers crossed, I'm going to do everything I can to prepare this vessel, like not doing drugs, stopping my weed intake. You'll be so proud of me. Like mm -hmm. doing all of this stuff. Um, in that regard, absolutely. I think my sister-in-law is making a great point. That that baby is reliant on you, dependent on you, like just this beautiful, innocent being is growing. Of course, the last thing I want to do is kill it. But to say sure. that people aren't in positions where terminating a pregnancy is better, I think is just not fair to the reality of existence. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, so it's that kind of stuff. But I, I try not to be self-pitying, especially about the lupus. I already cried about it. Like, what if I can't be a mom, Steven? What if I'm so I'm so tired all the time? What if I'm so tired that I lose that dream of being a mother because I can't be a good enough mother? That scares me uh, so much. Well, the the best way to think about all of that or the, the best thing about human beings is we acclimate very, very, very quickly, even if it seems impossible. So <laughs> uh, even if that sounds like the worst thing in the world, you'd get used to it surprisingly That's true. quick. That's true. And have you I, ever heard of um? Mm -hmm. Have you heard of locked in syndrome? No, locked in syndrome. Yeah, like you, the only thing you can basically move are your eyes. Oh my god, no. Yeah, even those people report like pretty high like standards of living. So nice. pe pe humans acclimate to their situations like unbelievably quickly. So you'll be fine. That's true. That is ultimately true. So yeah. So that that's that's my answer to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I gotta be honest. Can we move on to some oh. drama stuff? I guess something exciting, interesting, etc. You got anything to add to that or no? I don't have any drama. To add. Do yeah? What drama? No, just in general. Like, how? What's your what's your take on all this shenanigans going on with like Lab and Mister Girl right now? What's I, your What's your viewpoint on here's it? Here's my hottest take about it. I think Stephen uh -oh. Stephen curates. If you give, hold on, let me stop you right now. If you give a half-assed, fake, cutesy answer that does nothing, I'm gonna be really disappointed and upset. Okay, fine. So you better give a real fucking no. hot take here, not some fake hot take that's not hot. Okay, so what's I, going on? I think Steven is such a unique individual that he curates a safe space for some of the most other unique individuals. And those unique individuals tend to be mentally ill. And mental illness with a lack of introspection causes chaos and drama. Wait, who Jesus. are you indicating is mentally ill? Well, I guess there's only a few options here. But yeah, what's going on here? Lav, Mr. Girl. Obviously, they talk about it all the time. Like, it's clear. Like, I don't... Assuming Mr. Girl's stories are all correct, he's obviously going back and forth with his own he's kind of like kanye -ing everything right now right like he's kind of like kanye a little bit he's more reasonable than kanye but i mean is he that different than talking about reality from only his view and how he has all the answers and how he's the one being the most nuanced when that's not really what's happening mm. so do, I'm you, sure. do you have do you have Wait, conversation oh it's lav loon hey lav, oh, um. hi, lav. <laughs> hey what's up lav <laughs> 
Hi, I just You're... tuned into stream and heard and heard uh, someone utter my name. I was summoned. My mentally um, ill sister. <laughs> yeah, laugh. no, I, I I actually think that you're right. I did want to come on because I think that this would be a good time because the gang's all here. Um, I did want to actually publicly apologize. For crying? Uh, no, not for crying. I think oh. my I think my cry was justified, and I think. Uh, Wait, what, are you apologizing to Dan? No. <laughs> Steven, I'm, I'm apologizing to you and also... Oh, no, listen, please. To, if you want to, to tweet your... something, go for it. I hate apologies. I don't care. You're good. Don't worry about it. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll apologize to your audience also. I think that I um, mischaracterized your audience. Uh, I think I think t for every really evil, toxic, spiteful chatter, there's like a really like beautifully introspective, very charitable, empathetic chatter. Um, but it is like so hard to focus on the good things, obviously, right? obviously yeah Chad um, is a mirror you know that's that's it, what it is sure so. and that's hard that's hard like that oh. is it's and especially when it's in real time i don't think that a lot of people have to introspect immediately in real time constantly like people who stream you know at the end of the day you can't win them all but you can win a lot of them and you guys have been doing a lot of l's lately lab. i think and you're right <laughs> I think and you gotta, right. you have to get your shit together because this is a fucking mess. Everything I'm seeing from you lately is just not good. What are you gonna do? How are you gonna change things up? Is what I would ask. No, you. I don't know. I don't know if everything is a mess. Um, I didn't say everything. I said most of the things are a mess. Well, I, don't I think, even you, know if I said I think you said everything. <laughs> oh, then then everything. You know, you gotta you gotta turn your shit around. Double down, yeah, double down. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to take too much of your time. I just wanted to come in and uh, say. Uh, you don't. So you, I, don't wanna, miss, you don't want to answer that question, then. Well, no, no, I do. I just don't want to. I just don't. I don't want to come in here and make it the lab show. I just wanted to make like a little appearance and then pop out. Well, I'll, right I'll now it's the fucking. Time. Oh, hold on. Right now it's the. It was the Britney sh show. Thank God okay. I shut that shit down. So we can <laughs> okay. do the lab show. No, for a little I bit. actually. So, no, I love. I love the Britney show. I love. Well, I, I love. Well, I love we're, we're moving on now. I love Stephen and Britney's dynamic. I think it is much more interesting than uh, what I could add right now. I will come on again and avenge myself. Um, uh, but uh, <laughs> Lev, but Lev, let me ask you this question before you leave i'm just curious okay. um so do so you see how like you're lovable you come on like i'm already smiling i'm like Lev is here like there's so much about you that's lovable do you think that you know that about yourself that there are lovable parts but then there are parts of you that like just like people aren't quite used to um and that just that disconnect between those two areas is what we need to bridge right now we just need to bridge it like, I mean, mm -hmm. it, my hope is that people uh, are around me enough to see that I have complexity, but I yeah. also don't like I understand like when I come into a, you know, when their first view of me for the last couple of weeks is me like yelling at women mm -hmm. <laughs> and like mm -hmm. uh, being really aggressive, like I can't expect them to see anything but that. Yeah. Um, so I think that hopefully with time, people will become uh, less um aggressive on their dislike for me hopefully right like i but could even still if they be don't, extremely right? unlikable but even if they don't here's what i'm curious about because cherry and i talked about this too which that call went really well she was really nice so she that was, really was great. she because people are sending me <laughs> a bunch of uh oh hold on lav you don't want to go down that road because uh people have sent us quite a few things on things you well, said look, as that's well, it, right? so. so go way back sure, to dan's yeah. question this is what happens mm. right we all get together we talk shit we have our things what i'm mostly um Curious about, I just want to get your opinion here and now, because apparently um, Cherry wasn't public with that information about her and Steven. So I wanted to know why you decided to share it on my stream. Wait a second. What? Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. This is actually my fault. Oh. Um, when, no, well, I'll also say it's partly Cherry's fault. But I thought that, especially once Cherry wrote that tweet longer about me, that it was public knowledge that me and her had hooked up. That's what oh. we're talking about, right? Or did I just like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, she yeah. Literally yeah. Talk, she literally apologized and said that you like ghosted her and that she was upset about it. That like implies yeah, yeah. And, a and sexual I also, relationship. Yeah, and then I also, I think I've even mentioned this on stream a couple of times. And then Cherry messaged me like two weeks ago and she was like, did you tell people on stream? And I was like, yeah, I thought this was, I, like, I thought it was, oh no. She messaged me and she said, did you tell Lav anything private about anything that we've done? And I said, no, I'm pretty sure I've only told her like whatever is like public. And then Cherry asked me, did you tell her that we hooked up? And I was like, well, yeah. And she's like, well, that's not public. And I was like, I'm almost positive that's public. Based on your Twitter, totally. I think I mentioned <laughs> on stream. Yeah. So, that, so Cherry probably blamed Lav for using private information that I'd given her to get public leverage on Cherry. Private sex life details? 
Yeah, but they, but I that's I I guess it's my fault or Cherry's fault, but like I don't think that's not necessarily Leo's fault because I I thought everybody thought that that was all public. But. Okay, I would I would never I would I wouldn't I had no reason to even know about it other than what Cherry had the twit longer literally. Okay. That was, do you That's think we infer? Do you think people just like in like oh read that message and then went oh they must have had sex and then that caused that would have been my well, assumption. No, yeah. well she well not yeah. only the twit longer, not only the twit longer, but it was the apology afterwards for writing the twit longer where she was like I'm just sad because he's been ignoring me. Like she publicly said it. But like, yeah, but that it, could it, mean it, anything. So like okay, no, it, it no it wasn't. I'm not I'm not relaying it perfectly because it was yeah. it was months ago. But it, you know why it was that, definitely it was a pretty extreme. Tilt. Like I think my feeling would be, and I could be wrong. My feeling would be that most people. Really Reading that would think that there is some. Oh shit! Who joined? Why are we oh. still doing this? Oh, it's chair. Well, hold on. Jesus Christ. Okay. Ah, Brittany just came. Here. Oh no. Br Dan asked Brittany about <laughs> Lav leaking something publicly about you and me, and I was clarifying to Brittany and Dan that the reason why Lav yeah. leaked it was because I told it to her privately because Listen, I was going to do something that was already public. Crap. There it is. Do Jesus. not do not do the stupid thing. Okay. You are. Do not do what stupid thing. thing. You are a competent fucking person. If you want to dig up my fucking twit longer, you probably know where the fuck it is. So tell me right now, if I put in the twit longer that we hooked up. No, I don't think you explicitly said it. But my... So I didn't. Okay, no, 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 so no, no, stop no. playing stupid. Hold. Okay. Okay, I have a better question. So Cherry and I also <laughs> talked about... Um, she left, by the way. I, I, know, I know she left. I can see. So Cherry and I okay. also talked about, Lev, like um, the way you kind of like said you wouldn't have sex with steven because he's like ugh, a league player oh my goodness. but like come on be real girl be real you you do it right like stop <laughs> no wait Brittany. let her, let her oh, have no. her these are not Brittany, the type i'm Brittany, trying to dm i've had i've had stop. i've had stop. opportunities stop. And it stop. Has not happened. stop lav definitely <laughs> stop okay <laughs> everybody sorry. needs to stop right now with this conversation this is, i'm engaging with women okay. in a loving wholesome non-romantic no, non-sexual way and we're going to continue true. to do that okay it, it doesn't seem that way. I, that's true i i don't think that uh, no i think that our relationship is like very platonic and i don't i don't I, even i'm, gonna I'm have not even to, thinking of that I don't Lev, i'm gonna that. have to stop you there because i do not agree from the things that i've seen in the past between the two of you one from you First off, I believe one of the messages of you making fun of Steven and his penis and things like that, <laughs> then going next after that, like, making totally, I would fuck penis. it. Or something along those lines. Just, you know, no, a I, call, I called him a cheese boy. I called him a yeah. cheese Talk boy. Talk shit behind the scenes about me. That yeah, is true. It, it is not good. And then the next thing, trying to cover yourself by going out there and say, oh, I would totally fuck him. These are not normal ways to handle these conflicts. And you are at fault for doing this type of thing. Do you know how uh, often me or Mr. Mooton or fucking Lycan go out there and we have a slight issue with Steve? And then the next thing we do is we're making Twitter posts about him sure. or, or going on stream and talking shit. That is a very uniquely bitchy asshole thing that the fucking all of you guys are doing. And it's Thank something you, you guys need. No, well, you don't get to just say I'm right. You need to no. stop being like that's why you well, have problems. I, I have. That was that was months ago. And that was also let me let me put things into perspective with you. I feel I like that was also very recently that you went and you did this whole thing on Steve and everything else. I didn't we see clips from you yesterday. Uh, no, that was not. You're talking about the cheese boy thing and the sex thing that I. Well, I mean, there's so many things. My, which my stream sure, be, that, but other things. My stream would uh, be just, too, right? Like, um, but I wouldn't sleep. What, with Maybe no, we just shouldn't ask people. Like, would you fuck somebody? Yeah, maybe that would no, be no, the. No, exactly. No, that's what I was just about to say. Like, when you when you put into public like a a personal relationship that I may or may not have with like mm. another person that I don't want public. I think it's a very normal response to be like, oh, no, I'd fucking never. That's gross. Especially when so many people are like, oh, he only talks to her because he wants to fuck, right? Mm. Of course I have to distance myself from that. That's like an extremely normal behavior. You know, I there's a little, hold on. There's a little thing here, and most people don't know this because most people aren't streamers, but I've dabbled in it in the past, and I'll say this right now. When you are reading chat, you have the ability to read certain messages out loud and not read certain messages out loud. And you all consciously made the choice to say, oh, someone said, hey, are you fucking Steven? And instead of just not reading that message, you chose to go because in there and be fun. like, no, it's funny. no there is Man, you're really do. just going hard on this, Dan. Nice job. Keep, all right. <laughs> keep digging. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's fun. It's like a fun little teaser. It's like, this is, a, I mean, part of our job as streamers is to like entertain. So it's it like funny to bring up, but mm. I don't think that anyone's entitled to like the full actual story, right? The reality is something that is like just ours to keep. I no, think I, I listen, I understand. I'm just saying, look, I feel like a lot of the reason that this crew gets a lot of hate is that you guys are pretty well known for just kind of being snaky 
I guess is like kind of the very simple way of doing it. untrustworthy, unreliable people that would like, you know, after this call, they might try to get together and have another call and talk about how shitty you are and, you know, what dirt can we do and start talking. That's really what it comes down to is it's that gut feeling that you can't explain away by being nice on a call or anything else. And that's something that needs to be worked on to kind of like stop doing that type of thing, just to be authentic, be yourself think that, around the think, person and not around them the same. Sure. I also don't think that you can speak for Steven. Um, I think I, that I don't, I don't need to cause you guys complain about chat and how they feel about you, not Steve. And I'm no, telling but you right I, now. But you saying, but you saying that I'm snaky. I think I've, I've certainly, um, like maybe I've talked about things I like, but so Steven talks about things when I'm not there also, like about how I, I am like a Darvo perpetuator. Right. So like, hold on, wait, 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 just to be clear, I'm not trying to stir more shit, but anything no, 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 that no, no, I ever no, say to my no, stream or privately, I will say to you publicly I and know. I'm not going to like pretend and I'll that do I the okay. same thing. Steven, I'll do the same oh. fucking thing. You you act like you act like everything I said to Max I hadn't said to you in DMs. It's like it, insane. You okay? I don't want to relitigate the whole argument, but you definitely have a way of phrasing things when you're confronting the person in a way that sounds much softer and less aggressive than when you're talking to of another. Of course, person. of course, that's literally how relationships work. Especially if I care about my relationship with you. Of course. What do well, you I mean? Think... That's like normal <laughs> human behavior. That, that's, that's not, not really. <laughs> No, not really, no. Uh, no, because it's not It's not on extreme, it's not on like an extreme scale. I'm not telling Max like, fuck Steven, I'm never gonna fucking speak to him again. Nobody should, I hate him, he's toxic. And then going to you and being like, love you so much. No, mm, I understand. This is so sweet. Yeah, I'm very I much, I'm saying. staying in the center. I'm okay. being more explicit okay, I'm gonna, about hold on. I'm trying, trying to be very charitable right now. I'm trying to be very charitable. Let me finish my thought, please, please. I think Don't. it is very normal for me, who is very emotional, for me to... Uh, try to not burden you with my emotions when I'm talking to you, but when I'm not around you, to express my emotions more freely. I think that is normal and that is healthy. Okay. I'm trying to be very charitable towards you, okay? But to me, having somebody say, because un because I, act, unlike you fucking lunatics, so I'll say you pride yourself on being <laughs> empathetic, blah, blah, blah. I actually pride myself on being a relatively empathetic person. For you to say something like, I don't know if I would ever want to be friends with him because I'm not going to teach him how to treat me like a proper human being. No, That's no, no, an incredibly aggressive statement to no, make, I, okay? First of all, no, I think that uh, honestly, honestly, if I did say that, that I that would make sense. I did not say it that way. If you watch the whole video with me and Max, that is absolutely not the position I take whatsoever. That is, first of all, you said... If you're, if you're, just to be clear, yesterday, like, you said you barely talked to me in that conversation. You didn't even remember saying anything. So why would I watch the whole 30 minute thing when you only mentioned me for like one minute? No, that, I mean, yeah, I don't think. And that, that is basically exactly what you say, which, what no, am I? No, okay, go ahead. What Steven, am I, missing? I, pro I promise it's not. I think it's a very, I had a very normal conversation with Max, who I felt what, had an anxious attachment to you. So I was speaking about you the way that Max views it. I wasn't saying, and I told you this yesterday. I, I think that you're a good person. I think that you're a great person. I just don't, I don't know if Max's attachment is healthy to you. Okay, I, I don't, I don't want to, fuck. I, I'll say my thing, even at the last question, because I don't want to relitigate this whole thing, okay? Yeah. But when you tell somebody, I'm not going to teach that other person how to treat me, the implication isn't, oh, well, they're a great person, we just don't get along. The implication is this person is a fucking asshole, and I'm not going to sit there and take the time to teach him how to treat somebody with basic human respect. That's, sure. what, that's what every single I, person listening to the conversation is going to walk away thinking. That's what it sounds like. Okay, and we talked about how I probably shouldn't have said that with an audience watching. I get that. Um, Ooh, even if you said it privately, that's like the implication. <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't know that that was what I was implying. I okay. thought that I was I thought I was in the meta. I thought that I was in a meta conversation with Max. I did not know that that's what I was implying in the moment. That's certainly not what I meant. Okay. I I yeah I don't um I what I meant to say was like you know if I'm I'm I told this to Max I said you can't put yourself in situations where you're like constantly needing something like you can't. You can't stay in relationships where, like, you're never not needing something, which I think is a healthy. Sure. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. I understand the longer so explanation. Max, I'm just saying that Max, most people aren't going to hear it that way. That's all I was saying. Sure, but I think I made it pretty clear that for Max, being in a friendship with someone who's a little more on the avoidant side is going to be harder for him to navigate. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Oh, 
<laughs> you're using the psych words and they're <laughs> triggering okay. me. Okay. Oh my god. Just be no, clear. Just be clear. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I just no, want to. No, I think you. I think you have health. I want to finish a goddamn statement. You just spoke for 20 minutes. Okay. okay. Let me okay. real quick. Okay. okay. When you describe my attachment style as avoidant, it doesn't map on to the type of relationship that I have with Max because every single time Max has requested for me to have a conversation with him, either privately or publicly, I have always agreed to have those conversations and I have never been avoidant about what he wanted to speak about. So even that statement doesn't necessarily make sense. Oh, he's avoidant, so you're not gonna get along with him. I'm not avoidant at all when it comes to Max. Not, not only am I not avoidant, I would argue that I've probably had some of the most emotionally open conversation with Max on stream than I have with anybody before. So I don't know why you would describe me as avoidant and think that that somehow is like mapping on to the type of relationship that I have with Max. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, can I so, like say, wait, just, I know I, I just, yeah, I yeah. just feel like it's really low trust. So everyone here has such low trust with streamers. I feel like we're no, coming off as- No, oh, that is not true. Like, okay, it is for not, you guys because you earn it with the way that you fucking act. No, no, that's Not fair, low trust for other but people. Even yeah, hold on, wait, 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 I wanna be clear. Brittany, Brittany, yeah. Brittany, I wanna be really clear. I had really high trust in Lav, okay? Because, and this is something that ordinarily I would probably pump the brakes a lot on. Technically, now Lav is gonna say she didn't mean it, but Lav had logs leaked where she was talking shit about me in her fucking Discord, okay? Mm. But I assume that Okay, she's just talking shit or whatever. Maybe it's just jokes. Are, maybe, maybe not. Boy. These are the cheese boy league player comments. Sure, regardless. Well, and also that like, oh, he would suck my fucking husband's dick while I would watch and laugh or whatever. It was, pre it was a pretty out there chat logs, okay? Wow. Let's yeah. be real, lab. Not They're funny. Pretty, but, but regardless, I was like, you know what? Maybe it's she, a, you know, I'm famous. She's talk. talking shit in her Discord. Whatever, whatever maybe I'll give her a chance. So to, I, I don't think it's fair to say, oh, I have really low trust in lab. That's not true. I let her slide with that one. And I think it was, yeah. Low trust or high trust because preemptively. It goes, it's like, it's like saying that as a streamer, you had this whole thing happened with Twitch and Vosh and all these other Hassan people, right? So like you uh -huh. would naturally have maybe an internalized or a subconscious hesitation to assume, like you try to assume the best of people. Maybe you do it better than most, but like Lav and Mr. Girl and all these people, like don't you feel like there's a hesitancy though? Like isn't there a hesitancy? No. Wait, wait, wait. Don't you always say that relationships are like we have to go through shit for me to trust you? Right? Um. Yeah, with something that could like damage me or something, but like- right. First of all, Lav knows this. I already have pretty high trust in Lav in terms of things that she knows about me. Okay? Yes, Lav, say yes, because you yes. know that's true. Yeah, yes. so I have decently high trust in Lav, okay? And I don't think that I have issues. And I know it comes off that way publicly, and I can never really convince any of you guys otherwise, but, like, I don't have trust issues with people in no, terms no, of, like, I opening up to people or no, talking no, to people. Don't right? think yeah. superficial. Oh. Think about, like... Would you trust me right now if I asked you for your bank number, or like your social security number? Your of last course, one hundred percent. You would. I, yeah, I would for you. Yeah. Stop it, Steven. No, you would not. You should not. You don't even know me. For you, way. Brittany? Yeah, I don't, I don't think you'd know fuck me, me over. Way. Of course. Oh my god, what evidence do you have that I wouldn't be crazy? I feel like I've spoken enough with you personally that I probably trust you. I think. What? Yeah, I think I would. What? Can I? Can yeah, I specify? I don't know if I would trust Live with that um, information. But. So this, uh, you shouldn't. I would rob you blind. <laughs> um. I've heard live stage of crazy shit. I don't know how I'd feel about that. I feel like I'd be part of one so of her fucking um, plans. It's but yeah, I think like, I'm trusting God. So uh, I'm. This is a <laughs> Max is throwing me a bone here, but he he he's translating for me. Um, he said, uh, "You you meant that you don't think it's realistic that Stephen is going to meet my needs as I've outlined them. Not that he's a bad person if he doesn't meet them. And I think that that's completely true. I think that's what I said on the stream. That okay. Uh, so that you and Max." Max is, I wouldn't trust either of you to understand what a okay. normal person interprets a message as. Okay, so Max can't work as a translator. Okay, okay Max sure. can't translate for you but, when I have to translate for him for any. Okay, okay. <laughs> it doesn't work sure. that way. Yeah, go. And ahead. and that's fine. But I hope at the very least you see where I was coming from and that my intent was not to like shit talk you. It was more of just trying to like level with Max, which I I think is um, notable, at least. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is some fucking level 900 spinster shit right here. Oh, Jesus Christ. I, 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 my intention was not to shit talk you? Come on. Uh, Just own it and then move on. Well, no, no hold I, on. I don't, I don't, clear, I, don't think the, I don't think the intention was to shit talk me, but it definitely was the hardcore implication. Like, I don't think you went into that conversation like, oh, I'm going to shit on Steven right now. I, but I think it came up, and I think the way that it came off was, like, pretty obviously, like, negatively slanted. I, I think, and again, I think 99% of people would hear that, and they'd be like, yeah, of course. Like, she's shit talking, 100%. Like, if, there's most anything, people... if there's anything I can work on, I think the biggest thing is to think before I speak. <laughs> That's, um, that is always a good thing to do, yes. And I and that's what I will leave with is that I struggle with that and uh, I will work harder and I appreciate all of the people who have given me very um, harsh but needed criticism. Hopefully I continue to flourish. 
and um uh i love you guys even dan goodbye i only speak the truth i don't know (laughs) yeah okay i am the mirrorist mirror as we say about you were the truest among us uh, honestly (laughs) i like to feel that don't fucking lie though we do send it to me right now give me your bank information right the fuck now hold on one second i don't i don't i truly i don't think you would fuck me over I would. I probably. I wouldn't. But you don't know. How do you know that? You're just like you're hoping, right? Like it's a faith. You have faith in me, or you have faith in your own judgment of me. Do your messages like pop up on stream? No, I'm showing just. Well, why? No, don't what, even. What don't, is the don't, purpose? Don't, I, I mean, I'll say if you don't believe me, I'll do it. I really don't think you would fuck Stop me over. It, I can send you no. all my my Stop. bank account, my routing number, my account number, my business First number. Okay, you know what? No, this, I don't this, think. This I means, means nothing. Over. This means nothing, anyways, because Stephen knows there's very little damage you can do with it. Now the question is, would you give her stuff that she could actually do damage with? Like, I'll give you my routing and bank account number because you can't fucking do fuck all with it. And if it could, it's trivial oh, for me to undo it. Oh, why are you $69? So, so, that, so really what you're saying here didn't matter is a good example. The real t- trust, uh, the test of trust here should be something that is irreversible and creates significant harm in his life. And of course, for that, he would not openly give that to you. Well, I mean, I've already trusted should've... her with some personal information that if it were leaked, it would be pretty, like, <laughs> dramatic. <laughs> Oh, it'll be interesting. That's all. But I mean, she has it, so I, I think I relatively trust. Like the thing is, because I'm so open publicly about like all of my private stuff, there's not really much that mm. that like well, like what like Dan. Of all mm. the things you know about me, would you say there's more than like one private thing right now that would truly like blow back on me in a pretty insane way? And that even that one thing wouldn't be like that kind of. Well, I, I don't. Thing, I don't. Right? Know. Right? Like, oh, so much of my. Oh, well, I know. <laughs> I know of at least two. I'm, I mentioned one of them the other day. So I know. <laughs> For me? <laughs> yeah. You know. Wait, the what's the second one? Wait, DM me. What? What? Of of things that would be a fucking shit show for you? Uh, impossible yeah. to explain. Oh no 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 wait. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Yeah. <laughs> That's another one. I know of another one too. Um you know, just <laughs> Sure, okay. But I'm just saying, like aside from like okay, aside from aside from like okay, aside from like two or three things, most of my stuff is like very public, okay? Yeah, true. Yeah. So there's like not much that like could fuck me over, right? Yeah. Maybe that's yeah. the problem. Maybe you share so much, it makes everyone feel like there must be something, something he's like high. Well, some people the, do feel that way. Yes, I do agree. Some people do feel that way. But, but also the shit that you guys know, um, I don't know. I mean, it's not really end of the world for him, honestly. Like, I, I'm, I'm imagining it right now if that got out. And it's like, it's just, he just... <laughs> You know, it's not that bad. Nothing changes, right? His yeah, money, I'm also his like, I'm like such change. an open person. Like, if something like dramatic leaks by me, I'd probably like, ah, oh, okay, oh, that's kind of annoying, I guess. Mm. But it's like whatever. But at the end of the day, it doesn't impact me that much. You know? yeah. yeah, I mean, Steve, it's, it, yeah. Steven, are you ready to take accountability? <laughs> um, uh oh, for what? Well, here you guys have been having consistent arguments, dissecting what a uh, confused, tw- self-described confused twenty-four-year-old who doesn't know what she's talking about and doesn't think before she speaks. At what point is there like no point in having these conversations if she doesn't know what she's talking about and you're out here frustrating yourself trying to forget what she's talking about? Well, don't forget, he's getting paid for this. So he'll do this all day, every day. The thing that's interesting for me is I I know that she quote unquote doesn't know what she's talking about because she's still exploring, but like neither did Sneeko. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch the, the evolution of those thought processes and those people, especially because I can see shards of myself in those younger people too. Bro, if you if I could have been a fucking live streamer at 18 or 19 years old, you think Lav is arrogant? Dude, I was writing journals about how I thought I was gonna be the smartest person in the world. I was an unbelievably fucking arrogant teenager, like literal fucking anime villain wannabe. Dude, if I could have had those thoughts broadcast to the world, it would be so fucking cringe. Like, you, like these kids today don't realize how lucky our generation is, is that like Zanga's and live journals and shit, that shit doesn't exist anymore because if that yep. shit got lit, it would be so fucking cringe. So I, in some ways, I see, yeah, I do see like reflections of like my, my younger version of myself and some of these people too. So it's interesting to see how they grow and change. And like, if I can provide like a little push along the way, it's always, uh, I, yeah, it's always I, I, interesting. I don't disagree with you. My, mm-hmm. my, my issue is the fact that, you know, she bring her on stream and y'all start dissecting what she's saying. You're getting heated and upset about some of the stuff or how she's saying it. And I'm like, bruh, she's confused. She's told you she's confused. No. I think uh, that confusion is okay, and it's okay to be thinking and, and, and you know working on stuff. The things that I start to get frustrated about are when I feel like they're starting to get ag- aggressive towards me, because there's no amount of her personal confusion should make her say like, oh, I think you're bad faith and you're streaming to me. That's not true. I'm absolutely not. I'm very charitable. And when those types of like messages start coming out, well, then I'm going to start to get upset. Yeah. You start to get upset. Why? 
be, because now she's mischaracterizing me. And that has nothing to do with her own personal confusion. That just has to do with like an emotional frustration of being attacked by audiences and stuff. That's what's going to like set me off is when it gets personal towards me and, not, and not, no longer about her. Is that because she's your friend or is that because she's putting bad things about you on the internet, which everyone does about you? So is it because she's no, your friend? No, it's because she's making a super ultra bad analysis. She's saying that like, oh, you are being very uncharitable towards me when no, I'm being ultra charitable towards you. And the fact that you're mixing those up is really frustrating because my community rails me for being too charitable towards you. And now you're railing me for not being charitable enough. And I'm not going to take it from both ends like that. That's going to drive me fucking crazy. I just don't understand how she can have the defense of she's confused. She doesn't think things through. She hasn't really thought her political opinions or she doesn't think before she speaks at the well, same that's, time. That's more convenient to do it that way. If you don't answer, you're just never kind of always uh, not on the hook. You're like, oh, yeah, I haven't thought about that. And it's easy. It's a lot harder to be like, oh, I thought this was good and I was wrong. You have to take accountability for it. So you think she's saying that stuff to escape accountability and she has thought about it? She's just lost? I think partially it's accountability, but I think it's also, um, I think there's also like a, a huge like shade of truth towards it, right? Like these online communities are like hardcore, like fuck your throat if you're minorly incorrect about things. Even my community does it to me. Like I couldn't imagine, and I think a lot of these people don't even know what normal people think. Like if you brought on a normie and asked them about like trans people, they'd probably be, you mean hermaphrodites? You mean cross -trip? Like they wouldn't even know the difference. The average person, even in the United States today, probably wouldn't. And the audience would eviscerate those people. So it is a really rough community to step into and try to figure your thoughts out because you're gonna get hardcore judged by everybody over it. Yep. Yep. Are Not we... easy being cheesy. You know who said that? Who Chester, said that, Dan? Chester Cheetah. I don't even know who the, the fuck greatest that is, philosopher. What? You don't know who Chester Cheetah? I'm confused. Isn't that the Isn't that the Cheeto? Guy? Yes, the Cheeto guy. He's the cat, right? Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so, one. so 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 the, 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 okay okay okay. I'm actually curious, and maybe I'm 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 going off a little. Maybe you, I'm. When you say you're too. super curious, so. Yeah. Ignoring what Dan just said. If somebody's mental faculties are compromised and they come to you and they want to start having debates and you know that the reason why they're posting or saying all this crazy stuff is because they're mentally compromised, okay? And you're like, I'm not going to have this person on. That's a take I would probably agree with in a lot of situations. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone says they're too young and too fucking stupid or too unable to think things through, and that's why we shouldn't take them seriously, but you still bring them out. You don't feel like there's something there that's wrong? No, I don't think so. As long as people aren't like too harsh on her for it. Um, yeah, I think it's interesting. And I think I'm a, I think that I would say that I'm obviously I jerk myself up, but I think I'm a good person to like have those conversations with because I think I'm one of the few people on this fucking planet that can have a conversation with somebody that is undecided or that I disagree with, or I can just be like a really neutral sounding board. Like I can test and probe your ideas a bit. We can have a conversation about it, but I'm not going to jump down your fucking throat when you say something that I, you know, I probably disagree with personally. And Lars has a ton of shit that I disagree with. But I think it's pretty hard to find people like me that could be both critical, but also like kind and patient at the same time. Most people that are going to be critical are going to jump down your throat. Most people that are kind and patient are going to simp like motherfuckers and not give you any, you know, critical feedback at all. Um, Abba, can I ask, are you getting the vibe from Lav that she, she's like, you're almost, you're giving her an out, but she doesn't want to take the out, which I, she wants it both ways. She wants to be young and figuring it out. And she wants to be considered an equal amongst these, in these conversations. Speak of the devil. Hi, Lav. I'm trying to figure Hello. out, like, just if Abba can answer the question, like, I'm just curious, like, do you, I, I understand where you're coming from as well. Well, I guess Lav now has to answer the question because she's fucking here. I don't know. It, uh -oh. Just to summarize, they're just trying to figure out if you're like uh, super manipulative and just trying to do whatever is best I, for you. I, I'm not trying to figure that out. I, I, I oh, don't you care. Know. It, oh, gotcha. I, I already give young people like less opportunities in these conversations because I already know they're operating by limited experience. But if they self-describe themselves as confused people who don't think, then I'm just like, why are we even listening? Like, let's just let, mm. let, let them go somewhere else and not think and not have serious political discussions about like, well, what do you think well, about this, Lav? Well, here. Well, what do you think about, like, Sneeko? Well, Sneeko actually claims that he's thinking things through. So I'm fine with people going at it. Me, personally, it gave me exhausting and repetitive. So I, I well, yeah, but people. I mean, like, so for that, like, I would say that Sneeko does worse than Lab. Because at least at the end of the day, Lab is like, oh, fuck. Like, you know, yeah, maybe I'm dumb and maybe I'm not thinking this through. And maybe I'm too aggressive. And I was like, at least she'll admit it. Even if I feel like it might be, like, kind of a half cope. But, like, Sneeko wouldn't say that at all. Sneeko's gonna be like, no, oh, I've broken out. I've got, I figured it all out. I'm out of the Matrix. You guys are the bots, right? Like, I don't think I've ever had a conversation or heard Lab say, like, oh, you're a bot. You're not thinking of this. If she said that to me, I would lose I, my I, fucking mind. He, 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 here's the difference yeah if you I'd go at sneeko before if yeah. you go at sneeko and and he feels some type of way and you feel some type of way what we won't fall back on is well uh i didn't think or 
uh, I'm confused or I'm rushing into the fast. He's going to just say, this is what I believe. And then you guys can have a debate on the grounds that he's a full grown adult who's going to take accountability for the thoughts that he has. Even if they're stupid, even if they're based in the fact that he's too young to understand. So at least he's holding accountability for whatever he's thinking. If live is saying I'm compromised in some kind of way, I need attention or whatever, whatever the fuck it is that she's saying, that what? It's compelling her to do this stuff. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wait, then there's wait, no wait. point of having these discussions because even if you do prove her wrong, well, then she says, I'm confused, and then you leave it at that. And then I guess if- I would rather – there's um there's a saying, and I'm not going to be able to remember it, but there's a saying where it's like um, – uh, ignorance is not the most intelligent or ignorance is not the biggest Wait. danger. It's like false intelligence. Like there's like somebody that doesn't know something or something that's ignorant about something is that's a whatever thing. But the scary thing is when somebody thinks they know something that's way more, in my opinion, frustrating to deal with. So even somebody that's like, oh, okay, well, you know, I don't know this or I, you know, I'm changing my mind or I'm kind of dumb on this particular topic or whatever. I think I find that person to like live is less frustrating to deal with than somebody like Sneeko who you're saying, well, he takes full accountability. Yeah, but he's super fucking wrong and super fucking incorrect. I don't care. I don't won't care. even acknowledge that. I don't care whether yeah. it's frustrating or not. The question mm-hmm. is whether or not having these conversations even has a point. If you're talking about the fact that it's frustrating for you, I imagine it probably is frustrating. But at least Sneeko owns what he believes, and then he sticks by it and doesn't hide behind either his age or his confusion. Or and that's I, I, oh, hold, hold, hold on. Hold, actually, you know, let me rephrase something. I said yeah. hide as if what you're saying is not true. You may uh-huh. actually be feeling these things. Okay, so I didn't mean uh-huh. to invalidate that. But I think those conversations at least make more sense to me than speaking to somebody who really doesn't mm-hmm. actually feel confident yeah, I, I, I understand what you're saying articulate. i yeah. understand what you're saying but i would personally prefer and also when you say what's the point we can have different conversations different reasons for having different conversations too like i'm not telling you that like you need to talk to these people the same way i do right i understand we all kind of talk to people for different reasons but like i would be a happier man i would prefer it if sneeko took like the lav route and was like oh yeah um you know i actually don't know a lot of this like maybe i am making like big uh false assumptions and i am kind of confused if sneeko said that i would consider that to be a dramatic improvement over where he's at now even if it might i guess feel worse to you in a conversation but oh okay, yeah I, I agree i agree on that point okay yeah i agree that it probably would be better but i think in regards to having conversations <laughs> online it's about political debate uh, I don't think there's a point to having those conversations with Lav in any form. She's well, yeah, but confused. I think Lav's, to, to be clear, Wait. the conversations that Lav has on here with me aren't usually like, I'm here to debate politics with you. Most of them, if they, if it is a political topic, it's usually relating to her self-development or her self-discovery, generally. It's like a personal topic for her, yes, not just like, like I'm here to debate about like, or about feminism yeah, yeah. or yeah. about gender. Yeah, which are things that I actually do know about, thank you very much. I don't like the characterization that I'm just like a retard coming in because I'm certainly not. Um, I think that's really fucking weird and you're acting as if like I like yeah yeah that's like an extremely strange characterization of me I think that the wait, past who, couple wait who wait hold on who are you talking about so we can be clear Abba. okay I think that I think that the past couple drama streams I think I struggle uh interpersonally with like the relationship with Steve I think that the last couple of streams have been like drama right but I think the ones where we were talking about like feminism and gender actually were like pretty cool conversations that I think were like fun to have. Um, and uh, yeah, like I think that I added a lot in the sex work conversation because I'm a sex worker who's also extremely critical of sex work. Like I think that that's like very nice to have. I think that that's good to platform. I think that that's good to pay attention to. I don't understand why you're acting like I'm just like this like useless retard. Uh, the reason why I'm acting like you're a useless retard is because of the fact that when you speak on these topics, you speak so assuredly and then, you know, you're pretty, you know, you're, you're, you're pretty, you're pretty on the edge of being extremely disrespectful. Uh, but beyond that, after you're called out on it, then your fallback is I was confused or I haven't thought these things through or I was being hypocritical or whatever. And I'm just like, bruh, if you're not even going to own this stuff. You'd rather me not acknowledge that I have shortcomings? I would rather you not have conversations if you don't think. I do think. I, I, what do you mean? I still stand by 90% of what I said about sex work. I could have, I could have definitely been nicer when debating it. Like that, that's the big deal is that like, I was extremely like uncharitable to people like Madame Genevieve. I came in too aggressively, but I think all of my points are still incredibly apt. If you don't say so yourself. Uh, just to be clear, as a real chair, quick, myself. quick thing. What, what, I, I the, think the, that, what Abba's what? frustration is, was the thing that I said before, is that like, Abba's just upset that for you, it sounds like you're taking accountability by saying, I don't know. But for Abba, it feels like that's a way of avoiding accountability by making extreme statements and then saying, I don't know. That's like the sure, uh, right Sure, here. but do you know how inhuman it is for a person to, in the middle of a conversation, be like, oh my God, you're so right. I'm so wrong. I'm going to fuck. I'm like, that's not normal. 
Left, don't don't let them mot and bail you. Abba said you don't think when you talk. That's what you're responding to. Don't let Steven slip in some fucking charitable sounding bullshit that you can respond to instead. True. <laughs> I think I do I do think before I, I speak um most of the time. <laughs> Oh yeah, look, oh, that is literally doing it to herself. Oh, like, oh, God, listen, I'm not upset. I'm not upset. Keep, carry on having these conversations. Do whatever you please. I, I just think <laughs> when I listen to you, I don't understand where you stand. I don't understand why you don't stand where you stand yeah. anymore. No, I you, just, no, we, I, I, you, you no, are you are up, like no, soup shut up, when it comes you. to these conversations. No, shut up. Thank you. So no, I, I just want to be upset. Definitely, we definitely have different thought patterns. What did you just say to me? Did you just tell me to shut up? Yeah, not, I did. I think that we have different polite. thought patterns. If you would have added the B word, I honestly would have been upset. I'm not gonna lie. Well, Stop. yeah, I, I can I can see that about you. You're very sensitive I, and emotional. Um, but oh, I think using Lab, that as an insult. Lav, why? Lav, why? That wasn't an Lab, insult. Why? Why? Abba's so nice. Why? He's so well, nice. Abba, no, hold on. Why? Abba came in a little heated towards her. Abba's giving Abba's her not nice. Abba's not nice. Wait, don't Abba's don't really, run that, cover for ever. Stop Abba's running interference for him. Wait, wait, you're you're in a. You guys are in like a four v one, and and no no one will. Wait, it's not a four v one. It absolutely is, and you won't even let Lev finish her response to Abba saying she doesn't think when she talks. Imagine if someone said that to Steven. No, no, Abba is Well, but that, hold on, that's because at the end of conversations, I don't ever use the pro- the, Okay, oof, we gotta back up through so many layers, so many pages, okay? The problem that Abba has is that after Lev seems to be caught out on something, one of the, he's, one of the reasons she gives feels like an excuse or defense to him, where she's saying, oh, well, I haven't thought about this enough, or oh, like I'm young, or blah, blah, blah. Abba's saying that feels like an excuse. And if you were to say to like Lav, like, oh, well, it feels like you're kind of dumb, you don't understand what you're saying, he's saying that he's saying that because of those things that she says. If you were to say to Destiny, oh, Destiny's really stupid, or he's dumb because he doesn't think, well, I'm not giving that same excuse. Well, sometimes I'm dumb and I just don't think about things. So it'd be different if you applied it to me than if you applied it to Lav. I, All right, when the, people, yeah. some, think, some people say things. I think, I think it's acceptable for, for people to come on and say that, like, straight up that they are not fully decided on something, um, especially somebody like Lab who is going through a change, right? Um, so. People say things novelty that are in, wrong. I think part of the novelty in my position is that I am in real time finding my own place in sex work with all the criticisms that I have. I think that that's really no, I, valuable. I think that's true of everybody, but I think we all have to... Um deal with it when we say something that we, we realized was wrong and when we thought we were right. And then, so if you want to listen to a streamer who is going to say, yeah, I was wrong and I was emotional, I was 24 or whatever, and explain why, listen to Lab. If you want to listen to somebody who's going to dig their heels in, then listen to ABBA. But like, they're, they're both, there's no, there's not really like a good way out of that situation. So just different philosophies. ABBA, if you want to be that person, you can be that person and you also never have to listen to me. No one is forcing you to. So you're it doesn't absolutely make correct. It so it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense that you're complaining about it. I'm not complaining. I was just making the no, point. No, you are. Best. Well, no complaining. Could I, like, could, I, could, I, could, I, could I could I get to speak or do I need to tell you to shut up? Oh, here we go. Okay. I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure. So what I was trying to tell Destiny was that here he is having constant conversations where he's getting heated. And I just thought it was very bizarre to me that you often have this position where I don't know what I'm thinking or I'm confused about my thoughts or how I haven't thought these things through as a bit of a cop out to these conversations. To me, that's not me being like, oh, my God, can you stop bringing this on? I'm just like, confused. Destiny. like, why are you getting mad about this? She, she's told you she doesn't think through what she says a lot of the time. So I don't know. I, I don't find those kind of conversations. Using it, you're me. using I, what I think is a strength of mine to discredit me in your worldview, which is a problem. I mean, you can see it as a strength. I, I personally don't, but that's fine. We no, exactly. Support. This is just I. So yep. if you value being steadfast, even if you're wrong, that's your deal, and I don't agree with it either. No, 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 to, no, no, no. I'm never that's going to talk to Stephen and be like, I don't know, he's really stubborn. Do you think it's like you're not going to change his mind? Why? Do that's you even that's talk not to what him? I value. What I value is that people. No, that actually... is what you value because that's literally the okay. inverse All right. of what you're I'm, telling I'm gonna, Stephen about. I'm gonna, me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you to shut up just so I can get my point in. Okay? <laughs> yeah, it makes yes. sense. Yes. So. What I value is that people who are going to have strong opinions the way that you had about some of these conversations have actually taken the time to think things through. And then instead, when you have such a strong opinion, you're so cavalier about the shit that you're saying. And I have, you and I was still adaptable and movable when given new information. That is a strength. Lev, I think you should reject the premise that your character is on trial and that it's acceptable for ABBA to come in and just start criticizing you. I think even uh, by well, responding to his criticisms, it's, it, it's a weird situation where it's just like everybody who has an opinion on whether Lav is, is full of shit should just come in and start talking about it. I don't think I don't think that was Abba's 
initial position. I think I just wanted to know why I was pursuing those conversations. Probably because they're a bit different than the other types no, of No, but like, he was also, political. but also he used that as a way to like posture himself above me. Which no, I don't. Huh? No, he said he said no. no. He said she doesn't think before she speaks. But that's Dan, and then no, he Dan, Dan, a Dan, Dan, called her, Dan called her a snake. Abbas, uh, yeah, Abbas said the reason I'm speaking to you like, like the Abbas conversation and, and and Dan's conversation were totally separate. You can't compare them. It two doesn't matter. It's a, well, it does uh, matter. They're totally. You're just compared them. They're totally different conversations. No, you you and Lav are having some kind of conflict where you guys are talking about something that occurred between the two of you. Lav said something Ooh. on my stream that you are you believe she you're trying to hold her feet to the fire and make her own it. You believe she's trying to escape responsibility and have it both ways. That's totally fine. But the the idea that all of uh, your buddies here are going to come in and start at it. It's like, well, Lav, what about this? What about this? I think you don't speak. I think you're a snake. It's just, I, 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 Lav, I advise you to not accept, ex don't accept the terms of the conversation, even if you might win. Well, who else joined? <laughs> no. Hi, Sherry. Just... Ah, Sherry. Hello. How's it going? I just... I was I was sitting in the back row. I wanted. Hey man, I'm, listen, I'm I'm gonna just head out because I got some stretching to do. So I'm gonna leave you. Well, Abba, this you know you can use your insight. Bye, Abba. You can stretch at the PC. Uh, Hi, Cherry. Do you have any thoughts? <laughs> any big thoughts? Um, I just I'm I'm just catching up. What's going on? Well, we're all just hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> totally relaxed. Yeah. We've actually been singing Kumbaya, and uh, you know it's been going great. Hmm. 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 How you feel, uh, Cherry? How you feeling right now? <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know how I'm feeling. Like, I'm still, I'm still feeling like shit. Why? What happened? What's, what's going on? Oh damn. Uh, <laughs> I, I fucked up bigly mm -hmm. last week, and okay. um, just trying to figure out how to go back to being a normal person that didn't fuck up bigly. Listen, everyone makes mistakes. You just kind of acknowledge it and move on. That's mm -hmm. the best Except way. Except for me. Except for me. Well, you don't acknowledge it, right? Well, yeah. at least that's the perception that from people. what I do. I don't know. I've, Is it? I've been forced to acknowledge more than anyone ever fucking has in this orbit. Hold on. Oh. By a long shot. Stop. 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 Let's all stop. That was a little hyperbolic. A little bit. Okay. But I think I think that I have I people have put me to the fire a lot more than I I think that I think that it's uh it's far more frequent. Have you ever seen of... the uh, there's like a really funny image and it was on the Passion of the Christ and it has Mel Gibson sitting down next to the actor that was playing Jesus Christ right there. You ever seen that one before? I can send it to you. I it's know really what you're good. talking about. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's like you and to... Steven right now. It's a really good one. Stop. It's super funny. I just want to acknowledge I haven't watched any of your content after August 8th, so I'm really not sure, like, what fire I put you up to. Wait, how did Cherry get oh. dragged into this? Wait, what? I, I, I wasn't dragging Cherry into it. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're fine. Don't worry. Everybody's... Uh, I do I do wonder what this whole obsession with accountability is. Um, well, without acknowledging our mistakes, we can't learn from them and move on, right? We'll just We're just destined... Well, well, sure, making but, them over but, and over again. sure, but don't you think that there's a level of like personal introspection that someone does off stream? Well, you would expect that to happen, but right, yeah. but actions kind of speak to that happening or not happening. Right? I don't think so, that that's necessarily true. I think that it takes a long time to put something in action, especially if you're like me and have had, um, you know, trouble with something. It, like you can assume that I probably uh, have had more trouble than just like the past two months with asserting my feelings or my thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. So it would make sense that uh, if this is like a pattern I've had for a long time, that it would be hard to change in like two months, right? Sure, but I think it would also be expectant from people that you would still continue to get shit over it if they did not see progress and you're a public figure doing that, right? So it certainly might anyway. take a long time, but you should also have the expectation that people are going to still have these similar views of you um, as change doesn't happen because that's natural. You yeah, can't get I, out of it. So I if agree. You, and but, I think that you... that's normal and natural, but also I think that I can express how, um, like, sad it, I, how sad it is to get so much feedback uh, constantly, and then have to sift through all the real feedback, and then just people saying that I should shut the fuck up forever and die. Um, like that's that's hard for anyone to do. Do you discard feedback that you view as just being, I guess, unhelpful or or that not fitting your 
narrative of what's going on, I guess? Or no, what? not to, no, that's a complete mischaracterization. It's well, that's not why that I, it, I wasn't a mischaracterization. No. I was asking a question. Yeah, so uh, like I said, it's the ones that are like, shut the fuck up forever and die that is like mm-hmm. not actual feedback, right? Sure. So I think that I, I like reading the subreddit and I still do, even though there's a lot of bad stuff in there because I really like to sift through um, like what I could be changing to make myself more dynamic and like better at my job, essentially. Um, right. And I think that a lot of people have really good feedback and some of it, some of it is even hurtful feedback, right? Some of it is said with like, uh, like, a, a, like not, um, like some of it is very harsh and I still take it to mind, but it's the things that are like, you know, she should just shut the fuck up and, and stuff her mouth with more cock that I'm like, okay, I mean, how, how much do I, how much do I take from this? Yeah. Like those, those just get thrown out. Like, yeah, you can't so listen what, to those. Yeah, no, what is I the mean, other feedback that you think is harder to swallow, but you think has some truth behind it? Um, I think that uh, I mean, the cock feedback sounds pretty hard to swallow, but shut up. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, that was actually a really good setup. That was good. Um, I think. Uh, uh i don't know i think um i mean obviously like the personal stuff like uh you know talking about um like right now one of the t- the most upvoted things is me talking about how i struggle interpersonally with like with men mm-hmm. and that's like upvoted on the subreddit it like has like has nothing to do with anything that we've spoken about but they're like this person needs to not be online this person needs to like be locked away and get immense help where i'm like oh geez like this isn't uh like helpful at all and it feels like it's just like a shitting contest on like let's find everything that's wrong with her like witch hunt what um what happened with you like i I saw a clip i think it was on the reddit this morning of you i guess reading messages from melina and it what's happening with that whole thing right there because i haven't seen too much of your interaction I kind of, uh, you know, I was talking to her a little bit. I thought some fun stuff, but it seems like there's actually some serious stuff going on there. Like, what's happening with all that? Serious? There's well, a, I mean, there's I mean, we serious? can go find, we can find the clip. I don't know. It was just you were reading her messages. Yeah, I don't think that's serious. I think that she was having an emotional response to me having an argument with her husband. I think that's perfectly hmm. normal and natural. It hasn't become uh, like not? anything bigger. Okay. So you guys are like on the same page. Everything's fine with that then. Well, I've never spoken well, I've, to I've, her. Stop letting, stop letting him fish. Wait, I'm just curious. Wait, you were reading DMs in the on a chat mm. like publicly? No, no, not, it was DMs. No. Melina's posting messages in my chat room because she likes to make my life as difficult as possible. So, I mean, you gotta type, <laughs> honey. You gotta type. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think that that was like a. Well, a I don't. We shouldn't just call them emotional because they're they're text. You can't like you can't read that much into them right um let's see if i have the where's the link to these <laughs> they were it was uh they were plentiful okay i i wish i wouldn't have read them um, lab if you had to pick someone in this group right now that you trust the most who would it be um myself <laughs> uh i think probably max and then steven shortly after Max, do you want to answer that question? I'd love to hear your reply. Who I trust the most? Mm-hmm. I don't have an answer. Um, definitely it's between uh, Steven and Lab, but depends on trust for what. Mm-hmm. Cherry, do you have an answer? Uh, probably, probably Steven. Stardust? Um, yes, yeah, Steven. Dan, we know you're Steven, right? Uh, I suppose so. I got, I got the, uh, I got the hours in, as they say. Hmm. Steven, who well, do you certainly trust Certainly none, none of you guys. That's for goddamn sure. Jesus. What the hell? Steven, you answer. Understandable. Probably Dan, just have known him the longest. <laughs> and because I'm the most trustworthy, obviously. You're trustworthy <laughs> because if you fuck with me, I'll go to your house and, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, among fuck reason. pillow. And I want you guys to all know that no matter, no amount of bitching, whining, anything will change that fact. I'm number one. You guys need to get in line, okay? You can't buy your way in. It's only hours, all right? And we're both getting old at the same rate of time. So every hour you put in, I put in another hour. (laughs) Sorry. 
Um, yeah. Okay. Hold on. Uh... Why did you that, Brittany? <clears throat> well, a part of me um, is just gathering information. I guess I'm trying to figure out what does everyone want from their interactions online? What are we all doing here? I want to have good conversations about good ideas. You, it seems like there's some friendships that could occur, which would be awesome. Um, there's not a lot of trust in general, but there is a sense of trust. Like Max said, depends on what kind of trust, trust with what. So I'm just mm -hmm. trying to figure out like what would be the best case scenario. Like I want to give you an out laugh for a lot of the mistakes. Uh, and then I want to hold you accountable if you want to be held accountable, I guess. I don't really care. But I think people in discussions like want some sort of like baseline for what is reality. And to do that, there would be a need to hold people either accountable or push them in a direction. So I'm trying to figure out if there's too much personal shit that's getting in the way of ideas or if the ideas just aren't as interesting as the personal shit. And that's why we always end up back here. Because we're not attacking Lav for her ideas. Really, we're attacking Lav for her character and her ideas. Well, everybody, the problem, well, okay. If we want to have this conversation, we can, but there's like four different conversations going on. And mm -hmm. I think we have to be clear which one we're talking about. Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the issue. If we all started not over, but if we said, okay, we're all adults and we've all decided X, what is the X we could all decide together? Is there an, like, is there a way out of this? Or are we just going to keep, like, do you know what I'm saying? What's the solution? Is there a solution? Is there even a problem? Well, yeah. What's, is, what's the problem? Mm. Is there Shut a problem? Up. Does anyone feel like there's a problem right now? Laugh? Terry? Max? Um. Well, everybody probably has different problems for different reasons right now, right? I got a big problem. Yeah, I'm here to confront Steven, but I can't. Yeah, we've all uh, got problems. So, Brittany, you don't have any problem, problem here. I think you're just an observer. Problem. Jerry's got a problem that she made a big mistake recently, and she probably feels pretty bad about it. it sounds like she's working on overcoming it. Dan's only problem here is trying to start more drama. I don't have any problems. <laughs> I'm just here kind of chilling with everybody. Lab's got a problem that my community's shitting on her, and she feels like she's not being taken seriously by anybody. Mr. Girl's no, got... that's not it. Okay, don't care. Mr. Girl's got problems and <laughs> that um, obviously that related to my and the word personality that you don't have. That wasn't an avoidant personality. I've already engaged with you for like 10 fucking hours over the past two days. I don't need to do it again. And then Stardust obviously has um, issues related to her and Max's friendship deteriorating. And now she's in here. So we've all, everybody's got problems. But they're all, all of these things and are I kind of like up. for different and reasons. And I also fucked up as well. Sure, and she fucked up as well, yeah. So everybody's here for like different reasons. <laughs> Steven, do you see how... Uh, it could be damaging to my view of you being like very charitable or like uh, how I can like trust you or maintain a friendship with you when you say that like you don't care because you've heard it enough about my feelings. No, what I'm saying is that like if we have another discussion over what your problems are, it's going to be another 45 minute conversation. I don't know if I want to head in that direction right now. If that makes you feel like you don't trust me or whatever, that's totally fine. Okay. I also feel like you not caring about my feelings does another thing to our relationship though if and you I feel think... like that's an indication of me not caring about your feelings then we were never going to work as friends anyway because i've shown above and beyond consideration for your feelings if that one line in the middle of a conversation with nine people was enough to turn you off from it then that's totally fine with me as well, well no i'm not i'm not go i'm not going from extreme to extreme i'm just i'm trying to let you know like when when where when i go there when i follow my train of thought out of like the hurt that i feel when i feel invalidated by you I, like that's where i go it's like you're sure, setting up all broadly, these markers. Broadly, all I was saying was that like part of your problem is that you feel like people aren't taking you seriously. Part of that is that feeling they're not, they're not taking the things you're saying seriously. They're well, not taking you seriously at 24. They're calling you retarded or whatever. I think that's an okay summary of like your problems. It's not like an in-depth like 24-page paragraph or page essay about like why you feel bad. But it was just a quick summary over things. No? Uh, no. I would um, – I think that that's like maybe adjacent to it. But oh. I, I'd say that um, – I, I would not say that that is it. Okay, well. All right, let's... listen. I, no, I don't... stop. Let her go ahead. Tell us what your problem is. Go ahead, then. Explain for the class. Well, yeah. I think it. I think it ties into like what Max is going to say, and I'm. I think that he's thought about it more than I have, um, because I try not to think about this too much. Uh, <laughs> but he's uh, thought about your problem more. No, because I have a very similar problem uh, uh, to Max. Um, I, th about... I think we the the battleground of the problem is different, but. It, yeah, my problem with the subreddit or the way it's moderated is that it feels like it's part of a system of discrediting me and other uh, orbiters making us look bad. Um, and that, uh, not, not intentionally, but it, that 
it feels like um, you run into like a brick wall at a certain point. And I feel like Lav is saying something similar, but it's more uh, playing out in um, these conversations. Mostly, like, especially because I think um, I, like, Steve, like, Steven, I think that uh, it's hard. Like, I, I care about the subreddit, obvious, obviously, because it, like, hurts my feelings, but also I don't have to read it. But then when in real time, uh, you're, like, you're trying to make me look like young dumb stupid and like crazy and abusive like a lot of in our conversation yesterday you said that i was like gaslighting you and so now it's been like now everyone on your subreddit was like yeah she was gaslighting him like when you were asking me to be more careful about what like my implications of you and then you could just like completely shit on me and then not realize how that was going to affect how your audience treated me is like very strange Okay, um, I'm respond. Oh, go ahead. And I and I whereas I don't think that you have full responsibility for that. I would just like you to be more aware of it. Okay. Because I I don't I'm think that you need to do anything vastly different, but I think that you could probably be a little more careful with my feelings and the control over you that you have over my reputation. But I think that today you have been very sweet to me, so I think that I think that you probably acknowledge that you could do better also in your own time. So um, I think that we're off to a good start, but I just wanted to correct. I just wanted to correct you. Have you been corrected, Stephen? Ah, okay. Am I clear to talk? <laughs> okay. When I yeah. mention you being young, dumb, and crazy or thing like that, that's not a way of discrediting what you're saying. It's a way of explaining away a lot of the stuff you say that is highly contradictory and ultra irrational okay so the there's either two ways that i could approach what you're saying i could either say like she's young she's figuring things out it's like part of like going through huge life changes it's part of being a young person that's all good or i can say um her age actually isn't an excuse she's an absolute fucking moron i can't believe she's saying the stuff that's as stupid as she's saying there, there's only two branching paths that can go now or she's it might a snake. sound um, yeah. No, I don't think it's a snake. Or, it might sound like I'm I'm insulting you. You said I was manipulating. I, I am going to finish. You talked so much, and I wrote it down, and I was so patient letting okay, you finish sorry. each and every single one of your addendums. Okay, let me just let me think. Okay, so when I'm dealing with you as a person, okay, the way that I treat you is is you're a young person going through a highly transitionary stage in your life, and you're trying to figure out like what the new rules of your life are because yeah. you lived by a prior set of rules, and obviously those didn't serve you well. Either something traumatic happened, or over time you realize this fucking sucks and now you're trying to figure out like well what is the new rule book going over what can i corporate yes. etc etc that's why yes. you that's a young person's journey which is fine there's nothing wrong with that and i said that a million fucking times the reason mm -hmm. why i talk to you is because it's interesting listening to this blah 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 it's the same reason i talk to sneeko now people are more harsh on you than sneeko for a variety of reasons mostly because you're a woman but um it, it's it's I, I have these types of conversations with people i have these types of conversations with yes. people and it's just it, it is what it is okay so when i call you young or i say you're going through things not because i'm trying to discredit your ideas if anything oh. i'm externalizing like some of the blame on some of what you're saying on the fact that you're young and you're transitioning. Number one, okay? Number two, okay? When I said that you were gaslighting, the, um, I'm trying to remember specifically what I said in regards to this was your, when you say things, they have undeniable connotations such that if you were to pull an audience, 99 plus percent of them would say like, oh, she's obviously being highly critical of him. She's obviously implying this about him here. And then for you to come on in front of me, and then to do this and say, I don't know how you could think that is feels incredibly manipulative to me. Maybe it's not intentional, uh -oh. but the feeling is that of incredible manipulation. Okay. That I can listen to something and I know 99% of people are gonna hear it. And it's like, oh, obviously she's saying Steven is like a social retard that he can't be considered for feelings. Obviously she's saying that. And then for you to come in front of me like, oh no, I, I didn't mean that at all. That's not even close. Feels incredibly manipulative. So that's why I use the term gas study there. Okay. When you say control over my reputation, I mean like to some extent that is true, but like I try really hard in our conversations to present what you're saying in the most positive way. I try to steal man what you're saying. Like you don't have to come onto my platform. I'm not sniping stuff that you do. Like I'm never being like, well, we're gonna watch this lav vod today where she was a total dumb fuck and bury this bitch. Like, I've never done anything like that ever. You come onto my stream when I've invited you or when you've invited yourself and that's totally fine and I enjoy that, that's fun for me. So, so the whole the phrase of like control over my reputation sounds a little weird there, but okay. Sure. Um, and then when you say today, I'm finished. I'm gonna, if you're gonna talk for a long 
long time. Okay, I'm going to respond for go. a long time. Okay? okay. And then you said, today you've been sweet to me, so you've acknowledged privately you can do better. This is how I've always treated you. The only exception was yesterday or the day before, whatever the fuck I called you a dumb bitch or last week or whatever, was when I was trying to explain stuff and you kept interrupting me over and over and over and over and over again while also being ultra aggressive to every other person in the call. And then when I started to explain something that wasn't even controversial and you were cutting me off in the middle of it, I lost my fucking mind because it's easily the most triggering thing you could ever possibly do to a person. Okay? But aside from that, I've always treated you like pretty respectfully, pretty kindly. I talk to you privately, talk to you privately. I'm generally pretty nice to you. Okay. That was all. Okay. I think that's true. Um, I I also think that it would have been nice. You think what's true? I, uh, that, w well, what I. What about what he just said is true? Like, I think that um, I, like, triggered him and that he had, like, an emotional response. Okay, that's, that's true. That's, un that's inarguably true. But is it also true that you s s are extremely irrational? Um, no, I don't think so. Is it true that you're either a moron or that you're, you're, or you're young and it's one or the other? Or like basically that you, you, for some reason you can't think and it's one of these two choices? Uh, no, I think that I can think. Okay, think I'm just saying before you fucking agree <laughs> I, to it, but like you sure. said, you said I feel discredited and then he gave a long explanation as to why you basically can't um, think why your ideas and things you say don't have value or merit. And then you're like, yeah, I agree. So I just like, I don't know, oh, be I careful didn't about what you're agreeing I, I didn't to. agree with that. There, I didn't take notes okay. and there was, a, there was a lot there. Um, so I, I didn't agree with that. But I, I still think like uh, in response to you having like control over my reputation and I understand like having an emotional response to me. And honestly, I would have felt a lot better about you calling me like a stupid bitch, whatever, if you would have been like, fuck stream maybe i shouldn't have done that she really pissed me off but i probably shouldn't have called her that and, i will uh, never say that about you while you're also insulting other people incredibly rigid like uh hardcore like when you're going off on cherry i'm not gonna feel bad about it. i still don't like i'm not gonna feel bad about it. like i'm sorry but like you can't you can't bring that type of aggressive energy and then get that upset when somebody like matches sure it. but That's but unfair. but i think that i think that you should also see the nuance because like if you've looked at your <clears throat> if you looked at your chat after that or if you looked at your subreddit after that it was like pages and pages of people just repeating dumb bitch dumb bitch dumb bitch dumb bitch which is like okay at some point it's like yeah you're allowed to respond that way to me but when it j then just becomes an echo chamber of like everyone who wants to like uh like you know in group signal about hating me that just becomes like a little masturbatory and i don't think that you should allow something like that um i mean everybody already hates you on subreddit so like i don't think that changed things much but well, well, I definitely I, I think saw there's a an, I, I Lav calling Cherry a dumb bitch does not have the same effect as you calling Lav a dumb bitch because you also have true. way, way oh. more power than her. So uh, I don't saying... care. It, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I don't care. Um, if somebody is going to come on to my that's stream, whole, that's and my whole problem. No, 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 no. Hold on. If you think you care about that, then you're engaging in a social dynamic that is unsustainable and is is never going to be agreed to by anybody else in any other circumstance ever. If you want to come and engage on my platform, you're totally welcome to do so. But I'm not going to let you get away with markedly worse behavior because you're a smaller person. In the way earlier that you said that I tried to discredit Lav by calling her irrational, you're trying to to baby her by saying she's a smaller streamer. So of course she can act in that way. No, she's just a small not... streamer. Yeah, that is exactly what you said. Now, if you want to restate what you said, I'm, that's fine. No, hold on. No, 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 no. Saying, you can't just say no, you didn't say that. You exactly said, let I'm, me repeat verbatim. You said, Destiny, okay. when you call Lav this name, it is a much different effect than when Lav calls Cherry that name. You're arguing yes. for a different type of treatment because of the size or reputation of the yes. two figures. And I'm telling you that that's that is what, something I'm that not I'm babying never Lav. I'm telling, you, I'm telling you that I think you're abdicating your responsibility. <clears throat> so Lav doesn't have that responsibility? Why? Lav does not have a res because you are in charge of the community. That they're all your fans. It's playing to a much larger audience of your fans than anybody else's. It doesn't matter. Lav is still contributing well, I, to that community oh, and that conversation the same is, way that I am. She is. She is. But there's a different effect when you call someone a dumb bitch. It has a way different effect on the person you're saying it to than it does when she says it. It's like you're you're like Superman and you're like you're fighting a normal We're person not, and you're, you yeah, think but, the same rules should apply to you. But I don't no, agree. But why? We're not arguing necessarily. Why. Is it because he has more Why? subscribers, or because he's a man? Because he's smarter than his, her? Why? It's, it's his. It's his platform. So it's his. I don't platform think Steven's smarter than Lav. I just don't understand <laughs> why. Someone... I don't think Lav's smarter than Steven. I just don't. I'm not. I don't think. I don't. I don't. I don't. Agree, I don't agree to the narrative that Lav is dumb. Okay. Okay, we're I all think, dumb. I think Steven like... and Lav are both very intelligent people. I, okay, that's because Max is going to have some incredibly esoteric version. Uh, uh, no, it's not esoteric. It's not esoteric. It's okay, wait. Do you not. think that she's smarter than? 
Do you think okay, that she's going to be it, smarter when she's 30 years old than she is now? Or would you not say smarter? I would hope so. You are so. her. Okay. No, no, I, I need to answer that question so that everybody, so that everybody in the audience can hear that using a ridiculous definition of dumb and stupid and, and intelligent so we can move on from that. So I'll ask you a very pointed question. Is Lav going to be smarter uh, at 30 than she is at 24? Lav is going to be smarter at 30. Uh, I don't know. She'll be wiser. I don't know if she'll okay, be smarter. So, okay, I just wanted to get it out there then that you're like totally randomly using words. But okay, go for it. Now make your point. I'm not randomly using words. I'm saying that if I think if you both took an IQ test, I think maybe you would score similarly. No one here is talking think, about IQ tests. And she's got Ashkenazi fucking Jewish blood, so it's not yeah. fair to compare us. Okay? So yeah. I'm working on some Hispanic yeah. shit, okay? I'm literally debuffed so, at birth. I'm Mexican. Okay. I'm half Mexican. So the, what it, Okay, whatever Brittany said meant when she said smart. I assume she meant smart at navigating these types of conversations and interactions. This is the kind no, of she probably means intelligent here. in terms of like having figured life out in well, general. Well, it sounds to me, Max, okay. and I could be wrong, but it sounds like you're trying to make the argument that Abbo is trying to make but from the other perspective, that Steven's positioning no. weight puts Lav at a disadvantage, so he has to act accordingly so Lav doesn't get thrown under the bus. But again, that puts the responsibility on who? Steven, taking the responsibility away no, from who? That's no, that's not, I mean, that's not what I'm saying. Okay. Steven, in some ways, is our boss. Boss. What the fuck? Yeah. He, Speak for yourself. He, what the no, fuck? He can't okay. call me shit. Steven is our boss, and he's also our friend, but he's our boss. And that creates a lot of weird social dynamics because he's not just the boss of when you can come on his stream and make money and grow your platform. He's the boss of you that way. But he's also in charge of the community's narrative about you. He controls what people think of you to a large degree. So if you're, if you're having a conversation with Steven offline and he calls you a dumb bitch and you call him a dumb bitch, then yeah, blows are exchanged, nothing happens. But it's like the fucking president calling you a dumb bitch. When he calls you a dumb bitch on stream, the community of people, this very large community who are very uh, attached to Steven and his beliefs and the way he sees things, it, it changes your, your public existence when he says something like that. Do you think, it just do doesn't you think have Steven that effect. is so, stupid? No, oh I think Steven. So no, I, I'm not calling. You, I'm not calling anybody argue, stupid or smart. I'm. I'm. Okay, I'm only. I'm only re responding him, to people calling Lav stupid. But when you argue against him and you haven't convinced him, do you think that that's his fault or do you think it's your what? fault? Anyway, I. I, no, think I don't. I don't think. I don't think what? it's. I don't think it's anybody's fault. I'm saying that because I think Steven. You're, you're acting I think, like I think his Steven does not acknowledge. The creator think, is like his fault. Not a lot the creator of like, a lot of the public debate him. I mean, a lot of the public controversy early, around right? a lot of the public controversy around Stephen is people telling him that he's not responsible. I think this is pretty a pretty obvious through line of people saying you shouldn't say this, you shouldn't talk to this person, you shouldn't talk this way, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, and him saying I don't I don't fucking do you, care, fuck you, go. I'm, I'm not I'm not here to be, to be responsible. A lot of people, or can this just be your criticism? It's not, um, I don't, I reject your question because you're asking me if I'm, I'm not saying things because I need them to be true. This is actually what I think. Dude, I, I can give examples, but I feel like we are, I don't, it feels like a fake question. So I, let's just assume that if you don't okay. think that I, a I'm lot of people have told Stephen he's you're... irresponsible, then, then that's fine. If you don't think that, then I'm just a crazy person. I think that um, part of Stephen's appeal is that he is not responsible. I think people like that about him. People like that he will have chicken and waffles with Fuentes, and then I play the, the opposite character saying, oh, like shaking my finger, you shouldn't be doing this. I think people like that he will defend saying the N-word. I think people will like that he'll make the comments about the dipshit protesters. People like watching him fly off the handle, watching him do things that other creators would call irresponsible. And he usually has uh, a defense for it and an explanation that is um, consistent with his views on this. However, I... I think that um, I'm asking him to be more responsible now with this topic. I think that he is irresponsible when he talks to you like you're equals and um, attacks you as you would an equal when you're not. So why, in what way aren't they equals? That's where I'm, talk to me like I'm stupid. I don't get it. Are they either both, are the, that's what I'm saying. Are they not it's the, the same? Or are they the same? It's a, no. So it's in the eyes of like the audience who in sees the system. Steven as someone who is like the person that they watch on stream every day. And we are like orbiters for like you a reason. Yeah, I don't have, I don't, I don't have a... that much sway necessarily over their opinions. About no, not, them. not, you're you not, do. you're that not, whole, you're not uh, wholly oh. responsible. I don't think no, no, it is it, Like if that was the case, you. Lav, my community was shitting you relentlessly when I was unbelievably charitable to you for a long time. Mm, uh, I, don't, I, don't think, I, I don't think, I don't think you, don't think you and I think, I think this gets to the heart of what Cherry was asking and that like, it seems like if I have a negative reaction to you, everything negative on the sub all of a sudden becomes my responsibility when it couldn't have been anything that you could have possibly said. Okay, no, your, your, I, subs, your sub's current policy is to ban fans of mine. 
So yeah, but that's no... it's an extra insane fucking shit that just happened. <laughs> okay, that's fine. But I'm just saying it's a it's an it's a because I ratcheted up tension. It has I I believe no, it it's because specifically this... because you declared a war on the subreddit and people that's, started yes. going crazy. I'm supposing, but there's I don't know if I've ever banned the fans of anybody else on my subreddit before. Like this just particular well, scenario got like really weird. That's that's fine, but I'm I, to me it just seems like a logical extension of what was already happening. I'm glad it's now out in the open, but it has felt for to me for a long time of you you get to reframe in the argument. There's a there you get to talk whenever you want. Like there's a there's an assumption on a stream with you that when when Stephen has something to say, everybody else should shut up because it's your stream, and we're and we're we're guests in your house. Then after you leave, after we leave, you get to talk to everybody for as long as you want about the conversation. And we don't really get to do that. We can go on a stream and, yeah, like Lav can, Lav can co-host my, my hotline show and we can talk about it. But you, your, your fans don't see that. The majority, 99% of people are not going to see that. They see what you say. So you get the power. So am there. I not allowed to have conversations with? Do I just have to basically treat my platform as like a public property to all of you guys, no. and then like no. I'm guaranteed you have the right to post whatever you want on my subreddit. You have the right no. to me not talking Absolutely about anything not. afterwards. No, okay, that's not, that's yes. what I'm saying. I, okay, I think that's what that it sounds you, like. No, no, I just think you you really don't like the idea of. Um, I think you feel like you're being guilt tripped or something when uh, if I say that I think you're like being irresponsible with our. Uh, our wait, reputation. Can I, he how, is, can I ask framed. him? I'm so sorry. Wait, wait, I want, wait, he just asked me what I want. So I want, I want to answer okay. this one question. No, I'm not saying that. I'm so, all I'm saying is I want you to acknowledge the power differential and keep it in mind when you're talking to us and when you're no, no, talking to making you. this. And it, Who do you mean us? No, also, no, yeah, all I, of us. When you're, when you're no, talking you to someone who has less power. This, but I don't I, here's what I want. Okay, I want, here's what I want. I, Max Carson, Thank you. a.k.a. Mr. Girl, I want when Stephen is talking to someone who has less power than him, which is most of his conversations, um, when he's talking to an orbiter, and that includes all of you. Absolutely no. not. When he, I have his op.gg. Shut up. When Stephen is talking to someone who has less power than him, even if that person does not want this, even if a 13-year-old wants to have sex with their teacher, I still think Why? that the power Why? differential should be acknowledged. And I think that, Stephen, what I, what I plead with you to do is to think about and acknowledge the power differential when no, you're that's in these not conversations. True. That's and not what and, you're and when, you're, when you're discussing the conversation. That's so not when, what you're asking. Don't lie. I know there's a power differential to some extent, of course. You're not asking me to acknowledge it. You're asking me to change a behavior. Get to what you're actually asking for. Because if I just say, yes. oh, okay, I do acknowledge it, and then nothing's going to change. You wouldn't be happy. So you're not asking for you to acknowledge, like, are you a bigger streamer than the people you talk to? Of course I that, that, that's, that's, Well, I said, I said I want you to acknowledge it in your assessment. So the behavior that would change just now is when you're saying, oh, I called you a dumb bitch, but you called Cherry a dumb bitch. That, if that, that doesn't make any sense if you acknowledge the power difference. No, if hold you kept on. This, if no, you, no, if you now, kept that in mind, you would, you, would, you would not compare these two things at all what if no, no, no 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 hold on we're okay. that, now we're getting to what you're saying so you're trying to say that because the power differential exists and then you move on to the descriptions you say people on your platform get to act dramatically different no. than what you're a lot yes don't how are you saying no you're saying that that's not what you're reframing what i'm somebody. saying you're, you're chipping away what I, i'll tell you the prescriptions i love telling you what to do if you want me to tell you what to do i'll fucking tell you when you are talking about someone calling someone a bitch on your stream don't compare that person to you don't defend your behavior by call, by comparing it to an orbiter's behavior. It's not. It's like totally unacceptable to me. You shouldn't do that. Okay, and that's okay. And I a, totally disagree with you. I don't think that just because somebody okay. comes on here, they're a smaller streamer, they can get away with anything they want because they're a smaller streamer. I totally disagree with that. So if somebody's going to be out there, they're going to call somebody a bitch a million times. I'm going to call them a bitch. And just because we have a power differential doesn't wait, mean that, that those I'm gonna, are not I'm those are opposites. Around. Those are opposite points. I'm not saying Lav should be able to call people a bitch. I'm saying you can't. And the reason you can't is not the same reason that Lav can't. So they, 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 it may be true that maybe both of you shouldn't. Okay, I disagree, but I understand reason. what you're saying. I just, I totally disagree, but okay. Okay, but if Lav, how, but you, the, the argument you're making is, you're saying Lav can't, but you can because she did. No, Lav can. If she wants to call people a bitch, she can do it all day. I'm okay with rolling around in the mud, but if you're going to roll in the, run, in the mud, I'm going to roll around with you. That's it. But you're saying I can't because I'm too big for the pig pen. Yes. Exactly. And I disagree. If somebody else wants to do it on my stream, fine. We can get like a little bit more rowdy if you want to do that. That's fine. But just but somebody okay. doesn't have permission to get rowdy and I can't because I'm a bigger streamer. Yeah. So like on, on Twitch before he got banned, what people would suggest is that if you don't feel like you can handle a platform debating Destiny 
you should start on the smaller panels. You should go on prime. It's, it's not. It's not about debating. He's. It's not that he's debating it's, people. It's yeah, that he's, it's, he's, it deni- is, he's denigrating people. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not like the personal. Yes, yes, it is. It's like the personal stuff. It's like like the calling me dumb. It's the it's the allowing people to post stuff about my personal relationships in his subreddit. Like, okay, it's, don't, wait, hold it, on. Allowing people you, to post. He wait, does what, not control the little no, no. people on the internet. No, hold on. Wait, no, wait, wait, he, hold on, no, wait, wait, wait. I do control my subreddit though. Hold on. If people are posting weird doxy information or some shit on your subreddit, I think I would. If I saw those posts, I would ban those posts. Are these popping up? Yeah, preventing them from being posted. That's not something you can do. No, I can't. Obviously, I can't do that. But if I see it, I would ban it. But yeah, I mean, well, there's that video that I just told you about that has like a bunch of upvotes from the last 24 hours. That's like that's a public about- stream you did talking on your shit. Where pe- how is that doxing or anything? No, like inappropriate. no, but what does but what does that have to do with fucking anything? It's inappropriate because it's it's being used to paint me as like a mentally ill uh, abuser. And after the the stream where you said that I was a Darvo fucking elicitor and I'm manipulative and then they're posting shit like that, you've got to fucking know that you are setting the stage for something like that, Stephen. No, that, is you... not, that is not oh, debate sorry. criticism. That's not debate criticism about my my views or my opinions on fucking sex work or anything. That is like extremely personal denigration that is meant uh, to discredit uh, my character as a person. Okay. Okay. Loud, you can't no, say, wait, 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 Public stream. Will you talk about your need to? What was it about, like manipulating no, men no, no, or whatever? No, 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 no. It's a public stream, but it's reframed to make me look like an abuser. It's not. But it's not I mean, taken for the, what it is. You've literally gone onto a stream after all of these. Like, when was this stream? When did you do this? Was this? What? When, when, when were those comments made by you? Uh, like a month, like a um, like two weeks ago. No, no more than like, two weeks ago. No. Right? What? Do you, wait. What are you talking about, Cherry? That what? stream in that your stream pajamas. In my pajamas was a month yeah. ago. And Sounds it was like me talking And it was and it was me talking about how uh I like I struggled um to think that a man was like gonna save me from myself. And then they reframe that as like a oh this she's getting all the simps, like she's getting like they completely Wait. framed it in a way that it like I, they, I mean like I, I don't understand how you can make statements like this on your stream and then get surprised when people like reframe it. Like you're making no, pretty extreme no, statements not, here. No, I'm not no, I'm not surprised that they're making them. I'm surprised okay. that you're not you're not protecting your uh, your your orbiters from okay, people stop. doing that. Wait, I have a question. Wait, wait. Why would um, Destiny or Steven need to protect grown adults from their own fucking choices? Because then, he has it's more not power. Pro- no, it's not from my it's, own choices. Stop, stop. I, I, I just have one question for Mr. Mr. Girl. Um, uh, would you want Destiny to have the same standard of civility uh, for Nick Fuentes as, he, as you want for Lav? Um, Nick Fuentes is not Destiny's orbiter. So, no. I, there's not a sense of... I don't think Steven has a responsibility to every single person who comes on his stream. And I, I think that um, the, the uh, public perception of Fuentes... Um, Fuentes has a lot more control over that. So I think it makes sense to be able to go a little bit harder on him. But at, but at a certain point, yeah, I do. I don't, I don't think... Like, even right now, the way Steven is talking to Lav, um, I don't think he should do to anybody. Like, I don't, I, like, giving a long, like, it just wouldn't fly. The opposite wouldn't fly. You would never let Lav give a three-minute speech about how you're either stupid or young. I literally, you dude, just, she goes, up oh, so much, and I let her talk so much. Am I going fucking crazy? You are gaslighting me now. I just let her do a whole fucking thing where I tried to come in three times, and I let her finish. You are so wrong. I, I can't even believe you would say that. Like, people on the stream are literally, I'm pretty sure Dan is laughing in the background when she goes on and on, and I'm like, okay, I'll let her finish, I'll let her finish, I'll let her finish. And now he's saying, you would never let Lab go off like that. What? I don't think you would let her give a speech about how you're stupid. I don't know. It would depend on the context, but she's given plenty of speeches, like, where she's dramatically disagreeing with things that I'm saying or, or making implications yes. about me and Cherry or whatever. Like, But I don't think she would give a speech. I don't think you would let her get, I think you would go, stop. Stop, 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 stop. I don't, I don't think, think I've ever, her... I don't think I've ever gone off for three minutes about how she's stupid. You just did. You, she said, she, she, I said, I think that Steven discredits you on stream. And then you said, well, hold on, let me explain. I'm only discrediting you because you say things that are completely irrational all the time. And the, the hyper irrational things you say can only be explained by either you're immature and you're making, and we're going to give you that this, excuse. This is a or, childlike or you're, or you're understanding. Or you're, this is a or you're, childlike wait, 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 understanding. Let me finish. Are you going to okay. let me finish? There's or you're a moron. Wait, wait, stop, stop, like stop, stop, stop. Let me, let me finish. If Lav started a speech with, 
You're hyper irrational. Let me explain. You would not let her finish. You, it it would depend on the fly. context, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how she could get away with saying that. If you want, I could flip it and I could treat her like you need to have life fucking figured out and your shit needs to be consistent. Because right now, if we were to go through every statement Live has made about sex work, she would get fucking eviscerated. She's made so many contradictory statements, it would be impossible to keep track of the contradictions. You could make a whole Google Doc on all this, but my explanation for that is not that I think that Live is some bad faith, horribly fucking moronic actor. I just think she's young and figuring shit out. You call that discrediting. I call that explaining why there are so many contradictions in her political positions. If you want to, if you want to claim that, then that's fine. But you're just wrong. And the alternative treatment that you're asking for would be way more <laughs> fucking harsh. If I were to come down on her as though you should no, have all this I'm shit figured out, if you I'm, I'm going to crucify you on every contradiction. I don't think you should make speeches about whether your orbiters are retarded or young. It's not about being okay. Then I'll just I'll I'll. You're, you're fuck. Here's you're so here's wrong. Here's hold on, no, 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 hold on. You're so wrong. You're just so wrong because that is the only possible explanation that I can give for all of the inconsistency in Lab's explanations. Should I just not say anything about that and let everybody assume that she actually is like just hasn't is totally politically incoherent? Right. Okay, I so oh, I want. Well, no, I want, there's totally I, there's so many I, other things oh you could God. say. Me, Name one thing. So one other thing. Name one other thing. Jesus okay, Christ. to explain what? Why? How her political positions can be so off the wall and inconsistent? Off the wall. Um, what what, what well, have I had you, that is didn't extremely you, didn't, off the okay, wall? Didn't, didn't you very publicly switch from being conservative to being more progressive? Yeah, it's happened over the course of like 10 years, but yes. Okay, so you can identify with that. So if you want to, if you want to, like, to discuss this, but in a way that your audience is going to be able to empathize with and understand and say, look, you guys are really holding Lad's feet to the fire, but let's not forget, I made an even bigger switch. I, I literally did said exactly did... this. What are you talking okay, about? Okay, okay, okay. So but, okay, but, no, but, wait, we're talking about you. Wait, wait, wait. No, but, I, but, but then leave out. But then leave out. I just want to say something really quick. Okay. Um, I, so I, I, I do obviously, so I'm somewhere in between Stephen and, and Max <laughs> fence sitting lol. Um, I, I don't listen. This is, this is what I think. I think that I've put myself here with my own actions to some extent. I think that I would appreciate if you could protect me a little more from people making uh, like personal jabs at me or denigrating me in a way that is not critiquing me. I would like you to maybe uh, like make it on your subreddit, like a reason that people don't like me other than like, I love women. I love women so much. I love women. Like actual critique would be really helpful other than just like uh, virtue signaling to each other that I'm like the most hated person alive. I think that would be really cool. But ultimately I think when I enter your space, I'm playing by your rules in your house and I respect that. And I don't expect you to overextend yourself to me in any way um, because I knew what it was when I entered the house. Obviously, Max disagrees with that because he thinks that you have like more responsibility than I think that you have. Um, I think that I can both be, I don't think that the reasons why I've wavered are because I'm dumb um, or even because I'm young, but more that I'm just like maybe more adaptable and it rubs people the wrong way. I don't know. It could possibly, that could not be the reality also. I could just be fucking retarded. I'm not particularly uh, uh, attached to the fact of me being the smartest person alive. I'm just happy to be here, happy to have tough conversations, happy to have hard con conversations. Lav, Lav, real quick, can you give some actionable- Why are we more? Really? Actionable- uh, Max made some really huge statements and now we're gonna go off on a random other fucking right. tangent? No. Okay, no. so to be clear, no, no, I'm not blaming you, Lav, I'm blaming Dan, okay? Oh. So, Max, <laughs> when people talk yes. about me having made changes politically, when I talk about myself making changes politically, okay. I say <laughs> literally, bye. I say literally the exact same shit that I say about Lav. Destiny you used to be super progressive, right? What happened? I grew the fuck up. I gathered more life experiences and I realized, hey, there's a lot of things that I cared about being a conservative, but now I kind of realized being a little bit older and having some more experiences that like, yeah, actually uh, I was super wrong on these things. And now that I have the life experience, I, I totally changed my mind on it. I like, I think one, a story that I've, or a thing that I've said a million times to my audience is like, man, you know, one of the worst fucking things about me being young was, is I bet even if I time traveled and spoke to myself in the past, I wouldn't even be able to convince myself of how fucking uh, wrong or dumb I was about some ideas. I think I've literally even said in this stream that if I started streaming when I was 18 or 19, I thought I was a fucking anime main character villain. So yeah, I've actually denigrated myself personally multiple times related to my age. To say that yes, I'm doing something unique to lab is absolutely not true. Okay, wait, you asked me what I thought you could say. And I'm here. my answer is, since you have changed your mind about things, I think that you can frame it in a way that is not you calling her retarded. Now, even That's if you called yourself, even if, you've, even if you've denigrated yourself as immature and said you grew the fuck up, that's your, you have definitely every right to. I do this yourself. all the time with Lav. Have you ever listened to me talk about her ever? Whenever so you could go on this stream multiple times and be like, why do you even talk? I think even ABBA even said it earlier. Why do you talk I'm to her? What's saying, the point of talking I'm to her? Not no, I just want to literally, 
Okay, you're not saying I don't. I'm not saying that you don't. I'm not saying that you don't say nice things about her. No, I'm not nice things. I specifically say this is why I think she is where she is. And I think I'm she's not saying that you haven't said this. I'm saying that I think this should be the only thing that you say about Lav's inconsistency rather than saying that maybe she's a moron. I don't think I've ever said she's a moron. No, I you explicitly said, say I don't think she's dumb. I don't think she's stupid. I, in fact, said I think you I said there's only two ex Yes, there are only two extended. She's either young and figuring out, or like you're saying, she's actually fucking retarded. Those are the only two no, options. That's not what I'm, I'm saying. I'm saying you have another option where you don't have to define her. You don't no, have well, to. I have to. What do you mean? We're having conversations on stream about our positions, and a lot of them are incredibly incoherent. But I need to explain reason, the incoherency. Wait, the only reason we're having a conversation on stream about her positions is because she came in to talk to you about something she said about you. I, that somehow, doesn't relate that to turned, anything that we're talking about whatsoever. I don't understand how that. The Okay, the conversation started because she came on my stream and said stuff about you and your relationship with me, which you guys argued about yesterday and then continued to argue about today. And somehow, along the way, that turns into a trial about whether Lav has credibility and whether she's inconsistent, whether she's a snake, whether she can think before she talks, and as and you said, either whether she's immature or she's a moron. These ideas all came from different people in different places. but. The, the system discredited her. She said something about you, and then somehow, no, there's no discussion of whether the thing she said about you is true or, or fair or why she said it really has been able to take place without her being also discredited. So I don't think there is really a reason why you need to be making pronouncements about whether Lav is stupid or not. I'm, it's a, it's about explaining why I have the conversations I do with her when it seems like a lot of her political positions are relatively incoherent. I have to be able to provide an explanation for that, for that incoherency, because there's going to be a clear difference in the metal of conversations, the types of conversations I have with her versus other more politically thought out figures. And the way that I explain that is the way I've said multiple times. And I've, I think I've literally snapped at people on my stream before who's called Lav stupid. I've literally explained, said, Lav is not dumb. I've talked to plenty. You can go talk to the Miami girls. You're going to see what a dumb fucking girl looks like. I wouldn't waste my time talking to her if she was stupid. I've explicitly pushed back against that over and over and over again. So if you to say that I'm like treating her like a retard or whatever, I don't think that's true. Or if you say I'm saying she can only be retarded or young, that is true. She's young and she's figuring shit out. I think that's a more than back. acceptable explanation for, for why she is the way that she is. You push back against it sometimes, but Abba came in and said, you don't think. You didn't push back then. You just said, here, what Abba's Because that was based off of her own words. Ab that was what Abba was criticizing for. She literally said, oh, you know, I haven't thought about these positions all the way through. And Abba's position was, why are you bringing somebody on that's so undecided about their political position? And then I explained it. So, well, she's thinking through them. She's like going through a, a fucking transitionary phase in her life and she'll figure it out. That's what I trust I, that she's doing. I understand, but he framed it harshly he framed yeah of course like he of course he framed it harshly her because she, that's calling the type her of character stupid. She yeah of course he was and i was explaining why i don't think she's stupid i think she's just young or this is why she's stupid because she's young rather but than you she's just like a dumb on it. i don't you didn't push back on Abba. i i i i i i don't i don't know what if this is i don't want to fuck i I don't know how to explain it. Can, I, can just, I please just say something? Dan called, her a, Dan called her a snake and you didn't push back I think on he that. Was a, I can't push back. I'm not here to defend her against every single claim that every single person makes in here. The broad one of why I speak with her is that I don't think she's stupid. I snapped at people on my screen that's called her stupid. I have never characterized her as being stupid ever. Never. I've never done that. Uh, because I don't think she's stupid. I wouldn't say it. Except when you called her a dumb bitch. No, hold on. Okay. Me saying that you're a dumb bitch was not an indictment of her intelligence because she fucking cut me off over and over and over again in the middle of a fucking statement. I was like, shut the fuck up, you dumb bitch. That was what I said. I don't think anybody heard that. I was like, oh my God, Stephen really does think she's unintelligent. Now I know that she's grabbed onto this idea of like, oh my God, that was him truly saying that, uh, that I'm not intelligent, blah, blah, blah. Bullshit. I don't even think she feels that way. And I don't think anybody in my audience heard it that way. I think they heard me snapping it in the middle because she was cutting me off over and over and over again. And if you listen to the 400 other times her intelligence is brought up on stream or in conversations, I've always snapped at people that have called her stupid. I've never cared characterizers being dumb. Sorry, I'm done screaming. I think Brittany wanted to say something. I just want to say something. Yeah, I want to say something so I can fucking leave and go to Walmart. Jesus Christ. My bad. I don't understand why Max and Lav need you to protect them or be their father or anything else. But Steven, I swear to God, if you think you're my boss, this is going to ruin my whole illusion of you being my bottom. Okay, well, I, just, I am the boss of you, so that's okay. I just, Max, I don't understand why you and Lav are so eager to give over your power to some fucking gamer boy on the internet. Like, as, as nice as he is and as beautiful as he is, I don't know why you're so eager to, like, tell, like, why I don't understand. You're an adult. I'm an adult. Lav's an adult. Like, I don't care how many viewers Steven has. Either I can take it or I can't. Sure, it hurts my feelings sometimes when the Reddit goes off, but that's the internet. And then you get through it, you stick around for a few months, and people warm up to you, and they move on. Like, it's literally just the internet. Steven even warned me this would happen, that, my, that his 
Reddit's going to hate me. Then they're going to be fine again. Okay. So, like, why I, do you think you need Stevens, like, to help, like, to be your parent? I uh, reject the premise of your question. Fair. <laughs> yeah, can I ask the question? Um, what what makes uh, what makes somebody an orbiter? Uh, a significant power differential where your career depends on Steven, depends on Steven's career, and your opportunity for growth and exposure depends on Steven allowing you to stay in his good graces. Oh, wait, so I'm not an orbiter, to be clear, because I've had a career for 12 years on my own, right? So am I, is that correct? Yeah, it's different with you. Okay, okay, then I'm good. Thanks, guys, for the convo. Have a great day. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Good one. You're my favorite orbiter. Thank you. Bye. No, <laughs> Bye. Bye. <gasps> Fucking A. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. What a fucking... I can't. Y'all, you know how... You want to know the skin routine? Don't go on fucking drama panels. You want to know why my skin is so beautiful? Don't go on fucking drama panels. I cannot. I'm losing my hair. I can't. I hate this idea that I, I have worked so fucking hard. I have worked so hard to be considered an adult and to be taken like an adult seriously like an adult whatever that means i i expect to be taken seriously as an adult so for like max and lav to kind of have this like relationship with their own agency where destiny has more clout or something i just i fucking cannot fuck i did not work this hard my whole fucking life to make my goddamn money to buy you know to buy my life to have my life to move forward in my life to have some fucking gamer boy on the internet decide if I am adult enough, I cannot handle that. I don't know. I don't understand why they're so eager to give away their agency to a bunch of commenters. I, I will tell you, Steven's audience was quite extreme to me because of Max when I first started talking to Steven. Yes, they didn't like me. But I think now, not only are some of my callers from Destiny's viewership... But, but some of my audience members are. Like, they are wonderful. And the Reddit is fine with me. The memes are hilarious. I save them all. I think they're great. But I personally, I, re I will not allow anyone to take away my agency by telling me that I am not adult, adult enough to handle a fucking Reddit post. Like, don't stalk me. Don't dox me. Don't rape me. And everything else is fair game. Talk shit all you want. Just don't get me fucking fired if it's not true, you know? Like, don't be too crazy. But, like, talk shit. If you think I'm a crystal girl, if you think I'm crazy, if you think I'm all about the signs and, you know, astrology and shit, even though that's not even my thing, I get it. Fucking go off. I don't understand why... I gotta talk to Lav about this, but why are they so eager to give up their agency to a man? No, sorry, to a, another streamer. We are all equals. We're all streamers. Like, it's so fucking strange. Like, it's so fucking strange. Man, I don't, I can't tell her, like, adults are soft. Y'all are, like, I get it too. I cry over comments. I'm not a fucking, okay, I'm not perfect. But hell, if I'm gonna wake up and question my sense of, like, agency because Destiny has more subscribers than me. What the fuck? I don't give a fuck if you have a million subscribers, bro. Let's go. Let's go. Like, I don't even, that's like saying I can't debate the president because he's the president. Fuck your presidency, bro. You think I can't debate Biden? You think I can debate Trump because they're the president? Fuck you. Of course I could. Like, what is this idea that, like, I'm less of an adult because of the power dynamic? Bish, my point's still my points. <sighs> Adults want to be babies too? Izzy. Izzy might be right. Ugh. I will call Steven back next week when I stream again. Um... So I can talk to him again. But yeah, I I do not consider myself an orbiter for the record. I do not think my career is dependent on Steven. I just started talking to Steven a year ago and I've been doing this for a long time. I do not understand. See, this is what I was trying to say when I said Max is like simping for Steven or his career is like Max looks at Steven with this power dynamic. I look at Steven like he's my equal. I never think Steven, like I just don't objectify him in that way. Anyways, fuck. Fuck! I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking go, and I'm gonna go to Walmart, and I'm gonna go chill with my brothers, okay? This was fun, though. Really great stream. I'm really excited we got to have these conversations. I just... 
I reject the premise that my my agency is going to be taken away from someone's subscriber account. I just reject. That's like saying Sneeko has more power than me because he had a million subs. Sneeko was a 24-year-old boy. Like a man on his way. He becoming a man. Like If Lav, Lav has more OF followers than me. Ooh, Lav has more OF followers than me. So if Lav is more popular on OnlyFans, doesn't, even though I have more sub, 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 subscribers than her, Wait, if I have more subscribers than Destiny does on OnlyFans, does that make me the power dynamic? It's just stupid. It makes no fucking sense. It's not about anything age or any... It's about are you capable enough to have this discourse and to move forward with solutions. Okay? That's it. Bye. I love you. I'm getting the fuck out of here. Jesus Christ. Ah. <sighs> I feel great. I feel just peachy keen. I feel fine. I feel fine. I'm going to go to Walmart. I'm going to go to Walmart.